Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another week of Overwatch action. My name is Chase Nuclear Nukem, and tonight I'm joined by Chef Billy on the mic. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, happy to be here. Love NECC Overwatch. And uh, you know what? It's Thursday, so it is time uh, for that to happen. And, you know, we're coming towards the uh, business end of the season here, Chase. And I don't know. Yeah. These two teams coming out of the emergent southeast here in our first series. Ooh. Uh, it could go one of two ways. It could either be really good uh, or it could be one way traffic for the University of Rio Grande. So we'll, we'll see uh, how this how the squad does. They've had some pretty impressive results. They've also had a couple of uh, of not so impressive results coming through. And then for you know in Eastern Kentucky University White, uh, it's been a, it's been a bit of a struggle uh, this season, but they have uh, did come in with a win. Uh, last week over FGCU Blue. So they're getting their season turned around a bit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think as the season has progressed, we've seen Eastern Kentucky University really pick up the speed. They stumbled a bit in the first couple of weeks in NECC, but now that we're in week eight, they have their footing right. They're ready to move on. Last week, they actually had a reschedule as well against Catawba Blue. So it could go either way for that team. But Rio Grande has been chugging through the season. And without further ado, let's take a look on the rosters, what we got over for the University of Rio Grande. We got Ghoul, Zappy123, Nolan, Call Me Massey, and Anana Mouse returning on the roster of Rio Grande. Chef Billy, on the end of Eastern Kentucky University, what are we expecting? All right, we're going to look at uh, Dr. Tumult. Uh, we're going to see Garusa, uh, Arcos, Azatoff, and. Uh... Uh, we'll take a look and see what's uh, what's when they uh, get them showed up here for the Eastern Kentucky roster. Uh, but you know, looking at you know how we brought these people together, I mean, we've got you know four sophomores here and a junior, yeah. uh, and you know they've got some time together. And I think that you know for a lot of these squads right now, you know, getting the familiarity, getting the synergy, you know, being in a competition like the NECC, it really does uh, take a little bit of acclimation. For it, and you know, we'll see uh, how it's going to go for them for the rest of the season. But you know, Doctor Tumult, I I'm looking forward to seeing them. They they are an ASL uh, major, and love to see that. I wish I knew sign language at all. Uh, I, I know how to say thank yeah, you. I know how to say break time. I know how to say break sure. time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what? Uh, it all comes down to who's going to get the first of three. Uh, we're going to start right. by uh, taking a look at our maps for the day. We're going to start out on Li Zhang Tower. Yeah, a very popular pick in the NECC. Arctic Peninsula had made its way in for a couple of weeks, started to get really popular, but tonight that's actually going to get banned out by Eastern Kentucky University. So for that reason, Rio Grande said, you know, we're going to go with the next best. We're going to go over to Li Zhang Tower and see how that works out for us. Well, that is, uh, that, that is interesting, the fact that they would ban out uh, Antarctica, maybe they're not feeling comfortable enough with it and don't want to go somewhere where they may sure. not have their strategy set up yet. And, you know, everybody should know Li Zhang Tower. So, uh, well, it's the most popular map uh, as far as control. Sure. Uh, it's a standby for everybody. Uh, I think the uh, the second one is Nepal uh, behind that. So, you know, University of Rio Grande right now, I, I want to see how they, how they path this. I want to see how uh, they're going to take the challenge to Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky coming in two and four. Once again, we do have a right. rescheduled game, so they are uh, minus one game, at least as far as their season goes. Uh, Rail Grand coming in on four and two, so they are definitely making a push for the playoffs. But like I said, anything can happen any given day in Overwatch. And, you know, with a <laughs> with a brawl composition that comes out, uh, I did see a Reinhardt v. Ramatra, and the Reinhardt actually win earlier today. So that is something that I'm going to be Ooh, looking at. That's promising, right? Uh, Arcos could be uh, the could be the key here, especially if they uh, get on the point first uh, and maybe get a pin kill. Uh, you sure. know, a charge kill from Arcos that could put him at a five v four situation. Could really land them in good hot water. One. I completely agree. Both teams as well. Having a Symmetra should speed up the process in getting the point right. Actually, Rio Grande is probably going to get there first because they have Call Me Massey on the Lucio. That's exactly what they're going to do, Chef Billy. They're going to wrap around the inside, and they're already Ooh. planted. Eastern Kentucky getting a massive anti-nade, though. I mean, but Eastern Kentucky actually coming out with the kills on the backside and Azatov right now with the uh, 
with the beautiful play from the Reaper uh, is going to be them taking the point first. I mean, the second grenade, actually the bigger of the two grenades, Chase, and yeah. well, they get the first capture there. Uh, also, I think that having Azatov here on uh, on this Reaper, Ghoul is going to have their work cut out for them. The one-shot potential has to come through. Otherwise, you're not going to see the value gained by having the Archer out there. The Reaper will actually have a little bit more utility uh, and, you know, actual healing, uh, self-healing with those Hellfire shotguns. Especially taking down the Ramatra, right? The Ramatra is going to be in your face for these fights. Having that Reaper to combat it does so much. Just like Nolan getting the pick on Dr. Tumult in the back line. That's going to open the fight to Anonymous now pushing in on Azathoth. That's cool taking out Arcos and the point is turning towards the University of Rio Grande. 30% will go in favor of Eastern Kentucky, but Chef Billy, Kentucky's showing that they're here to play tonight. They really are. And I think that with this early Katsune rush, it's gonna come from Garusa. Uh, they're gonna be able to get onto the point and hopefully they don't take an anti on the way in. Arcos really does need to maintain that shield presence. Well, there is already the nade out. So this actually could turn in their favor uh, if they make the rotation quickly. Yeah, they got to be fast about it, though, and they're setting up. I think they're going to opt instead to just wait, but this could not go in their favor. Ghoul looking for a head. Not going to find anything quite yet. They're going to back up. Those are going to be dragons online, and now there's three ultimates on the side of Ryo Grand. The Eastern Kentucky's two. The fight kicks off with a massive nano. Zappy's going in, punching it out, putting in all the work for in the corner. Chef Billy, I don't know if they're going to be able to take this. Nah, once you lose your right heart in this composition, you have to have out. Uh, you don't have the push power, you don't have the brawl potential to come through. Good thing for them is that they do still have both their support ultimates online, and Call Me Massey uh, is still 80 per, 20 percent away from getting that sound barrier online. So, Nano and the Consumer Rush online here, they should be able to take this. Ooh, not if that Ryan falls like you mentioned earlier, and they're going to come very close to doing so. That Katsune Rush will put them around the corner, though, and an Earth Shatter follows through, finding one in Anonymous. But, oh, what is that? That's going to be a Ramatra ult to follow suit. You're going to suffer as he has, and man, wow. Chef Billy, that ultimate is just way too much. We thought that it was tuned down, but it was not tuned down near enough. No, I've been seeing Nano engages in with a... Uh but they were much annihilation, especially in Australia contenders right now. Uh, they didn't even need it there. They were just able to uh, amp the speed going into it and get on top of Eastern Kentucky. Now, Eastern Kentucky can try and get on the point with the Fatera. Yep, they're pushing in. They're at 99, so all they have to do is hold. But, ooh, a quick kill on the Anonymous and Call Me Massey is going to put Eastern Kentucky in the lead. Garusa finding the head on Zappy. It will flip over to Eastern Kentucky with Arcos being the last one on point with Kit. What an engagement. Azathoth, I mean, Azathoth going over to the Farah here um, gives them a, a different look. And it is very hard to hit uh, the winged Canadian EPS player. Uh, as we look at, you know, see how they're going to path around here, especially with that uh, pharmacy pocket. Your your, uh, your Cassidy is low on health, though. It needs help. You don't want him to go <laughs> half health and not uh, give him the resources <laughs> going through. You're going to look for Shatter. Uh, I think Shatter needs to come up for Arcos for them to have any chance of holding this point. Barrier's going to come through first, though. They're looking to take out that shield, playing the front of the, the point very smart so that they can take a little bit of space. Oh, and the fair is going to fall. What a shot from Ghoul. Now needing to find the head on Dr. Tumult. Not going to find it quite yet. The res will come out. But is it going to be fast enough, Chef Billy? Point. Because the University of Rio Grande is all but taking point. There's a barrage coming through, but Ghoul going to find a kill with the Dragon Strike. And that is going to be University of Rio Grande taking the first round of Li Zhang Tower. And what a way to do it. Eastern Kentucky tonight, though, Chef Billy, they are out to play. They really are out to play. And, I mean, you don't see Hanzo take a fair out of the sky very often. They uh, We saw Azathoth get a little bit a uh, little bit low on the jetpack and had to kind of dip down there, and the healing stream just wasn't enough to keep uh, the headshot from bay. But, I mean, I, you, you saw, some, you saw some, uh, some adaptation coming out of Eastern Kentucky. They, they recognize right. that there are different wind conditions for them. Uh, realizing that going into the Ramatra, they needed a little bit more. And so, you know, getting uh, getting the Farah in there and pressuring the back line really pulls a lot of resources out of them. So, or Control Center, uh, Brawl is going to be the name of the game here. And Anonymous yeah, is going to stay on the Symmetra. 
But look at this. We've got the Cassidy and we've got the Junkrat. So Zappy's going to be under massive pressure. Yes, Azathoth switching over to the Junkrat. What a play from Eastern Kentucky. Honestly, Junkrat has a lot of value on this point. So I'm interested to see how well they're able to execute Azathoth following around the right side with Arcos. Getting some punches in is going to be Zappy on the right side, finding one in Azathoth, and that goes that breaking combo that we were talking about a second ago, Chef Billy. It's looking like Eastern Kentucky might have to back up, but they find a pick on Anonymous. Uh, that's cool taking out Garusa. Yeah, that's got to retreat here. Well, absolutely, they have to retreat. I mean, especially losing your Reinhardt, which is going to happen here very shortly. Why well, say that? They actually get out, but both of their supports were gone. Now, the problem here is that you're running in with a Kiriko, and while, you know, the, the healing Aphida are really good, uh, I think for the bang for their buck that they're looking for, they, well, they go over to a, a Orisa here, so... Uh, I'm kind of questioning this one. They, I mean, you can brawl with it, you can push back with the Javelin throw, uh, but, I mean, the mitigation is not going to be the same. There we go. Ooh, yeah, they're pushing in. That's Arcos. Probably not having enough for the Terra Surge, so... Kind of just being stuck, but we're going to see Ramatra do what they do best. Go in, turn into Nemesis for him, and let you suffer. Uh, but they did the best thing that they could in that situation, Billy. Eastern Kentucky deciding to back up. Maybe not far enough, but backing up when you hear the Ramatra all is the best thing you can do. They don't have a Lucio to speed out there. That's the big problem. That's true. Uh, you know, running Baptiste Lucio here is a better choice if you're going to run in uh, against a Ramatra. Because, uh, you know, you can deny the damage coming in. You can just kind of wait out these nades coming through and then get on top of the uh, Ramatra. But, you know, right now, I mean, the support is just too good. Ooh, and that's going to be the Katsune Rush followed the up eat. by the Deadeye. Ooh, what a snag from Arcos. You're absolutely right. That's going to be Nemesis for him again. No, no Annihilation online this time. Terror Surge coming up immediately, and that's going to be Arcos dropping it. Unfortunately, not finding any kills, but finding a lot of damage for Eastern Kentucky. I mean, they should get the point here flipped over. I say that as uh, Anonymous actually gets a beautiful uh, Death Blossom go through there, chasing. Well, that's going to clean that fight up and 10% going. They're going to have to swap over to a fast character to get on point. Absolutely. They need to get there. They got six seconds. All those characters are pretty slow, and there goes their Cole Cassidy oh. falling. They're not going to touch in time, Chef Billy. You're absolutely correct. Rio Grande taking, or sorry, University of Rio Grande taking the first map. That is a, that is a shame. <laughs> for them not to be able to get on the point there, and they were looking for it. But, I mean, the Annihilation is too strong here uh, from Zappy. You see the power of it. Just, you know, you get an instant uh, HP boost when you pop it. And then the support coming through on the back of it, you can see there in the kill feed, uh, the assist definitely going through with their Ana. So for, uh, for Eastern Kentucky, I mean, they're showing that they got teeth. Uh, there's some fight in that dog, but uh, <laughs> they need to be a little bit more lethal and they need to be a little bit more cognizant of the, of the compositions they're running in with. Um, you're running in with, with two uh, flex supports uh, instead of a main healer. And I, I think that you need to have a main support in the Lucio uh, to cut in there, or you need to bring out a Zenyatta uh, or for another main support uh, to get that Discord Orb, take care of the Ramatra, and then move on the rest of the team because there's just too much uh, sustain and, and mobility because of the Lucio uh, that you're not able to get on top of them with. You're absolutely right, and they're doing a great job of focusing targets, right? We saw mm -hmm. that when they were playing the Reaper, we saw that when they switched uh, over to the Cole Cassidy, but they don't have a Discord Orb to really finish the job, right? They're just getting a lot of damage out. There's nothing there to solidify that damage. So I completely agree with you. I think that they need to make a couple of changes. And this is really the time to do it, right? In between rounds, you played your first round. It was control. So you got a little bit of feeling on what they might play. But you really got to take that five-minute break, refocus, reconvene, and say, what are we, what are we hitting them with next? Yep, and I, I think that's a real good you know, a segue into... You know how we uh, how we address the rest of the of these uh, maps that we're going to go through. Uh, hybrid will be our next map, uh, and we'll see <laughs> what is going to happen there. Uh, as I'm looking at our our our, our chat, uh, <laughs> that's funny as heck. Uh, you know, if I am uh, if I'm Royal Grand right now, I, I think that you take them to King's Row. You force the Reinhardt pick again. 
uh, you know, I would I would ban out uh, anything other than Kings Road. Try to pin them into that because the Ramatra versus the Reinhardt matchup right now, unless that unless Eastern Kentucky is willing to swap up Chase, I, I think that that's the difference maker that's going to be you know in the tank department. If they're not willing to go to a speed, if they're not willing to run what I call the ice cold comp, uh, which is the Lucio Bap, the Cole Cassidy, and the May, and then the Reinhardt. Um, and using that immortality barrier to kind of, you know, keep up your Reinhardt, wall off the Ramatra, and get it in there. So uh, we are going to go uh, to King's Row, uh, University of Rio Grande, banning out Blizzard World. So just like I thought, they wanted to put them in this pigeonhole, and that's where we're going. Yeah, and that's the choice. That's what we were. That's what you're saying. And I like that terminology the ice cold comp as i said ice cold comp that that's a, that that's a good name for the comp but you're absolutely right that's how you play that brawl with the may the ryan the bap getting in there doing damage and if they're going to run it they gotta get the lucio to get their team in and out right yep. um or at least like you said switch over to that zenyatta so doing so on king's row i mean this is the map to do it and eastern kentucky is going to pick it so let's certainly hope that they have that in sort of the foresight Yep, I, I think that we're going to see how this rolls for them because Kings Row uh, is either going to see uh, University of Rio Grande on the uh, on the match point, or we're going to go nice and even here. Uh, and you know, our hybrid map is always a good look at that. So here, confirmation of us going to Kings Row. Uh, doesn't look like we have any uh, substitutions coming in as well. Uh, thanks to our beautiful producers uh, and observer. Uh, Caroline and Cynthia uh, pushing the ones and twos on the uh, on the board for us, but uh, you know it's going to come down. Like I said, I, this is going to be a tank battle uh, to start out with, and who's going to be able to claim space? Who's going to be able to take that space uh, and hold on to it? Um, Ghoul showing us a beautiful Hanzo as well. Uh, that's yeah. going to be a real problem for that shield uh, of Ar Arcos as well. That is something that they're going to have to really pay attention to as we go in to uh, see London here. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, well, Rio Grande is going to be out here on the uh, attack. So they actually choose that they want to go attacking first. They want to set their uh, their standard uh, and really stamp their authority on this map. I like the fact that they are deciding that they want to be uh, in the aggressive position and put down that time back and say, come and touch us if you can. East Kentucky. I mean, we're looking now uh, at a little bit of a damage boost situation. I don't hate this. I don't hate this if this is what they're going to come out with. Yeah. Uh, the damage boost at Ash still 195 uh, when you use the ADS with the Viper. Uh, also, the ability to get yourself back to high ground. So there's going to be two different eye levels here for the University of Rio Grande, uh, where you're going to be looking at the Junkrat spam from the bottom. And then you're going to have to be dealing with the Ash uh, from up on high. So you're going to have also the ability to throw uh, that dynamite over the top of a uh, shield coming out of Zappy. I mean, Zappy had the uh, had the Ramatra unlocked for the last map. Looks like we're going to come out with a Reinhardt here, so Arcos might actually have the uh, advantage here. Yeah, that's very true. That's a pretty good point. Ghoul, though, might be looking for a head very early, kind of waiting in the wings to pop themselves out. That's a great sleep. sleep coming out on Arcos very early. That could kick things up for the University of Rio Grande pushing oh, in. Man. Yeah, that's going to be Arcos falling very early. And unfortunately, I don't even think that any grenades or anything coming out of kit from the high ground is going to matter as Anonymous just gets a couple of headshots with those ice blocks. Kit going to fall, and this is falling apart very quickly for Eastern Kentucky University. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure how they got in on top of that other than a beautiful nade from Nolan uh, that just completely devalues the immortality barrier. That is a uh, that is a 40 second take of the first point uh, from beginning to end. That is lightning fast. And you're looking at Zappy now looking to claim space. They're not even going to allow Eastern Kentucky to make the archway hold here. They're going to have to hold a bookstore. And this is going to be advantage University of Rio Grande because you do have the May in your uh, back pocket. That reason right there, right. those walls are going to be yep. pouring off so much damage coming in, my friend. It's literally the best, one of the best options you can have, right? Because you have your pseudo tank in the wings just waiting to do that damage and, and walling off a target who's unsuspecting. Absolutely. We're seeing Ghoul trying to get a couple of heads. Kit gonna find Ghoul in retaliation though. 
Yeah, I, I, my uh, my stream has uh, frozen out here. Uh, so uh, we're getting a bit of a segmented look here at what's going on on stream. Uh, you know, Ghoul swapping over uh, to the Hanzo. So definitely going to be pushing down that uh, pressure onto Ar uh, Arcos' shield, as I was mentioning before. Yeah, and they're getting into position. Neither side has lost someone quite yet. And that's Ryo Grand grouping up to play around this corner. Eastern Kentucky will want to defend here. And they have four ultimates to do so. Azathoth pushing in. Both Rhines swing it away. Can't gonna find it on Zappy. That's gonna be a hammer to the side of Anonymous. And an Earth Shatter just waiting. Arcos is pleading to use it. Look at that though. No ultimates used. Eastern Kentucky able to defend. I mean, they win it in the neutral. You love to see it. And it's the fact that you know, Azathoth right now is getting so much work done with this ground-based uh, Junkrat. I mean, they're taking the good angles. And Ghoul, though, early pick. They're going to get the res up. So that's the beauty of having in Mercy here. Now it's going to be Shatter v. Shatter. Ooh, and they're going to find both ends. But Arco's turning around to take out the nano-boosted Reinhardt and Zappy in the back line. Zappy finding Arcos though. And that just <laughs> shows you the value of throwing a nano on a Reinhardt, what that can do in the 1v1 battle. Ryo Grand continuing their onslaught. I mean, that is just dirty. There, there's no other <laughs> there's no other word for it. That's just dirty. Uh, and right now, the supports, uh, you know, you're not able to speed into fights. Uh, we're sticking with the Cutico here, uh, which is good for the Antis. But what is the uh, Mercy's purpose now? Uh, what, do, what, do you, what are you damage boosting here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a pretty good point. Well, Kit is going to find a pick on Anonymous. This Kitsune rush was massive for Ryo Grand, but that's going to be EKU finding one back on Call Me Massey, and they're going to defend with 0.34 meters. Jeez Louise. Color me impressed, uh, but it was expensive. It was a three ultimate fight yeah. for them, uh, but they do devalue the Blizzard. So I think for them, you know, that's a win. Uh, but now they're going to be running into Sound Barrier, which is going to provide sturdiness. And then you've got the Dragon Strike, which is going to completely cordon off the point. They have nothing to defend against it. No, no, if they if they just get hit by it, then they're done. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, both support alts are down. They're just going to have to be very smart about their positioning here. Dragon's coming out, causing a lot of space to be had. That shield's going to fall. Arcos going with it, and oh no, stuck in the wings is going to be Dr. Tumult. Points contested, but not for long. Zappy's going to take out Kit and Garusa. Oh, one more will remain. That Lucio ult was huge. We're going to stay on, and they're going to cap it. Three meters, 30, or sorry, three meters, three minutes and 30 seconds left <laughs> on the clock. Ryo Grand makes their final push. I, I still am going to have a head scratch moment here for that sound barrier. Uh, you, there was yeah. no need yeah. to put, you were already up three. So, I mean, there was no need to push that through. Uh, you might be wanting that back for this upcoming shatter and tire. The ghoul uh, is not going to let Azathoth get that off. No. And it's looking like ghoul's also not going to let Dr. Tumult try to get the res on Azathoth. Ooh, so much value from that sonic arrow. You can see the entirety this landing pad final use of the point. Zappy trying to play out this earth shatter a little bit. Argos has one as well. Eastern Kentucky with three online. Ryo Grand is going to have to make quick work of this nano boosted ride to take out Eastern Kentucky. They want to see Argos pushing in, recognizing that they're low. The wall is going to save them in the moment, and that's going to be a grip tire from up top, taking out two on the side of Ryo Grand. But they're going to respond with it is a bloodbath on point. Uh, I mean, that's the value uh, that you gain. And the fact that you didn't have Azathoth on the point. Uh, this is going to be a point taken. Well, I say that. The Katsuni Rush actually gets them on point. Wow. In the nick of time, Arcos falling low. Finding the other end of the Biotic. Azathoth is going to push in. That's a dead eye from the Cole Cassidy and Kit. Pushing on to point, gonna find it and call me Massey, but that's gonna be cool. Take about Garusa to follow Zappy on Garusa. It is so back and forth, but Ryo Grand will pull it out of the back pocket with Nolan and Zappy putting it in the last few meters. One minute and 54 seconds left for the University of Ryo Grand. Eastern Kentucky has quite a mountain to climb. You know, my question is, Chase, is are they aware that they are allowed to swap? Uh, heroes in the middle of in the middle of games. 
<laughs> because, I certainly uh, hope so. I mean, the fact that if you had a if you had a Lucio there, you immediately put pressure on the Rhine. Uh, not right. able to push in, you know, just willy nilly. There, there's nothing to hold in against it. Um, the Katsude rush came out late, and it does buy them purchase on the point. But the sure. anti need, I mean, Gutters uh, wasn't able to get out of spawn because they took a, a arrow to the dome uh, from Ghoul. So Ghoul really putting up some massive numbers here uh, for Rio Grande and Eastern Kentucky. I want to see some adaptation here. I want to see them come out. And, and have some uh, have some faith in what they can do as a team, because there have been shines of, of brilliance here uh, from them. I mean, they're playing up right now, and uh, you love to see it. I mean, you know, I think March Madness is going all around; it's infecting everybody, uh, <laughs> even in the NECC. Uh, we've seen it in other competitions as well. Teams that you know you wouldn't think have a, a chance uh, have been really making games out of it. So. Uh, Rio Grande right now need to be aware uh, of the danger coming in, especially running in with this uh, Sigma and the Genji. The Genji is going to be the real uh, kicker here. Seeing when they uh, try to throw these fire strikes in, they're going to be deflecting those back. Yeah, I think Rio Grande have a very interesting approach to this defense. I like that they kept an Mouse on this May right. We're going to find value very early in kit. Um, but being able to wall off the targets in this doorway, it's textbook for this map. So it, it at least shows a little bit of promise. Maybe the Genji pick here in Eastern Kentucky was more of a, a variable pick, right? Maybe they feel themselves on this pick sometimes and Nazathoth was like, let me just try it. I mean, I don't hate it. Uh, you saw the value earlier with the fire strike being reflected back and getting a lot of damage on everybody. Big anti nade coming in from Dr. Tumult as well. It's going to put even more pressure on them. Yeah, Ghoul coming back as well. Now on the Hanzo, double dash from Azathoth, finding, ooh, narrowly finding the Lucio and Call Me Massey, but the duo supports are gonna keep each other alive for the moment. Ghoul looking to maybe get some pop shots out, but Eastern Kentucky, you're absolutely right, Chef Billy. They have pushed Rio Grande completely off this point. Minute 21 to take the point. So, I mean, they're a little bit below what University of Rio Grande did, but still, pretty impressive push there. It's on the back of getting aggressive. Azathoth really pulling their team uh, through that team fight, uh, getting the dash reset and really putting the support for under serious pressure. That's what you want to see. You want to see your Genji getting in there, getting scrappy, and really pulling resources out of the defenders. And honestly, I think that's what we're about to see with the Gravitic Flux. Gravitic Flux coming out if they're able to do enough damage. I thought that they were going to wait for the Dragon Strike and Azathoth. That's going to be a blizzard to follow from Anonymous, keeping them in this doorway. They might be able to find the kill onto Arcos, but in the back line, that's going to be Dr. Tabolt keeping them alive. Eastern Kentucky keeps this push alive for the moment, but that's going to be Zappy with an Earth Shatter, not finding anyone, getting purpled and getting taken down from an Arcos kit in the wings. Wow, what a defense from Eastern Kentucky in the face of that blizzard. I mean, they're looking very uh, comfortable here. And Eastern Kentucky now is going to be able to push forward on the back of that. Arcros, by the way, uh, had put out the Gravitic Flux at the beginning of that fight. Already 55% towards their next. So they're going to have the uh, the Kinetic Grasp available for this Dragon Strike. Look for an eat here. We've seen one eat already from Arcos. We can see if they can do it again. True. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That was, uh, that was a little spicy, Billy. I was not expecting that. And we're going straight into the fight. Oh my gosh, that's going to kick things open. Kit finding another headshot on Call Me Massey. We're going to see a Kitsune rush come through. Kit looking for more in the back line. But I mean, Eastern Kentucky, Arcos is finding all of these shots. Kit is finding all these shots. Azathoth is following up, getting these dash resets. They are looking, like you said earlier, like they have teeth and they are showing them right now, Chef Billy. Oh man, there is there is fight in this dog. Uh, Eastern Kentucky <laughs> really showing up big. Dragon Strike still online here, but they're gonna enter the foundry with 435 on the clock uh, and they still got Gravitic Flux on their mind. Nothing to defend against it except for an immortality barrier. Exactly, that immortality field is gonna be crucial for this next fight. Arcos taking them up, putting them down. This is the Immort coming out. Azathoth finding the kill onto Arcos, hearing the dragons come out from Ghoul. 
That's going to be the Reflect having to come through. Ryan deciding against that dash. Little too late, maybe. Uh, finding themselves very low and on the other end of a Storm Arrow. They're going to fall to a beatdown from Arcos. Ryo Grand has got to pick up the pace here if they want to make it out in touch. Uh, they're not going to it. I think this Dragon Strike is going to keep everybody off the point. Oh, man, this is massive coming through. They're going to get caught in it. Oh, and they tried to get the Tracer around and they weren't able to get there fast enough. Wow, I did not anticipate Ryo Grand not being able to defend there. And it looked like their Tracer was just kind of sitting outside of the spawn. I'm not quite sure what's going on on the back end of Ryo Grand, but they are, are starting to feel the pressure, certainly. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but I mean, it was the Dragon Strike, it was the Vision. And they heard the sonic arrow, that little whizzing sound, or that little uh, ping sound that you hear mm. when you know that there's a sonic arrow. They knew that there was vision there, so they were waiting for the rest of their team to get out there. At that point, you got to get out there, make the touch, get your recall, blink back in, and that would have allowed you know members to get back in. But you also saw uh, poor Ghoul go flying like a rag doll uh, <laughs> from the kill that came through from uh, from Arcos on that Sigma. Man, I mean, there was a lot of work that got done there uh, by Eastern Kentucky, and they never really withstood a challenge once they got around the bookstore, where I thought they had a real opportunity uh, to be stopped. Uh, they push in. They use the Gravitic Flux smartly. They use the Nano smartly. Uh, and now for Eastern Kentucky, uh, I mean, they're looking at you know a, a minute and 45 seconds, almost two minutes between the time makes. I mean, this is huge uh, for yeah. Eastern Kentucky. Yeah, if you're Eastern Kentucky, you are wanting to hold as long as possible here. And you're absolutely right, Arcos. Man, I mean, you're, all, you're absolutely right, Chef Billy. Arcos is hitting these hyperspheres like there's no tomorrow. There's no missing any of these. Now, they are going to be able to push in a little bit as the Thoth. Going to swap over to the Bastion, go into turret mode, try to keep them out of this front doorway. They're going to make it through, and that's going to be Anonymous responding as well on the Bastion. Both teams have had it. They are kicking the pedal to the metal kit, finding an early pick on Call Me Massey. As the Thoth finding another one, Kit finding one on Anonymous. My lord, Eastern Kentucky is looking strong on this defense. They are feeling it. Uh, and, I, mean, I don't know who's going to get to their ultimate first. Is it going to be uh, Dr. Tumult? Is it going to be Garusa? I mean, these two are 60% uh, already, both of them, towards their ultimate. And they know that there are people to kill around here. Nolan actually is going to be the first with their ultimate up. Watch for Zappy come through with Hyperspheres and Anonymous through this window. This is going to be massive. And call me Massey, bringing out the Zenyatta. Yeah. Zenyatta finally making its debut. Ooh, and that's going to be the amplification matrix coming out from Nolan. Trying to loop around, but my lord, falling very low is going to be Anonymous. That's what you get for being on the other end of a Storm Arrow. That's a Bastion versus a Hanzo. We're seeing the Ballards fall in the back line. Ooh, looking for a pick, but instead look, going to find a Kitsune. Dragons may come out, but they may actually not. They don't really need to them eastern kentucky holding this defense strong and if i'm ryan brand i am telling everyone to just hold alts who is not going to do that <laughs> no i mean no oh, reason to no. no reason to uh they they knew that they had the win condition on their on their uh on their mice and on their keyboard and they really did uh weather the storm there i think the questionable use of that window from nolan to use it for themselves yeah. Rather than allowing the whole team to have it, because uh, you could have sent hyperspheres, you could have sent the damage from Anonymous on that Bastion. Can I mean, the damage boost going through from turret form, hello, that burns yeah. down everything. Yeah. Uh, unless you've got kinetic grasp up, everybody's dead. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, you're done. Even so, if you're the Sigma on the other side of that, you got your accretion. You can just throw that rock, and that's gonna hurt. Uh, yep. going going through the, the the amplification matrix but you're absolutely right I am not sure what was going on with Ryo Grand they dry fought for so long they were just building up ultimates as long as they possibly could and then they kind of just sporadically used them chef Billy they there was really no coordination around the alt usage there and hello you you have dragons with the amp matrix you have everything with the amp matrix you even you even have the sojourn all at the very end the overclock was 
going. So, I mean, all you had to do is just group up and wait for the team push together, right? Yep. smart yeah that's a really smart play from Ryo Grand on this defense because even they really can't afford to lose anyone Ooh, ghoul finding a sweet forehead and kit gonna fall very very early ghoul now looking for dr. tumult ghoul of returner on this roster of University of Rio Grande, someone that we've seen in the NECC for quite some time now and they are slaying tonight absolutely Jacob Hill, the graphic design major, killing it on this soldier. Oh. It might be that we might have lost Chef Billy on Phoenix. Sorry if you can't hear him. Uh, but he'll be back in just a moment. We're working on it on the back end. Kit gonna find a kill on Call Me Massey. Arco's finding another one with a, gr a Grecian block. That's gonna be Garusa now on an automass, and that's gonna be the map for Eastern Kentucky White. Wow, that's a 1-1 now, and they're now showing that they are here to fight. They're here to win, and they are scrapping. That's a 1-1 in maps, and now we're going into uh, Escort next. So, anyone's game. <laughs> yep. I hear you just fine. I don't know. I don't know if it's just me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's where I'm like, ah, what's happening? <laughs> It's, it's also a big mental hit, right? If you're on the side of Rio Grande and you're off that hard on the first map, you win it and you go into a payload. I mean, there's only one control and arguably all of the other map types are more closer to that payload style, right, Chef Billy? So when you put them in that environment and now they're stuck, uh, I mean, going into the next map, if I'm Rio Grande, I'm taking a break and I'm going, all right, you know, what happened? What do we need to switch up? Who do we need to focus? Um, and they're going to have just a bit of time to do that because we're also going to take a short break and we'll be right back to you in the next couple of minutes.
Good evening, folks, and we're back vibing to the music. Chef Billy and I on the mic. The vibes are real, and Eastern Kentucky is clapping back harder than the bee on stream. Rio Grande taking the first round, but Eastern Kentucky coming back winning the second. Chef Billy, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm thinking that you know the fact that they went away from some of the uh, some of the supports that we saw on the uh, on the first the control map definitely playing into their favor uh also playing as a five-man unit and really getting that pack mentality going in for the kill uh really eastern kentucky took it to uh university of rio grande and got the better of them so you know they're going to be feeling it this one and you know as we uh look at our next map coming up uh we see eastern kentucky university ban out junker town and so we're gonna head to uh, rio grande's gonna take us to uh dorado and I'm wondering if we're going to see D.Va or if we're going to see some Winston come out here in the tank department. Yeah, we may see a little bit more dabble and a dive as we move forward onto Dorado. But I'm interested to see what snipers are chosen. We've seen Widowmakers as mm. well as Hanzo's all night. So with that wide open space, I'm wondering what they decide to pick on both offense and defense because it could be viable going either way. I mean, look, I, I think that a Torbjorn could come out here uh, to deal with a Tracer because Tracer does work remarkably well uh, on Dorado. I also think uh, that we might see, uh, you know, an Ash come out again. We have seen a damage boosted Ash come out and high ground is such a high priority, both first and second points. And using the coach gun to be able to reposition yourself uh, in your defense I, is really going to be something that I'm looking at. Uh, we do have some substitutions. <laughs> Coming in here, Mad Puppy is in for Zappy123, and Theory03 is in for Call Me Massey for University of Rio Grande. So uh, we'll see uh, how this is going to play out. The uh, tank is swapping out as well as one of the supports. So we'll see how this is actually going to run uh, for University of Rio Grande. You know, they, I don't think they were expecting uh, to be losing a map to a two and four or two and four team. Uh, and this is not what they were wanting to see. And I mean, if you're looking at Kentucky or Eastern Kentucky's season, I mean, it's either been a three zero or a zero three. Uh, and I mean, right now, you know, last week they got a three one victory. 
uh, over FGC Blue. And I mean, the same result almost from University of Rio Grande, um, FGC Blue, they went 3-0 up against them. So, I mean, there is some room here uh, for Eastern Kentucky to come in uh, and really steal uh, this series away. And I mean, if they take this series, uh, which, you know, is very possible right now with the way they're playing together as a hive mind, this could actually turn uh, into one of the series of the year. So, man, uh, I'm excited to see how Dorado goes. I'm excited to see how the tank uh, swap up here uh, and the, the support swap up coming in for Rio Grande uh, is going to change uh, the tenor and the view of this series. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Call me Massey playing that uh, clean support last game, but we saw them getting picked a little early on in these fights. So maybe that's the play from Rio Grande. I mean, when you have a full roster of seven players, right? Use, use all the players. Make sure yeah. that um, you're playing to the strengths of what's going on. And if someone just isn't feeling it that night, you swap them out. But the swapping out of Zappy, I thought that Zappy and Arcos were going pretty back and forth in the tank mm -hmm. lineup. So seeing zappy now get swapped out for mad puppy um being the flex player on the roster very eager to see how they do because uh puppy is also a freshman on the roster whereas zappy is a senior so maybe they're really testing things up maybe they're saying uh let's try out this comp see how it's going to work for future years because i mean this is going to be our comp moving forward but you're absolutely right chef billy looking at the eastern kentucky roster tonight this could be a great predecessor to a playoff run um and for this team well i, I we see it uh there's the winston right there being flashed by yep. the university of rio Grande. so uh eastern kentucky here uh coming out with the uh the southern shooters as i call them uh the cassidy and the ash you're gonna have the damage boost mm -hmm. available you're also gonna have the cleanse available uh, and if they stick with this uh nano winston approach you've got the uh, cleanse for those anti grenades coming in. So, this True. is going to be very dynamic uh, how they play off of each other. Suzu is going to be so important here for Eastern Kentucky. Let's see how they do this. You're right. The protection Suzu is going to be vital as we're moving straight into game. We got a little bit of a Widowmaker battle up top. Kit going to take out Ghoul very early. Now, that's going to be jumping up on the high ground. Uh, they're trying to get some space. I'm losing a little bit on my end as well, Chef Billy. I can't tell if you're losing some or not. I have completely lost it. There we go. It's back in here. And I mean, Kit is getting the work done up here on the high ground chase. Uh, you know what? We've got that damage boost going through. Big nade coming up once again. They're going to dive it on top. And the Reaper is up there too. Yeah, they're pushing up Mad Puppy, getting some major damage out with that Tesla cannon in the background. Anonymous taking out Azathoth as well. It's going to put Eastern Kentucky a little bit on the back foot. Kit finding the kill on to Theory. Now pushing in. That's going to be the protection, Suzu, you were talking about earlier. And a very, very low back line. Cool making their way back there with Mad Puppy. And this is a Rio Grande roster that is not playing around. Nope, but I mean, you see this swap over here for for Azathoth uh, going to the Genji. So you're going to be looking for uh, some of the damage mitigation coming in from Anonymous, from Ghoul. Uh, you know, and the high ground is going to be at a premium here. They already have the capture of point A. So 449 going through the streets here. Bob online, though. Kit has been getting the work done with the Viper. Just, just need to decide, decide how they're going to be able to path this. But sites uh, are going to allow everybody to know where they're at. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a difficult hold here. Uh, I think that they need to push up into uh, University of Rio Grande. Don't wait. Get on top of them and give them the business. Ooh, they're giving them the business. All right. Kit finding the head on Anonymous is going to put Rio Grande back in spawn a little bit. And they're probably going to wait this out for all of the roster to make it in in terms of dry fighting though eastern kentucky looking clean they have three ultimates online they're gonna have that kitsune rush here very soon as a thought on this tracer is a menace kit fighting the head on theory ghoul fighting that on dr tumult what is this a back and forth sniper duel between each of these players ghoul finding the other end of an accretion and a dynamite gonna fall back a little bit as a thought getting the Fist onto Ghoul in the back line. You love to see it. Tracer taking out the Widowmaker. Mad Puppy backing up and 
in the first couple minutes, Chef Billy, University of Rio Grande have really planted their flag, pushing this payload, almost making it to the second checkpoint. I mean, th it's been scrappy from both sides. Uh, and they haven't dealt with Anonymous on this Reaper yet. That's the big difference between uh, the two teams. Uh, putting right. out the... Uh, Putting out the bob does uh, stem a lot of this damage coming in. I, I think that's really uh, the first good positive momentum that we're seeing from Eastern Kentucky here. Uh, I think that in the uh, in, in the DPS department, uh, they need to get somebody on top of this uh, on top of this Widowmaker because that's the real problem for them right now is they don't have anything long range to get in on top of them. Uh, you would want to see uh, Arcos go onto the maybe the Diva. Uh, I think that's a great pick. Uh, well, talk about a great pick, Mad Puppy. Getting the kit down, and I don't know if they're going to be able to get this res. I don't think so. Azathoth finding the pick on Nolan as well. Mad Puppy back on Garusa. It's back and forth, and I'm just saying right now, Eastern Kentucky, if they're going to want to really hold this, they need to swap to a Reaper here. Mad Puppy is just running rampant. Uh, either that or a Bastion. Uh, I think the Reaper is yep. a better choice, but the Bastion, at least as far as pure damage output, uh, is the way to go. Garusa taking down Ghoul. You oh do not see a Kiko take down a we uh, Widowmaker very often, but it has happened here. Uh, and as we approach <laughs> yeah. 340, uh, you've got Primal Rage and the Death Blossom. So I think that you hold right now, especially with how much work you're getting done. Uh, you can hold on to this Death Blossom until you really need it. Maybe wait for the Nano uh, to give you the damage mitigation as well. Right. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see how they actually path this because 320 now uh, and only the Valkyrie online. Yeah, they do have the Valkyrie online, which could realistically save them in a situation and allow Mercy a little bit more freedom to res, but definitely a hill that uh, Eastern Kentucky University is going to have to climb because Rio Grande is waiting. Bob going to get thrown in the backline kit, hunting for more heads. Once again, Azathoth going to take out Nula and Goal in the backline. That's going to be Arcos as well, taking out Anonymous. Eastern Kentucky holding their defense and Rio Grande needing to back up. That's going to be a, a good stagger onto Theory as well. They've bought their time though, right, Chef Billy? They have two minutes, 30 seconds left in this map they can still make it happen that was some good dry fighting unfortunately they did see the primal rage popped by mad puppy but they got kitsune coming on they got overclock coming on they did force uh eastern kentucky's one valkyrie ult in that fight so this could look good for them they had to throw the bob out there too to make sure the point was contested so i mean they right. lost track of anonymous that's why they throw it out there but now uh looking at i mean mad puppy going in on top of this and getting the assassination times two hello winston beautiful work yeah, absolutely. And that's speaking of beautiful work, that's going to be the Katsune. And no! ooh, that was a questionable Death Blossom coming out very, very low when they pop that. And you do not want to fight in this Katsune rush. Aye, Anonymous aye. on a rampage fighting kit as they're coming out of the spawn. I don't even think they're going to be able to touch Chef Billy. That's going to be Digi with the gash. They're going to make it with four meters left. Nolan pushing them off. They're not going to be able to touch in time. 1 minute 45 on the side of University Rio Grande. Arco swapping over to the Hammond, trying to make out, out in time. Unfortunately, that did not fall through for them. Aye, aye, aye. I mean, that was a very unfortunate press of the Q button there uh, from Azathoth <laughs> on the Reaper. Uh, got one die and then was immediately silenced. Uh, back to the spawn with you, Satan! Uh, and got taken care of. So, I mean, Rio Grande... They started having some issues, especially when we saw the swap over from Reaper uh, onto uh, Eastern Kentucky side. Mad Puppy was starting to have massive problems. The problem was, is that they kept sticking with this Mercy. And Mercy, I did not see, except for one res the entire round, uh, the value just was not there. Once again, you can right. change your hero in the middle of these rounds, and I think that a Lucio, to speed your Reaper around, to speed your other members around, to have the sound barrier come up, uh, would have been a, a, a massive boon for them as it stands. Uh, they're facing a yep. one minute 45 uh, time deficit. And, uh, you know, uh, if we're, Ryo Grand, if this stays the way it is, uh, they're gonna be up on match point. Absolutely, and I do agree for the point uh, that, you know, sometimes, 
players are gonna focus more characters than others, right? You're gonna have your hit scan versus your flex DPS, and maybe Kit is that hit scan. But Azathoth, I feel like should have stayed on that tracer. Kit should have swapped over to the Reaper to add more value for the backline for Eastern Kentucky. But now moving into it, Eastern Kentucky has their chance to push. They've made a couple of swaps, and this could really benefit them moving forward. University of Rio Grande gonna keep Ghoul on this Widowmaker for the first defense, though. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. You got the long range hook there. You don't, I mean, it just provides so much high ground control right now. And especially if you click heads like that, uh, it's going to take care of work. I mean, that's a massive amount. That's a great nade coming in from Tumult. And well, Tumult just says, I'm going to take care of it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Tumult said, you need a sniper. I gotcha. <laughs> They will get to push this payload as well. They are going to make some progress. Found a couple of great kills very early, sending Rio Grande back. And now it's going to be all up to pacing from Rio Grande, right? They don't want to engage this too early and continue the stagger. We see teams do this time and time again. Eastern Kentucky staying behind this play payload, playing cover very well. And Rio Grande will want to reposition for the fight. Mad Puppy finding a quick kill onto Azathoth, and they're going to push through the back line. Trying to jump in is going to be Mad Puppy, but Azathoth keeping that spin on lock. Playing this corner exceptionally well, Mad Puppy ensuring Eastern Kentucky cannot round. And realistically, this is where they want to hold, right? They want to hold right underneath this bridge as long as possible. Yep, and I mean, it's, it's the best sight lines uh, for the defense coming through. And I mean, big antis coming through. Uh, Nolan taking out Kit just in the middle of that. But I mean, the, the answer is there. Uh, the big problem right now is that, you know, how are you going to close the space here on top of Arcos with this with this Orisa? Uh, you're going to be able to have so much utility in the back pocket. And Azathoth getting overly aggressive here. Don't want to see them drop early again. No, absolutely not. That's going to be up to uh -oh. Anonymous to really deal with this everyone to deal with everyone and Autumn House with a death blossom in the back line gonna take out nearly everyone but Azathoth trying to get back on and Autumn House getting the headshot Ghoul responding swiftly to Azathoth kill sending them back to the spawn room and Eastern oh. Kentucky reeling backwards great dry fright from University of Rio Grande they used one ultimate and on an anonymous House but they still have two in the weeks Oh, that, that was a nano uh, death blossom. Uh, Nolan did use. Oh that. my lord! That's why it was that. That's why it was highly effective. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, already forty percent almost to another nano. So I mean, the work is getting done here. But I mean, what is this Kasune rush? What are you hoping to play, play with this? What, uh, I don't know, but you take your ball and you go home, Chef Billy. That's going to be a terror surge <laughs> coming out from Arcos, and they're pulling a hard, cool. Finding a pick on Dr. Tumult in this overclock. Looking for the heads. Finding a few, but not everyone quite yet. They're really trying to hold this, but I don't think it's going to happen in time. What a hold coming through. I mean, this is uh, actually looking really good. Kid? Hello, the Deadeye wow. from point blank range. I mean, Anonymous is going to go bye bye. Uh, so they're still contest. They're just wasting time now. They're still. Uh, yeah, 35 but they're seconds. holding. Right? Yeah, I they mean, held for so long. I mean, it was on the back of the, the mid to long range DPS here uh, for University of Rio Grande. I mean, they really do have Google kind of dialed in right now uh, with that mid to long range poke coming in. And, you know, Azathoth, uh, I think it's getting a little bit over aggressive in their push, uh, trying to take Mad Puppy down, trying to get on the back line. Uh, we'll see if Azathoth can get anything done with this uh, with this Death Blossom coming up. Ooh, they're gonna try. Also doing some sniping of their own, hitting these shots. Reaper gonna come up, get slept <laughs> immediately by Nolan. Nolan ready, throwing the antibiotic grenade as well. Garusa, maybe not using the Suzu, not really needing it. It wasn't up at the time, but still a very cheeky play overall. As the thought, trying to get to the uh, high ground and then immediate sleep putting him away that that was uh, too classic uh healer heal thyself uh is something that i i say very often with uh these bloodthirsty support uh <laughs> i it's one of my favorite things to see i love to see a beautifully timed sleep dart uh when they think oh i'm gonna jump on top. no you're not <laughs> no you're not no no i'm good i'm good you go sleepies uh but I mean, oh, look at the angle got, from nolan right you've got so much to play with here in the Primal Rage is going to be first. Ooh, that Primal Rage is going to be huge in this backline. And Anonymous 
Uh, he pushed him into it! Yeah! And the whole time, <laughs> Kit and Garusa finding a couple of replay, but oh my gosh! That was just a huge play coming out from Anana Mouse. That death boss was massive. <laughs> That's just insult to injury, Chase. I mean, getting slapped around by a Winston. Oh, oh by the way, I'm going to slap you into a death blossom. GG's have fun. Go next. So, I mean, for Eastern Kentucky, their push now consists of almost a five pack of ultimates. Uh, but there's still lots here for University of Rio Grande to deal with. That's a 2K with that blossom. Yeah, Azathoth finding the kills where they're needed to continue this cart push, but they don't really have the time, right? They only have 60 seconds. If Rio Grande holds here, that could be it, but what? We're gonna see a huge stagger onto Nolan and Ghoul. They're likely not gonna be able to contest here. Nah, there won't be a contest here. Uh, this will be 210 going into uh, the foundry here. And I mean, they're not gonna match the time uh, that Rio Grande set up. Uh, but, I mean, what is going to happen is kills are going to come through. Nolan take it out twice, still holding on to Nano. This is a chance for them to actually get pretty close uh, to the time. If they, you know, roll through here and continue on this path, they should be about 20 seconds below what Rio Grande put up. And, you know, I I'm looking right now. Double support ultimates ready to go for Rio Grande. Yeah, they're ready to pull the trigger. Both Kitsune rushes likely going to be pulled at the same time as I say that. We hear it from Garusa and Theory. Overclock coming through as well. Deadeye getting popped. We're hearing a circus of ults here on point. Both sides. Ooh. Ryo Grand picking up the slack a little bit. Able to get into the back line. Arcos falling low and they're going to fall. That's going to be Ryo Grand with their final defense here. Eastern Kentucky with just one minute left and one more push. And it was so expensive for them. Uh, they put in two ultimates for them. Uh, three ultimates, I'm sorry. Azathoth now going over to the Bastion. I think it's going to be a little bit too little too late. Uh, just depends on what kind of work they can get done on top of Mad Puppy. And they got to watch out for Anonymous Mouse now because that Blossom is almost online again. Yeah. Well, there's also one thing I've noticed growing up in the uh, farms of Indiana playing Overwatch. It's that never meet the battle cattle in an open field. Arcos, <laughs> as I say that, Caster's Curse coming through. Arcos is going to get Biotic grenaded and sent back to the spawn room with 30 seconds left. That terrorist surge could have been huge in closing out this map for Eastern Kentucky. I mean, unluckers. Uh, that, that's the way it is. Uh, <laughs> 20 seconds going in. Uh, never meet the battle cattle in an enclosed space. Yes! Uh, I live in the Midwest too, and I am I, I am very aware of not meeting uh, battle cattle uh, when they're enraged like that. So uh, you yeah. know, Nano uh, into I, I you know I'm gonna throw it on the Bastion here, but uh, Mad Puppy's not even gonna let them touch yeah. the Primal Rage is too good. Oh, the Mad Puppy's gonna try not to let him touch Arcos, trying to get in time, and there we hear it. There's a Terror Surge coming out. Ghoul on the edge, but that's gonna be Arcos as well with the Terror Surge, and now it's a one v one on both sides. Both are getting just absolutely demolished right now. Getting everything on the other end. That's going to be Ghoul taking out Arcos, though, and putting another one up for the University of Rio Grande. Okay. Ghoul just uh, clutching up in the best possible way there. The overclock, getting the full value, and then getting the nano on back of it once that dissipates. I mean, what a organization of their ults. What a rotation that came through from the University of Rio Grande there. I mean, you're going to see it right here. One. And a two, and a one, two, three, four. Uh, it's gonna be one, two, three, four. I mean, just beautiful uh, from them. Poor Azathoth didn't have a place to go. And I mean, after that, you would see the Nano come through and then you would see them taking down uh, Arcos there on the Orisa. So, I mean, that was a beautiful uh, last sequence coming out of University of Rio Grande. Now, uh, we're sitting on match point. Eastern Kentucky, it's gonna be their map pick. Uh, I don't know. I mean, do we see substitutes come back in? Uh, Mad Puppy really was able uh, to hold a lot of space there uh, for the University of Rio Grande. Theory uh, had a very good Kiriko. So, I don't know. I, I, I think that, you know, the substitutions chase really did pay uh, good dividends for them. And I, I don't know if I would be necessarily changing back right now. 
I wouldn't. Honestly, if I'm Eastern Kentucky, I'm looking to maybe make some substitutions. Uh, yeah. They have a very, very large roster, roster of about nine folks total. So they have some folks waiting in the wins that they could put into this point. It's absolutely a slap fest on both sides, though. We saw that <laughs> on attack and defense for both of these rosters. It's been exciting. It, it's been a good series. And Eastern Kentucky, I love to see a team that does not... Uh, Cower in putting up a fight, right? They're there. They're in the front lines. Uh, Rio, ban Rio Grande is going to ban Esperanza, and Eastern Kentucky is actually going to pick New Queen Street for our push map. Oh, boy. Uh, so Reaper works very well here. Uh, so does the Sojourn. Uh, and the other thing that we have seen already today from uh, Eastern Kentucky is Junkrat. Junkrat actually thrives uh, in the snow of Toronto. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of compositions we're going to come out with from these two teams. Uh, you know, Eastern Kentucky probably have a strategy set up here that they know what they want to do here on this push map and push. I was saying it with, uh, with Bullskank earlier, we were doing the team Ireland trials push has rapidly become my favorite, uh, of the game types here in overwatch two. Really? Yep. And the reason why is it teaches us how to play overwatch two. You don't have to win every single uh, team fight and get the most meterage unless that's what the map type calls for. It teaches you how to tactically disengage. I think that's something right. that a lot of people, you know, below uh, contenders level need to learn uh, is how to tactically disengage from a fight and take the next fight on your own terms. And that is what push, you know, for all of us that are o Overwatch one veterans. OK, th this is something that we need to get drilled into our heads. The tactical disengage is actually a wonderfully positive thing. Just because you lose somebody doesn't mean that you have to lose the entire team. You can come back. You can get away from the damage coming in, you know, and recoalesce as a full team. And I mean, it's something that, you know, I really have started to really grow on me. I hate Coliseo. I'm going to say that I do not like that map whatsoever. I think it was very poorly designed and I, and I, I love the game. OK. But Coliseo, uh, it's too linear. There, it, it's too straightforward. It's not. There's not enough noodle work going on. New Queen Street. There's lots of little nooks and crannies. There's lots of little shops that you can go on from level to level. Uh, and and of course, Esperanza is the is the gold standard for push maps. Uh, that map gives me nightmares in the best possible way because you <laughs> never know where somebody's going to come from. And that's the beauty of it, is you know the fact that you can tactically dis disengage. You can go through all these little alleyways and, and crooks and bends and you know get yourself away from the damage and they come back as a full team it, it, it's so good at teaching you the tactical disengage uh that's why i love it so much so uh new queen street is actually going to be a very fun map i want to see azathoth really pop the you know what off here on a junk rat because junk rat can get some serious work done here chase Oh boy. Oh, can Junkrat do that on this map? I am eager to see as well what choices they make here because you kind of have to play around a Junkrat, right? You can't just ignore the Junkrat and like play a Doomfist for that instance, right? I don't know why you'd be uh -huh. playing Doomfist right now. Anyway, but, yeah. but you can't do that, right? You, 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 you kind of have to respect the rat. So I'm eager to see what we see come out. And I'm honestly a little floored, Chef Billy, that uh, push is your favorite map, and I'm glad that you explained tactical disengaging why it's your favorite map. I think that that makes a lot of sense with that in mind. But um, that is uh, um, that is something. That is something that a lot of people don't agree with. A lot of people aren't like in Push and meme. Overwatch too. Chase, it's the <laughs> meme where you have the, the uh, what is it, Fiero uh, with all the knives pointed at him when he's sitting on the throne chair. Yep. That, yep. You're right. That's, the, that's yep. me. <laughs> Uh, with that take, and I mean, you know, when when you cast uh, all all the different levels of competition that I do, I mean, you see it uh, from yeah. the you know the highest level to the lowest level, and it's something that oh, you're everybody, absolutely right. It's something that everybody in Overwatch Two needs to learn is the art of the tactical disengage. Um, so we'll see uh, how this is going to work here uh, for Rio Grande for Eastern Kentucky. Uh, we do not see the jump rat come out. Instead, we see the oh. May. So we're Still actually running, we're, we're running into a pseudo uh, ice cold comp. You don't have the speed, you don't have the immortality barrier. So this is going to be actually a, a very difficult proposition for them to be able to hold through, because you don't have that uh, safety net of the immortality barrier to allow you to get overly aggressive. Eastern Kentucky, there you go, right there. That is the first clue as to how this is going to go. 
Oh, the sleep coming through, but falling immediately, getting stuck, and that is a critical ride. Arcos is backing up Eastern Kentucky, needing Ooh. to get the healing on lock quickly. Rio Grande is going to take the bot first, but as you said it, and it's something that Berkeley and I say a lot as well, Chef Billy, the best thing you can do in Overwatch 2 is just back up, right? Yep. It, it, it's, a, it's a class act that you just need to have the... the the ability, the, the staz to step back and go, all right, we lost a member, back up. They're popping, you know, Annihilation, back up. You know, they're using Overclock, back up. It's just a constant theme in this game. Let them play out what they have, regroup, re-engage. Holy! So far, Eastern Kentucky has not had the chance to do so. Rio Grande putting the smack down in the first minute. Uh, Lagur, holy crap, Ghoul just owns it. Oh, Mad Puppy and Ghoul. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Zappy was good. Mad Puppy and Ghoul, even better. Uh, and I mean, look at the ultimates ready to go. I mean, the and the Nano was ready like 20 seconds ago. Nolan having such a great position. That's a beautiful Nano going on. Ghoul, huge! Oh! oh. oh. Ghoul was really looking for the shots on that overclock looking for dr tumult in the back line trying to send that phd back to school unfortunately not gonna find the shots the headshots they were looking for they do have a lot in their usage though kit finding the play on ghoul headshot and that's going to be the kitsune rush popping through they're pushing in and they are not letting them do whatever they want to do and not a mouse sending him back to spawn university of rio grand is absolutely tearing through this map I mean, you're just basically waiting right now for the Javelin spin to come through, and then you can pop that Death Blossom if you feel so inclined. But once again, it's, here's right. the tactical retreat. They're getting out, they're taking their meterage, they're getting back into the safety of their healers, and now, you know, they're waiting for this shield to come up. Big Anti does come through, but there's the cleanse. I mean, they are playing this perfectly. <laughs> yeah. That's, I was going to say earlier, I think that's why we're seeing a Mei and Kiriko on each side, right? Because we're seeing so many biotic grenades just getting hit. I think it makes sense for them to use the only other ability they can in the game to get that biotic grenade, that anti grenade, and that's the Suzu. Whoa! <laughs> two health and just took down two people, and then finally it goes by go But I mean, yeah, just I'm, I'm just gonna go in forehead. <laughs> the best thing that they do right Arco's pushing in after a massive terror surge and finally regaining footing for the side of eastern kentucky they did take the robot back in their possession they're looking to send it halfway back across the map now the thing with push here chef billy right is that they don't just have one fight to win they have to push it back through the map they're likely going to meet rio grande in the middle and they got to win a couple more fights to really start their push I mean, the, the first order of business when you get that much meterage against you is to get to the, the forward spawn negation, which is what they have yep. just done now. So the forward spawns are, are going to be in there. Oh my god! Oh, oh my, <laughs> not a mouse. Beautiful. Team kill. Bang a gong. There's the death knell. Um, I, I'm, I'm really confused, Chef <laughs> Billy. Instructions not clear. You said they needed to get the forward spawn clear. They did that, and then the whole team died. Please explain yourself. Uh, I mean, who knew that Anonymous was going to get a 4K? <laughs> I, didn't. I don't and think now, any of us expected that. <laughs> I mean, that's just a great play. You tip your hat and go next, and now they've got their own uh, answering. Oh, God, are they going to oh, pop here? Oh, as yep, I thought this going in. Oh, that's a massive sweep <laughs> coming out. Nine night as a thought. That's not going to be enough. And the Reaper may fall kit, taking out Ghoul in the main street. Nolan finding a great angle, and that's Eastern Kentucky holding again. Rio Grande weren't quite able to get up to where they wanted, but they did buy themselves another fight, and they dry fought for three of their members, so they do have quite a bit of alts at their disposal. They really do, but I mean, this uh, this uh, Deadeye could actually be the kicker here for Eastern Kentucky. If they can pull the shield out, then go in with it, especially with Azathoth taking down their opposite, this should Ooh. be an easy fight win for them. Uh, it's looking like an easy fight win so far. Actually, it's pretty back and forth on either side. Mad Puppy taking out Kit, and that's going to be a primal rage popped from Mad Puppy, pushing everyone all around. 
possession's gonna go on the side of Eastern Kentucky for the moment. Arcos is not missing any of these spears either. They are nailing every single time. N nearly taking someone off the map earlier. I wasn't quite able to see who that was, but they landed one of the spears, knocked him within an inch of the edge. But with that being said, Eastern Kentucky now starts their push for the map. Possession in their favor. It's about halfway through the clock. Do they have enough time? They do, uh, especially with the uh, Deadeye and the Consuming Rush coming available to them. Uh, you buy space with the Terror Surge, and then you go in with the rest. And there's another massive anti-nade. It's coming out left and right. Anonymous sweeping through the backline. Ghoul doing all the damage as well, hitting all those right clicks necessary. That overclock coming in clutch for the side of Ryo Grand. Loving the stamps they're putting down as well. Utilizing a lot of ultimates in that fight. Uh, they did use a Primal Rage. They did use a Kitsune. They are going to have Overclock from Ghoul Online. But Eastern Kentucky also has two very aggressive ults in their wings as well. With the Terror Surge and Deadeye coming out from Marcos and Kit respectively. I'm interested to see how this next fight goes and whether or not they're able to continue this push. I don't know. I mean, it's looking good for them right now. There's another great spear coming in. I mean, there it is on the back. Hit just closes in on the back of it. Oh, my God. Yeah, Ghoul looking for the heads again. But I think Eastern Kentucky taking a note from the from the cookbook of Chef Billy. And that is just back up. Take a trip backwards if you're hearing the alts pop. But they're going to use the nano boost now. Look for a couple of picks, and that's Azathoth with a massive death blossom for the side of Eastern Kentucky. They're gonna hold once more. <laughs> and I think this is why push is so prominent, right? We've seen a pretty even amount of fights, maybe University of Rio Grande having one up on Eastern Kentucky, but since Rio Grande won the first two fights, they just have so much more mileage. That's the big kicker uh, for this. And that's why the tactical disengage is so important. Now, uh, if they can take down Mad Puppy, I think that they have a, tr a chance to reach uh, the checkpoint, what a lot of people call the button. Scratch! Never mind, Anonymous with a 3k. Yeah, GG's. Every time, every time they make this point, every time we open our mouths, Anonymous just shuts it for us. This player on Rio Grande, just an absolute <laughs> menace. That's the ace. That is an ace That's there from an Anonymous. Three on the Death Blossom, then two in, uh, in the regular play. And I mean, and they went in dry. Uh, there was nothing on the back of that that helped them. So, I mean, that's just the power of good positioning and catching Easter Kentucky with their pants down, to be quite honest. Yeah. But Anonymous, uh, uh, like I said, a player that's been in the NECC before, was on a rip and tear last season. Excited to see the sophomore come out again. Nicholas Wartella, shout out to getting that ace on stream. What a defeat especially in a league match. Deadeye gonna come through. Ghoul gonna put quick work to that, ending that very quickly. Mad Puppy falling low as well. Right around 300 health in the form. Jumping on the back line though, getting the kills necessary for Rio Grande to advance this robot, and they're within meters of victory. I mean, they're gonna have the uh, Kitsune Rush. Uh, I'm sorry, they're gonna have Nano and the Overclock here. Overclock's gonna probably be popped. And well, the Nano for the defense is gonna be popped onto the Orisa. Yeah, the Arisa coming in, got enough for the Terra Surge, gonna pop it. Unfortunately, not gonna find anyone, but that's gonna be Ghoul with the Overclock, finding three on the side of Eastern Kentucky, finding a fourth in Arcos, and that is gonna be the win for the University of Rio Grande, three to one in this week of NECC Overwatch. And I think we all know who the play of the game is going towards. It's not who you think oh! it is. It's not oh! who you think it is, what? Someone scratched the record. What? Ghoul snagging the play of the game from Anonymous's ace. Wow. That is so funny. Okay. I mean, both equally good. I'm not going to lie. I, I preferred the Death Blossom, and it was more impactful. It was more immediate. But, I mean, Ghoul was showing tracking all series long. But I got to throw out a quick, a quick uh, kudos to Eastern Kentucky Chase. They actually came uh, to ball today and they really did put them up against, uh, put this uh, this Ryo Grand Squad up against it. 
and really came through in, in, in beautiful fashion. So kudos to them. But uh, in the end, Rio Grande, just too much firepower. Substitutions come through map number three, uh, and then they take three and four. So uh, beautiful work out of them. Beautiful work from both these teams. This is why I love Overwatch. Anything can happen on any given day. Absolutely. In Eastern Kentucky, we're showing that they were in this for the endurance. They were in it for the long haul. I think where they maybe fell a little short is just swapping, right? I, yep. You mentioned it midway through the series. They they were allergic to switching characters, swapping people in and out of the roster. So maybe that's something they look forward to. But, I mean, coming out swinging at the end of this season, sure, they lost to FGC Blue last week, but that was a 3-1 loss as well. I heard it was a close match. Same as tonight. Eastern Kentucky should have their heads high because because they are showing progress. I mean, it, it's showing it in the numbers right now. It's showing it tonight. We all just witnessed it. And I would have to agree. Huge shout out to that roster. Um, but Chef Billy, you know, we've come to the end of this match. And in yeah. uh, classic fashion, I have to ask you, who is your player of the match? Oh, gosh. Uh, honestly, for me, uh, I think it's going to have to be Nolan. I think Nolan in the support Nolan. department, the use of the biotic grenades. Uh, I think the use of the sleeps, when we saw sleeps uh, that confirmed kills and, and ended ultimates, and also the application of nano uh, was clean all series long. So I think Nolan, for me, uh, is going to be my MVP of the day. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't disagree with you at all. I mean, Nolan had so much impact in this match. Every time we saw someone on Eastern Kentucky try to dive the back line, usually it being Azathoth, Nolan would just land asleep. Right now, what are you doing? Get out of here. Or go to go to bed. Um, for me... I think I got to give play of the game to Anonymous. Um, I mean, throughout the entire series, sure, they shined in the last map, but throughout the entire series, shining on the DPS. Um, and this is a, a player that we've seen time and time again run rampant for Rio Grande. So I got to give a huge shout out over to Anonymous, um, as well as Ghoul. I mean, Ghoul putting in the work throughout the series. But for me, play or of the match has to go to Anonymous. Well, we got a DPS, we got a support. Guess what else we have? We have more Overwatch coming up, and it's going to be, uh, well, it's going to be Neely and Man of Class coming in here for the second series. And then you'll see me back here uh, after 10 o'clock, depending on how long this next series go. I will be online with Bull Skunk uh, for the last series of the night here on the A stream. But don't go away. We're going to have your next series coming up in just a few minutes. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone, to the NECC Highlighted. My name is Orbital, your host, and hopefully some amazing clips to follow. We are just done with week number seven, and, you know, I may have wrongly stated how many weeks are left, but, you know, that just means more action throughout the regular season. Things are heating up here as teams are ramping up once again with only two weeks left of regular play. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the amazing plays that have gone down this week as well and take a look at what the teams have to offer. Here are this week's highlighted moments. Just can't really do too much. You do get that shutdown on Maddie, but even in slow motion cover, still the back of the map. Up there towards ramp. Holding things down. Ooh. Gun get two oh. and find a third with it as well. That's a 4K for the round. Up through heaven. They've got to get a 4K. Can close up for one, hunting for There's a second. Two. Flawless between the two of them, but a defuse actively going down. They'll hop off for a moment. They'll find three. Now just one more around the corner. Prowler is sent. They've been marked before. They're in oh the open, and Maddie will clutch things up. Ooh, with the wide swing, leads to oh. nothing but damage just comes out. Your alibi, is that Kaid going to peek instead? It is going to be that mute as bodies trade back and forth back and forth clam on about 20 hp is going to have to stop this attack the c4 blows open aqua the player not the the coastline area and with two players remaining and a lot of time to work with you can get information really secure your spot here yeah, there we go. That's what's going to be really important for Qualifier is putting down the plant. Oh, he is going to be able to hear that go down. He's not fast enough in removing himself from the situation. A 3k now for Clam, who is just turning the attention at least. But that proximity alarm gives away the fact that Jacob is on the far side. There's a spray from in front, but timing costs him. Awesome's quickly evening it back up right now. That just leaves the Magic Comic and the Heretic here to fight this one out. Good swing from the... Magic Comic, he picks up two. Earthquake pushing in, the last one left alive, and another defense. 
Look for something cheeky here. Maybe just run in, give his life for it. Pops the ulti, but you know, he wants kills. Dragon will be locked down, though. He finds one. He will eat the dirt, though. Down goes yet another member, and it's actually looking pretty damn good for Ice. Tinker barely keeps Convicted alive, but three summoner spells on both sides going to be used. And oh. meanwhile, absence of mind, pops the counter strike. The BQ oh. goes back in, and he gets first blood. Much reason to stay here in the bot side. Victor gets rooted, but a nice condemn oh. onto the Maokai. Here comes Speedy Killing Ninja with the ult fill. The Twisted Advance is too late. Off the takeover goes out. Wow. Doesn't land. Drifter Man trying to at least get one back <gasps> onto Convicted. Oh. It's yet uses the second one, but cannot find a kill. Green Runner's already picked up the Lulu. Looking for one, but not going to find it. But this is Reset City for the Jinx. Make it three flags for what makes it four. Another quadra kill. The front line. They're nailing these shots. They're looking like a dominant force going into this. Ooh, Deadeye through the... Oh, wow! Here gets boofed by LSM. The morning side, the lion siding them, taking the dub of the first map. Beautiful shatter coming out from a monkey on the side of NTC for the play of the game. But it is all about making more as they are still down two in the game. Oh my oh. goodness, Gentix, are you kidding me? You know. I mean, this is uh, this is what this is all about, and I mean, we're getting action from both scenes right now. And early look at goal. Oh my God! Almost buried top corner, and the shot coming back in. That's it from Juventix. The uh, 10 second golden goal. He, I think it's gonna really come down to uh, some kind of magic from the end. The double tap. The duck core with the beautiful goal. That is a fantastic. Not everything can be perfect though, and not everything can work as planned. There are always some mistakes that might occur, and because of that, we have this week's misclicks. Please go ahead and enjoy some of the funnier moments of this week. Eddie takes one down. There's a quick teleportation over onto A, but it's it's denied, it's cancelled. And it's actually a trick to get Mig to teleport too, but they cancelled it as well. And picked up Two frags in the attempt to walk through. What is this blunder of epic proportions? The next ornament has already come out. It was given Hollow 2. That upgraded mask. I I'm going to be honest with the regular. I know none of the items. That's what are we naming? What are we naming? We got the um, leg already, so now, now we gotta give a great name to the meta. Landry's Anguish, Wolf, um, Landry's Torment. No. That was already an item name. We'll yeah. call it, uh, <laughs> we'll call it Leandry's Depression. And with that, we close out week seven. There's so much more action to be had as it all kicks off throughout the week, every day, starting at 5 p.m. EST. Starting on Monday, we'll be Valorant, of course, and we'll be running throughout the course of the week, so make sure to stay tuned, and thank you so much for watching the NECC Highlighted.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. It's NECC still coming at you with Overwatch 2 gameplay. I'm in a class now joined by Neely. We're going over, straight over, to the Emergence Division. It's going to be a fun one between these two teams. Uh, WSC Golds versus the Montana Glacier. And uh, Neely, these teams are very similar in records, but they've got the one difference in match. You can see a few golds, which they both got a, uh, well... Different, very different record against the 3 0 and an 0 <laughs> 3, respectively. Yeah, absolutely. Who was the team that got the 3 0? Was that the University of Montana? That uh, was indeed the University of Montana. They managed to get the 3 0 win. Uh, a big difference, of course, is that the week they play them in is very far apart, like week one versus mm -hmm. week six. Uh, so it could have been that right. GFU goal is like a little bit of a slip up in week one, and then they just powered on through, and then the week six they met WSC Gold. And just uh, ran straight over them, but still a difference in their records. Other than that, uh, yeah, I mean, Montana is doing decent overall, 4-3 and three currently. WSC Gold on a 2-5 and five record, so they have a little bit more work to do if they want to make it to playoffs. Postseason is closing yeah. in. Uh, but yeah, both still uh, very much within reason to get in that, into that playoff stage. Yeah, absolutely. In four and three versus two and five, not a huge difference here. Wayne State College, if they could come in and get this win, three and five on the season, not looking nearly as bad, can definitely shape this up. If they lose it, it's going to look really difficult to get in the playoffs here. Do you know what our first map is going to be here, man? Yeah, the first map we're going to go to is our control maps. Always, we are here in NECC doing a first of three series. 
means we start on control, then we go to hybrid, then it's escort time. And if we need more maps, we always have push and more control maps to follow. Then we're going to indeed start here on a control map. Uh, first one is going to be uh, Li Zhang Tower. Nepal was deselected by uh, WSC. Uh, so we cannot go to Nepal anymore in the series. And after this, of course, also not to Li Zhang anymore. Uh, Li Zhang, very stable pick, but uh, not surprising whatsoever. <laughs> So what do you uh, expect they're going to run here? I know um, on Li Zhang you can always run a Reinhardt, a lot of Sim strats, maybe even a little bit of Junkrat can get pulled out. But what have you been seeing as you've been casting this league as you've been going through? Look, look, when you're in the Emergent Division, there's only one thing you know. You can never ask, ask, answer the question whether they're going to run properly because you never truly know unless the teams <laughs> gave you the inside info. Uh, Li Zhang yeah. Tower, yeah, of course, Reinhardt is a very staple pick, but you see some Faris come through. You see some Sombras. Yeah. Like, things happen all the time. Uh, that being said, let's look at the teams that are going to be bringing us this match tonight. We're starting here with uh, Montana Glacier. Jimmy Carter, Sol Max Schlum, Young Blitz, and Athene are going to be the starting five lineup. Um, yeah, I mean, a fairly mixed roster just in terms of you know experience within the academic circuit. Uh, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean, of course, sometimes you see these like you know juniors come in and they have like all the experience in the game, but then on their academics and they kind of trade out information that way. It's like one helps with the tests, right. the other one helps with the gameplay. Uh, yeah. In this case, that <laughs> might actually be happening as well. Yeah. Look, I mean, I saw, also saw that Jimmy Carter is a top 500 uh, capture the flag player, and I'm curious how that is going to come into our first control map here, class. I mean, usually that just means they're a Roadhog or a Lucio one trick, right? That's, that's yeah. how that goes? <laughs> hey, I mean, I'd love to see some Roadhog. They took away his one shot recently. Yeah. Maybe maybe with a team, you can always get a one shot. Y'all shoot that target. We know how it works. Well, it also depends. Like, if you get some environmental maps, Lee Jung has that uh, that well on the other garden. It's, it's pretty nice to see. Uh, that being said, though, they also have opponents tonight. It's going to be WSC Gold coming at you. Five players on their roster are going to be starting too. Kiki, Luzo, Luzo uh, Bungo Washer, and uh, Omega, and Chu Liwi. It's uh, a very, very, very fun roster to look at. Like, every single time yeah. you, you get... Uh, I mean, I really love the logo of the school, obviously. Um, but I, I, it's just the, the mix of the different types of uh, types of studies that come out of it. Uh, you have computer mm -hmm. science, IT support, CIS, graphic design, and then music education. It's, like, it's, a, it's, yeah. a, it's a nice <laughs> one from Kiki to come through. Uh, I always like seeing the creativity as someone who's uh, fairly musically active. So it's fun to come through. Look, when I'm, when I'm building my roster, I want to get the computer science freshman fresh out, fresh out of high school, see what he can do with the college circuit. He's around a computer all day. Get him in the game. <laughs> right. Got a lot of potential. That's uh that's that's what we're looking at. But like we said, it's gonna be a, a fun match between these teams. They uh, on paper are not not potentially that far apart. Uh, it's always uh, depends. It always remains to be seen when we actually see them get into the map and uh, you know see them play the game. Uh, that being said, we got like we said we're starting on the tower. First of three series. It's very simple. We know the format by now. We're in week like eight at this stage. So you know. It's been a while since it's been going. And uh, mm -hmm. with playoffs coming closer and closer, teams have now properly settled into a rhythm. Uh, like, if you're still wanting, trying to make a comeback, trying to make a move, this is definitely like one of those later weeks where you have to make it happen. Uh, so a loss here for either team could definitely mean uh, mean a detriment. More so for WSC Golds. Um, but, you know, University of Montana also wants it for seeding potentially to be a little bit higher. Yeah, absolutely. And at this stage in the season, you've had so many scrims. You know if you're on one of these teams, you're probably scrimming two to three times, if not more a week. This is your college, like this is your college sport basically. This is what you're gonna put your time into when you're not doing your academics. So I don't know how what is it, about seven weeks in, you've done about 30, 50 scrims. You should be all warmed up and ready to go. Basically any team can beat anybody, especially when it's gonna be this close. Yeah, and especially when, again, that's what we always talk about in, in the Emergence Division, and in general, in the current meta, or the current state of the game, there's just so many possibilities of what works, and sometimes you just run into those in one of those teams that runs you know, a specific, particular style that just doesn't fit you, and it's hard for right. you to play. And I think it's going to be very, uh, very important to see which of these teams take like, the initiative, which gets to play their own game, uh, who, gets, uh, who gets to you know, yeah, keep playing their style, and the other team is then the one that has to adapt to them. And as soon as you see adaptations come through and they don't immediately work, 
then you know that that team might be in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just having a team that has an answer for you, just say one of these teams is really strong on Brawl, they could come out on this control map, look absolutely dominant. They don't have an answer to Brawl, but then as soon as you open it up, maybe they have a ball strat, maybe they have a little bit of a Winston and a Farah, that Brawl is not going to do anything. So it's just going to be what answer does each team have per map or match up. So we can just kind of see how that shakes out here. Looks like Jimmy Carter's stepping up on the Rhine here. Yeah, last seeing it, Chef, Chef Louie on the other side. They come out on the Orisa potentially. I mean, they're not out spawn yet. So we always like to see ourselves being baited. So let's not uh, oh, go course. too far. I do like the Pegasus souvenir on Soul Mac, though. I think that's a nice one. A little bit of a detail. Souvenirs added yeah, in absolutely. Overwatch 2. I don't really use that much myself because I always like forget to equip them and the whole thing and where right. my button is for them. But I do like that they're a part of the game now. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a neat little... Always add little things like that. It just makes... You know, if you're going to play the game a lot, it's nice to have those things. Coming in here on the Rhine versus the Orisa. One team's going to have a huge shield. The other, nothing but a lot of stability in this Orisa. Uh, they have the ability to split off the enemy team with a wall, though. So that means that they can uh, have a few less targets to worry about. With the early adaptation, you can see it right here. The wall is out. Oh. Instantly get the junk right in on it. They get a double kill. And what are you going to do now if you're Montana? You've got to back off, back to spawn, try and not lose anyone else. Yeah, they'll have to back off or die as quickly as possible. Luz on the Junkrat, showing what he can do in these tight corridors. Junkrat so strong on this exact point of Lijang. One of those answers we were talking about prior to the map. We'll see if Montana has an answer. So far, they are uh, they at least have regrouped. We'll try and come back in with a little bit of poke here and there. And Jimmy Carter has a ton of old charts. It could be an early shatter that uh, WSG Gold might not be ready for. Not ready to block it either. Nothing. They're gonna have nothing to block it except that maybe a fortify, but that just helps the Orisa. You could stun uh, stun the Reinhardt out of it. That's uh, Orisa's forte. You throw a Drive Javelin during the cast, and it's out. It's gonna happen this time around, though. They uh, do back off. Have to be careful about, sure. especially the immortality field and the transcendence, though. You don't want to have those run in as they block your follow up. Absolutely not. But hopefully he can, if he does use the Shatter and gets those ultimates out, it could prove valuable just to get rid of those ults. Big Shatter coming out, gets one immediately. The Emote comes out, the tire coming in to turn it back. Luz finds three, and Jimmy Carter's Shatter is going to go down in vain. Gets a couple, but not going to be enough. Luz. Nice fadeaway nade on the Young Blitz as well, and then the elimination. 63% uh, just threw away an Earth Shatter. They uh, switched over to their own Junkrat, Shlum just picked that up, so that is definitely something they uh, might be able to win a fight with. But it does yeah. need to come online fairly quickly, because it's going to be last fight territory. Absolutely. No Reinhardt now, and Jimmy Carter going to swap over to the Zarya, going to try to use the Junkrat to help him out here. Going get, to get himself some charge, but it's going to be hard to come back. No all charge on that Zarya. A nice uh, Terra Surge to block off the entry, but there was too much damage, not enough support in the way for Chef Louis. Beautiful attack here, beautiful engage from uh, Montana, denying some of the utility, and Schlum instantly gets a ton of value from that Junkrat already. But not all is lost. Omega and Bongo was here, both saving their alts. Kiki coming up on the Blizzard. Three alts versus three, pretty even shake. I do want to see that one sub potential coming out of the junk Junkrat uh, tire, though, and that Coalescence can sustain through so much. Still uh, feels pretty good for Montana, the way that it's set up, and especially when Chef Louie goes oh. down that early. Not going to be worried about anything. That's, that's a kill that could really turn this into a go from 0 to 100% right there. When you lose a fight like that, that's free all charge. They're going to be coming up on this grab now, which they might not have had for another whole fight. And Junkrat tire still online, as we saw from Luz earlier can swing back a fight even when a big shatter gets placed down. So we're gonna have to see what Shlum can do with that. Yep. Shlum, ready with the tire. Has to get fight some value as Luz is getting very close to their own as well. Wind Over the junk is positioned. So they oh. set up behind the pillar on the objectives. It's a very central point to go through. They already spotted out the junk Has to mine away. Let's get bubbled, but it doesn't get themselves in the right position. Gets pulled back in. That is Shlum out of it. No grip tire. Good Blizzard comes through, but I think everyone got out of it safely. The Riptide tries to follow up, but there's no one really in it. Does get a double kill eventually, and but because the point have flipped in the meantime, WSC Gold throws everyone off the point, gets a double kill, and finds their first round win here on Legion Tower. 
WSC just fighting and clawing to get that one. I didn't think they were going to come up with that fight win, but just slowly and surely. And I hate to say, but Schlum never got that tire off that we were talking about. He kind of got caught out and shot out of the sky there. Unfortunate for them. Would have liked to see what that could have done. Yeah, I mean, the tire was really something that I was looking for like, to have an impact on that fight as well. Uh, unfortunately, Schlum, Schlum couldn't, like I said, couldn't get it off. Was uh, They kind of got stuck on point without the rest Tied of their up. team. And then they tried to mine out, and they kind of couldn't. So, yeah, they uh, were out of position a little bit. I wouldn't. I would be lying if it's never happened to me. Let me tell oh, you. Oh no! Like it's it's not. <laughs> mistakes happen. You know that's what it is. Uh, in this case, though, they're going to move over to the Symmetra Ooh, and the, the Fara. The Simstrad does come through, but there's going to be a Fara as well to help out. Early point control is going to be there for WSG Gold. They already take down Schlum. The rest of the team didn't follow into the teleporter instantly, though. They're coming in a little bit later, but with uh, Athena also falling, it's going to be a tough one to push back in and to actually get that control away from WSG Gold. Going to be Montana that has to back off and uh, regroup once again. Dominating tape right there with the Sim TP. Everybody goes through at the same time, and then they have the Ryan to shelter up behind. The Winston did go through the TP, but his, his bubble got shredded instantly. And now with Sim set up onto the point, it's so hard to push into this. Montana poking around the side, though, with his far, trying to find this junk rat. And they already expended the immortality field as well very early on, so that's a lot of free damage that they can now throw in and potentially get some pick offs. They do just that triple, uh, well, double kill already. Both DPS out of it, and that's kind of all you need. No DPS means a lot less threat, and you can just easily outpoke whatever the other team has. Don't worry about now anything. You just gotta work them down. You gotta work them down. You gotta find the supports, though. Otherwise, they uh, will keep that Reinhardt alive indefinitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Kiki comes back in on the Symmetra. Gurts are back Ooh. up. Will not go down. Do finally find Bongo, but. Finally, yeah. Just Bongo going it took down? A while. Not gonna be enough. Man, that's a huge hole right there. Just barely hanging on, just walking this far from the outside, just poking calm. Now Winston coming in, Winston coming, looking like it's going to turn it around. Jimmy Carter and Solmac just cleaning that one up. It was a long time coming, though, class. It was a long time coming, and, and quite honestly, they just messed up a little bit in terms of the target priority and the speed to clean it up. Yep. Uh, they d at least don't lose the fights. They kind of back off mid-fights, they'll get a pick here and there, and then just go back in and just take it by force. Um, but it was... At least like 20% extra that they maybe didn't need to get. Now, Chief Louie's got the shatter online. He's ready to go, but will he be able to hit much? They're kind of a split comp. The Winston jumps in, turns everyone around. He's going for the Zen. He's going to get cut right down. Now it's all for WSC Golds to take. Gets the shatter, finds two. He's going to clean him up instantly. They just walk right back in and take this. Maybe invest a sim barrier they don't need, but who really cares? That's such a dominant fight day. You have already a very strong point presence again from WSC Gold. Quick retake, only 32% accrued. There's going to be a barrage though, not that whole lot to work against that are then the shield and maybe a Cassidy, but they're already out. Just a Reinhardt in the way. Are they even going to barrage? I don't think they need it. They just come back in for wow. free. That's huge. Montana showing why they are in R4 and 3 right now. If you can win a fight with no ultimates, now you just get to come in here, they're sitting with three ultimates. Jimmy Carter might just go in and kill the Zen for free, or at least force that Transcendence just for Primal. He could pull that and then get a free barrage. You might get a uh, cassidy Baptiste combo here. That would be really exciting. Yeah. If Ooh, you can I get the targets really in your know. sights, though, because that's the most important thing. It's a beautiful yeah, it's wall hard. from the Symmetra Schlum. Ready with that one. Athena looking for the angle of the barrage. Now there's a wall in the way. Could very well Ooh. go for it here. Doesn't go in too deep because they lost Schlum. But they are trading. And now it's Lone Cassidy on the side. That's a tasty bait for Afara. Eat it up. Gobble, yeah. gobble, gobble. Jimmy Carter went a little nuts in the back line. He took out a couple with him, making this fight a lot easier. Luz just kind of gets lost in a place he didn't want to be, but he got split from his team from that Primal Rage, I believe. Now, kind of last fight territory, 80% to 80. A lot of alts online here for Wayne State. They could come in and take this. We might see the window through... Uh, I'm sorry, the window and the high noon combo here. We also have Omega's... Uh, yeah, that was just the, the first kill already down. Athena out of it. Soul Mac follows suits. 99% overtime is going to start ticking. Maybe they can trade it back, but it does look like uh, Montana's going to back off and be ready for a re-engage. Of course, with Winston, 
with a fairly easy way to get back into the objective, and they do have some time for respawns. But it's gonna gonna be close. They will have the coalescence as well, and and the Valkyrie from the Mercy, so that could be huge for sustain on this recontest. Card already touching, she's in a good position. There we go. Nice charge as well Ooh. from the Reinhardt. Follow-up from Luz. The shatter was just too much to deal with. 99% overtime is going to take down. No way that Montana comes back into this. Just attack Pfizer to top it all off. That's map number one going to WSC Gold. The first map this That's a huge. That's a huge win for them right there. Map one out of the way, two and five. Looks like these guys are five and two right now. So we're going to have to see what Wayne State can keep on going with. What is it going to be? Oh, it is the Junkrat play. Yep. Huge. We know exactly which one this was. Goes in, gets a triple, easily follows up on the Reinhardt as well. Nothing to be done there by Montana. Lose just uh, putting, their, putting their team on a, on a pretty good trajectory to take that map afterwards. Now, that was control, and it's a cliche. We always say control is not the measure of a team. It's always one of those things where it's nice to win, but to win a series, you need to do a little bit better. Um, you need to win a couple of more maps, and uh, they're not going to be as chaotic as control is going to be needed. You know, absolutely. Man of class, let me, can I tell you what I, I used to call control with some of my teams I used to play on? It, it's the warm-up round. It's just get it out of the way. You just, okay, we were all playing now. Now we're going to get to the real Overwatch maps where you have points to progress through all that kind of fun stuff. I'm not a huge control fan. It's just a warm-up round. <laughs> right? Now we get to see some real Overwatch. Going to go to hybrid. Uh, Blizzard World is actually banned. And surprise, surprise, they're not oh. going to King's Row. It's going to be Paraiso coming at you. The wonderful beach map. Unbelievable. Video. Love to see it. Definitely uh, a big fan of this map. I think uh, yep. teams will be very reluctant uh, to pick it because that first point in particular is mm -hmm. just tricky. Um, not because it's necessarily that hard, but because it's different from a lot of other objectives in the game. And it feels a bit off in terms of where you start holding, where you start to, where you start attacking, uh, how, you know, how your pathing is, what compositions work. Like There's a lot of debate about that, even at the mm -hmm. highest level. So uh good good on them for picking it uh i hope they yeah. figured it out for themselves it did look like uh glacier wanted to go a little bit more with potential like dive and fire compositions etc mm -hmm. which this map would Huge. lend itself pretty de decently to absolutely one thing that i've always noticed from teams that are usually a little higher in any division that i've seen is they can pull out more dive stuff teams that are in the lower end of the bracket generally are have a really strong brawl but they can win maps, they just can't quite close it out because they have a comp that can get countered by things like Dive and Farah, you know? So it gets a little bit tricky like that. In a map like this, Dive, so key for breaking that first line of defense on attack because you can just engage onto that high ground that is probably plaguing your team if you are running a Reinhardt and just standing there. It gets a little bit tricky if you're, yeah. you're going to play Brawl. But I can't imagine WSC doesn't have a little bit of Dive of, the, of their own. We'll, uh, we'll see when we get into the map, obviously, what they uh, think is going to be run and what they think they're going to need to be doing. It's going to be WSG Gold on the defense to start off with. Going to get University of Montana Glacier in the red on attack to start off with. No, uh, no swaps, no uh, substitutes, even though both teams do have one or two available to them. It'll be uh, the same five that we saw in the previous map. All right, well... Oh, that's right. I always, every time someone says five, it throws me off a little. I'm like, no, it's six. I'm like, oh no, it's five. One tank. Don't forget it. Yep. It's been, uh, it's been, it's, half, always... it's been half a year. We're, uh, we're getting more and more used to it, eh? <laughs> Are we? <laughs> I know. Well, so my thing was, I took a huge break from Overwatch right when Overwatch one was ending and Overwatch two came out. So I always kind of had this little like, oh, I kind of yeah. had to like relearn the game again. Remember who Soldier was, what their alts are called, all those kinds of things, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Oh, well, for now, we know exactly who these heroes are, and uh, what I'm particularly <laughs> excited about to see, see that Bastion come out, but even more excited I am about the Ash. The Ash on the defense here is such a great pick, uh, because, yeah, you can reload re re a, little, a little bit. The sidelines aren't that long that you want to, would rather have a Widow. They aren't that short that you maybe want to cast it instead. But the Ash is like that middle ground, the uh, the approach as well, the way the attackers go through. There's so much dynamite potential. I really want to see what Kiki can do with this. 
I am surprised they are opting for the Zen. Omega did go off on the Zen last map, but having the pocket with the Ash can be so strong, especially against the Fara. But they didn't probably know they were going to see a Fara. Dive onto the high ground here just to try to break things up, get a little all charge for his support. But Omega getting a kill right away. He's going to die, but two trade outs is pretty solid on defense. I mean, the advantage, of course, that uh, Montana has is that they are able to swap in spawn when they see the enemy come, so they can, like, instantly adjust. Not going to be as easy for WSC Golds. Going to have to be a little bit more uh, creative with their defense. And so they set up the way that they have. It's uh, fairly diverse. Yeah, they can do a little bit of everything here. Jimmy Carter doesn't quite get to the high ground there, but a good. I think Diva's going to be a good swap to try to eat those TNTs. From uh, from Kiki there, because that's what's going to plague your team as you try to rotate in. Is these free TNTs which are going to farm up Bob? Um, not not ready just yet. Kiki has a little ways to go. I do like this oh, yeah, defensive oh, yeah. approach. They have uh, have some room to work with now. They can easily push back out. They're trying to execute a composition that they're not running the heroes for. It seems like it feels like they're brawling. They're brawling with a diva. That's not not quite how that works. Uh, so they got to find a different way of approaching this. Definitely gets a little bit tricky. Shalom, I think, is just trying to find angles to TP on, which is going to be tough for him. He goes in here, he's getting booped away. Can he make it out or are they going to hunt him down? They're trying to hunt him down. They tried, but that D.Va comes in, and this is what the dive's so good at, relocating and instantly peeling and protecting for each other. The defense matrix is amazing for it. And now they see a low health target trying to go after the Ash, but the piece has to reload. Doesn't quite have enough. Bongo, now you're going to go down yourself. It's double elimination for Jimmy Carter. She's on a roll at the moment on that D.Va. Now they can engage on the objective. Just watch out for the Bastion transformation, but they go instantly in on the Omnic. They're going to be a self-destruct to try and stop this. They don't even need it, but they're going to use it anyway. It's just to make sure it's completely cleared oh. out. No more Chef La Louis. That's point A for Montana, and a uh, very strong switch and execute. Yeah, they were able to just kind of make it happen there, which is huge for them. They, they uh, were having a lot of trouble, but they just found a few picks. I thought Bongo was doing a great job on the Baptiste there. He almost looked unkillable, had to reload, it lost in one of his characters, and it all snowballed from there. Look at that, Montana. At the moment, they got so many ultimates online, but so do WSC Golds. I mean, the uh, tank ultimate difference, really. Big deal about this is, of course, that um, if Schlum can get a good ultimate off, that is a very strong tool to disrupt and uh, potentially eliminate the enemy but they do have a lot yep. of tools against them on the side of wsc golds yeah wsc golds really banked these up they're going to engage with the bastion alts one of those alts you just kind of go hey let's see if we get one this is a hard alt to actually get kills with but when you do it feels really nice now diva going in can she get the ash it looks yep. like she's going to that's a free first engage no alts it's used for montana and they've got a pick right now let's see what they can do and let's see if wsc gold can answer with something Definitely can a transform Bastion as well as uh, Chef Louis get a go each on a nade on the diva. That's going to be a triple. Re engage, regroup. It does mean that you drain some resources from WSC Gold without using any of your own. Jimmy Carter, awfully close to another self destruct. Somehow Young Blitz was still around and uh, Soul oh. Mac went after them. That's not kind of going to be where you want to be. Definitely a bit of a stagger to end that, but still really well played from WSC Gold. They lose one, they don't panic, and they just use Terra Surge to take that back. And now they still have Bob, Window, and Transcendence to fight off these five ultimates. It's going to be hard, but they have a chance to do it with what they got. Uh, they have a, they're very well within a chance, obviously. They have two, 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 almost two and a half minutes as well to make it happen. But they got to find a way to engage on this without taking too much damage to start off. And when Solmac already falls to a bob without a res really being possible, not an easy feat. Does get a double oh. kill with the self destruct as well as some value out of that cell, out of the death loss. I'm basically clearing the way to find value with the ultimate after. The remac isn't coming through. Schlum isn't going to be able to get stay out alive, and Young Blitz falls too. And what started off as a very solid attack just deteriorates into nothing. We got three alts now, man. A class. We got Bongo. Still got the window. Well, we're going to be going against High Noon and Valkyrie. Valkyrie's a great alt to help you stay alive, but if the window is good enough, Bap has a really good chance to even kill that Valkyrie out of the sky. Just so much damage comes out of that. 
Looking for uh, the value that Athena can potentially get with an ultimate. It's not the easiest one to get value out of Cassidy's ultimate, especially on this map where the sidelines are short on this stage. Uh, but if they can get into position, it could be a really nice one. If they're sneaking all the way around the back, for example. That's something we see a lot happen a lot in organized play, because they usually spot up the flanker and they just deal with it. Yep. Yeah, but they are in a pretty good spot for it. Q is going to be pressed, I'm sure. It's oh. one, which is the Baptiste. Lose their own Reaper. Athena is in the spot. She's in the position. She was there, but she just waited too long. Now there's a Nurse on her tail. Chef Louie knowing what to do. You can't. You don't need a high ground ability to walk there. Chef Louie takes a long walk and gets rid of Athena on his own. Nothing, nothing harder to deal with than an Orisa in your face. Now he still has the high noon. That's all they're going to have to engage with here. And maybe they could just set him up in the middle or up on that high ground with Jimmy Carter defense matrixing him because it is going to be hard for him to not get stunned out of that from the uh, javelin. So it's gonna, you're going to have to get something in there to block it. Yeah, it's like it's one attempt that they have. Uh, they do have a couple of ultimates coming up or already ready. But there's just so much more to work with on the side of WSC Gold already. The uh, Bastion ultimate out. They're trying to find the way in which they can damage this Whoa. Mercy or this uh, Cassidy. They find Young Blitz out of the fight. Unfortunately, it's going to be a hard one to still keep pressing if you are Montana with another three falling. That's it. That's the other time. Is really good with that Terra Surge. I don't know. He seems to know right when to pop it when it just makes it look overpowered. Because I use it sometimes and it just does nothing. Every time he uses it, it seems very fight winning. So that's huge when your tank can take control like that. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of it is like a communication and follow up from your team. Uh, mm -hmm. If you pull in the Terra Surge, you, the reason why you don't usually don't eliminate them with Terra Surge is because you have to hold it too long to do the damage that it needs. Uh, yep. But a lot of the time, you see an organized play. Well, you, that's just kind of what you're just supposed to be doing is uh yeah. every when you it's it's similar to like a hog hook right it's like you pulls them in, pull them right. in which means your team has an easier time shooting them so shoot them and then the terror search can just finish them off uh that's yep. what it's used for yeah absolutely it's just nice to see it's nice to see it get some good use because it is a, it does always do a ton of damage it's just it needs that follow-up Ooh, jimmy carter i know i know we don't want to speak to it too early but might see a little bit of ramach or a little ram here It is very possible. Um, it feels more like an attack hero than a defense hero in this situation, just because of the mm -hmm. tempo nature of Ramatra. They call him a tempo yeah, tank, but that's mostly because he's only up at a specific amount of time, which is like very similar to mm -hmm. Bastion in that way. Bastion, when right. they're not in their you know, transformed tank form, not too scary. But as as, uh, they, as soon as they then transform with all the extra bullet firepower, you usually think twice about peeking him at all. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I, I definitely like the Ramatra pick here. I feel like since Orisa got nerfed in the last couple patches, Ramatra looks even better, even though he received a nerf to his ultimate as well. But, I don't know, I, something about Ramatra just feels better to play than Orisa, and maybe it's just because I used to be a Ryan player and I like punching stuff. Could just be me. I mean, that is a very logical way of going about it, isn't it? Uh <laughs> You know, a little bit of a high ground face off. You can already tell that Chef Louis is in a more, more comfortable position having a long range on. A lot of value there. The wall is almost in the way, but not quite. A lot of damage going around for both teams. It is going to be mostly in the favor of WSC Gold. They've got to get a little bit more to really secure it. But I think they're happy with, the, with where they're at right now. Coming through the point is Jimmy Carter. He's trying to stall as much as he can. And meanwhile, there's a piece of jumping away, but not jump actually away. It does seem like the Romacha carry is alive. See what I said about punching people? You see, I mean, it's just like that that uh, Baptiste jumping in the sky. He still snipes him out with two or three punches. Makes it really tough for him. I feel like Bongo's been one of WSC Gold's better players. Every time they spectate him, he's hitting every heal shot that I've seen. So if you can target him, it's going to make the rest of the team just fall apart. Sure is what it looks like at this stage. One more, uh, well, let's say one more try. We got a couple more tries. Two and a half couple minutes. more. Trump's got this wall though, which is going to be really tough. They're just going to be able to split the point with this and maybe take him over. Maybe going to give up one tick. That's okay. Just giving up one tick. You don't quite want to give up two for free if you don't have to. Athena's going to go down to Luz. Now it's looking pretty tough. The wall is out, but Glacier is just going to get pushed right out of there. Shalom had no chance once Orisa pushes him. Yep, it's uh, the flip coming through. 
for our WSC goals. And now they only have a hundred meters to go. The golden box of victory. Not an impossible task, but we did see how long Montana took to get it. It did take a while. These stri this street space to be very tough because when you're down in the streets, you're just getting shelled from the top. And there's not much you can do about it, especially if you're Arissa. Athena's going to get, get Luz a little bit of revenge, but Athena's going to get charged down by Chef Louie. He's been all over the place just enforcing areas with that uh, javelin of his. Uh, it's definitely trying to stop the card in its tracks, but uh, Chef, Chef Louie already finds the first one. That transcendence might be cool, it might be calming, but it won't be make you immortal. There goes Reaper, almost goes another one. What a chaos are they sowing? Is this a level, uh, high level no execution? I don't know, but Chef Louie can't be stepped down. He's going to be leading this team. Every time someone's out of position, he just pulls the baton out, spins at him, gets him out of position, and handles him, handles him himself. Lud's going to get Soul Mac, and now it's going to be a 5 on 4. It looks like this is going to be WSC Gold. All the kills are in their favor. And they take the point. It looks like it's just a matter of time. WSC Gold takes map two. And the underdog is one map away from securing it. As much as we can call an underdog, it's it's hard to really sell that narrative with how close these teams are. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I would I love know. to do it. I, I do think that, uh, that you know, right now, when we look at both these teams, WSC Gold does look like to be the, the slightly better team. Not necessarily because they are, like, you know, either mechanically a lot better or, you know, they, they, they just play better in general. I think there's a lot about just... Know, the way they play as a team that's a little more effective uh and of course they also do have uh you know, a couple of nice uh, substitutes on the bench as well they could potentially still call on absolutely i mean i'm what's uh what is our next map type we're going to be rolling into here class uh, it's going to be escort escort but before we... we go into escort gonna give the teams a little bit of time to take a breather take a break get a sip of water we'll see you right after for uh well our escort map
Welcome back, everyone, to the NECC Highlighted. My name is Orbital, your host, and hopefully some amazing clips to follow. We are just done with week number seven, and, you know, I may have wrongly stated how many weeks are left, but, you know, that just means more action throughout the regular season. Things are heating up here as teams are ramping up once again with only two weeks left of regular play. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the amazing plays that have gone down this week as well and take a look at what the teams have to offer. Here are this week's highlighted moments. Just can't really do too much. You do get that shutdown on Maddie, but even in slow motion pump, we're still the back of the map, up there towards ramp, holding things down, Ooh. dunk it, two oh. and five to third with it as well. That's a 4K for the round. Up through heaven. They've got to get a 4K. Can close up for one, hunting for There's a second. Two. Flawless between the two of them, but a defuse actively going down. They'll hop off for a moment. They'll find three. Now just one more around the corner. Prowler is sent. They've been marked before. They're in oh the open, and Maddie God. will clutch things up. Oop, with the wide swing, leads to oh. nothing but jam and just comes out. Your alibi is that Kaid going to peek instead? It is going to be that mute as bodies trade back and forth, back and forth. Clam on about 20 HP is going to have to stop this attack. The C4 blows open Aqua, the player, not the the coastline area and with two players remaining and a lot of time to work with you can get information really secure your spot here yeah there we go that's what's gonna be really important for quality is putting down the plant oh, he is going to be able to hear that go down he's not fast enough in removing himself from the situation of 3k now for clam who is just turning the attention at least but that proximity alarm gives away the fact that jacob is on the far side there's a spray from in front but timing costs him awesome quickly evening it back up right now that just leaves the magic comic and the heretic here to fight this one out good swing from the Magic Comic, he picks up two. Earthquake pushing in, the last one left alive, and another defense. Look for something cheeky here, maybe just run in, give his life for it. Pops the ulti, but you know, he wants kills. Dragon will be locked down, though. He finds one, he will eat the dirt, though. Down goes yet another member, and it's actually looking pretty damn good for Ice. Inker barely keeps Convicted alive, but three summoner spells on both sides gonna be used. And oh. meanwhile, Absence of Mind pops the Counter-Strike. The BQM goes back in and he gets first blood. Much reason to stay here in the bot side. Convicted gets rooted, but a nice condemn oh. onto the Maokai. Here comes Speedy Kill Ninja with the alt fell. The Twisted Advance is too late. Austin Takeover goes out, wow. doesn't land. Drifter Man trying to at least get one back <gasps> onto Convicted. Oh. Excuse me. uses the second one, but cannot find a kill. Green Runner's already picked up the Lulu, looking for one, but not going to find it. But this is Reset City for the Jinx. Make it three flags for makes it. For another quadra kill. At front line, they're nailing these shots. They're looking like a dominant force going into this. Ooh, dead eye through the. Oh wow! Your gets booped by LSM. Morning side, blind siding them, taking the dub of the first map. Beautiful Earth shatter coming out from a monkey on the side of NTC for the play of the game. But it is all about making more as they are still down two in the game. Oh my oh. goodness, Gentix, are you kidding me? I mean, this is uh, this is what this is all about, and I mean, we're getting action from both scenes right now, and early look at goal. Oh my God, almost buried top quarter, and the shot coming back in. That's it from Juventix, the uh, 10 second golden goal. He, uh, I think it's gonna really come down to uh, some kind of magic from the end. The double tap, the duck core with the beautiful goal. That is a fantastic touch. Just for not everything can be perfect, though, and not everything can work as planned. There are always some mistakes that might occur, and because of that, we have this week's misclicks. Please go ahead and enjoy some of the funnier moments of this week. Eddie takes one down. There's a quick teleportation over onto A, but it's it's denied. It's canceled. And it's actually a trick to get Mig to teleport too, but they canceled it as well and picked up two frags in the attempt to walk through. What is this blunder of epic proportions? The next ornament has already come out. It was given Hollow 2. That upgraded mask. I, I'm gonna be honest with Rager. I know about it. The upgraded items. What are we naming? 
got the um, leg already, so now, now we gotta give a great name to the man. Leandry's Anguish, Wolf, um, Leandry's Torment. No. That was already an item name. We'll yeah. call it, uh, <laughs> we'll call it Leandry's Depression. And with that, we close out week seven. There's so much more action to be had as it all kicks off throughout the week, every day, starting at 5 p.m. EST. Starting on Monday, we'll be Valorant, of course, and we'll be running throughout the course of the week, so make sure to stay tuned, and thank you so much for watching the NECC Highlighted. Welcome back, and we are going to be on Rialto for map three to WSC Gold and University of Mont Montana Glacier. It's uh it's it's been a 2-0. It's been a fairly convincing 2-0 for WSC Gold so far. But uh if there is a map where you can turn around if you're Montana Glacier, this would probably be the one, just in terms of the way they run compositions. This might be where that far comes in and Jimmy Carter teasing the ball. I'm a fan of it. I'm a huge fan of the wrecking ball. Wrecking ball has even received a buff in the past couple months. He's looking unstoppable. McCree doesn't have a stun. Ball is the tank to play if you're going to be playing dive. And if Athena can really pull this far off, so much cover from the buildings here, you don't even need your tank to make as much space as you do on other maps because you can just jiggle peek all these high ground peaks. I can constantly keep on, uh, keep on peeking, keep on prodding. Bastion May is, uh, I would say it's a disgusting composition. It's definitely <laughs> very effective whenever anyone wants to go through solo. You just get walled off and burst down with no excuse, no room to breathe. Mafara's going to be looking to blow this Bastion up for sure. It's going to be hard for just Bastion to get enough time to even look at this far unless she fully commits. Shlom already going down to Chef Louie. Chef Louie's been a, ma a madman all day, and he's going to continue it still. Carter rolling through once again. They're looking for the opening to uh, find a roll through, find a slam, find elimination. But you get these headshots from Omega come through with the Zinyata orbs. They're gonna be doing much to the team. Omega just on fire at the moment. Gets Shlum out of the way too. He's looked good every time he's on the Zen. I even questioned maybe why they don't pick up a Mercy. It could be because he just feels so confident on the Zinyata. You're gonna. Hey, if you're going to hit the shots, might as well play him. He's one of the best supports in the game. Yeah, I mean, if, if you hit all those shots, you for sure is. Yeah. Lane. Uh, you know, it's not, not always as easy as that. Uh, in this case, it does seem to be that easy, though. Athena built up a fairly, fairly decent chunk of old charge, the only one of her team to do so. And Omega finds Schlum early once again. Good, almost a double rocket onto Kiki. Athena, not quite so lucky, not quite so accurate, unfortunately, this time around. Ashton just waiting for that ability to come back online so he can maybe burst the tank down, maybe burst the fire down. Chief Louie trying to step to Jimmy Carter. Having a tough time, it's hard to go actually kill Azari. She doesn't have as big a hitbox as every other tank in the game. She's one of those skinny ones. Big pick from Athena on the bongo. Oh no. Oh, and he's going to get cut down by Luz. Oh no. no Athena though. just walked in there, just fell into the Bastion bullets, and there were many of them. They did find Kiki and Luzo. So there is still a chance to keep pushing, even without the tank. Oh. Transcendence be used for Omega just to get back to safety. Not sure about that one. He won't have it. And uh, there is a Graviton incoming, as well as a Barrage. Death Blossom, a uh, you know, Kitsune Rush. This does not seem like the time to use Transcendence. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. Might not have won the fight anyway with that many stacked ultimates. Grab kind of goes to the wayside, does catch one. Mirage is going to find two, but it's a 2v2 right now. And it could easily get swung back. The Chief Louie is still alive and on the point. Uh, Slum looking for the death loss. Awesome. Coming in, no. the, Yeah, it's a double kill instantly. No mortality field, no transcendence, no nothing. Not even a, a lousy javelin from uh, Chef Louie. If Louie can uh, save them from that one. Good Suzu and TP out from Soul Mike to dodge that. Bastion ult. There's another ultimate used that uh, they're not going to yeah. have to fight against anymore. Sometimes Bastion ult can feel like a waste because it just misses anyway. But hey, on the last map, they were able to pick Mercy going into the last fight. It can have some value, so you don't really want to be throwing anything away like that. All just going to see if he killed his end here, but Bongo going to keep him alive. Bongo doing a great job knowing who's getting targeted. But while that's happening, Luz goes down. Athena finds him. When you play this split comp, it's so hard to track what's happening. And they're so in their own chaos, but it's organized for themselves, so it's so different from control where everything is kind of chaos. We'll be uh, going yeah. back in here with still 
a couple of ultimates in the bank. So you see gold spent a bunch, but uh, still have a couple in the bank. So they will be able to, especially through that blizzard out. Good combo with the terror surge. Don't just use oh. it this time around. Gets the one. And they found a two and a three as a follow-up. Four, make it maybe five. No, I think Schlumba gets out. I don't think they can uh, chase the Reaper that Huge. deeply. Huge wall from Kiki right there, just locking him in, thinking you might be able to get out of the ultimate. That's the follow-up we were talking about that they have with the Terra Surge. This team team loves playing around it. Oh, Terra Surge, just a uh, a strong tool in any Orisa's kit, and combining Terra Surge with Blizzard seems to be logical. Like you throw down a Blizzard, yeah. you pull everyone just back in to get frozen. Not always as easy to set up, but uh, there are there is some potential there. Absolutely. Jimmy Carter finds Omega this time, not able to keep him up. That huge javelin under the far right there. Yeah. Lud's gonna find Athena. This fight's just so split. Hard to see what's gonna happen. Jimmy Carter gonna put that all down. Hard pressed to not find anything. Kiki gonna go down. Now he's gonna go try to find Bongo in the back line. Doesn't look like he's gonna struggle. Huge peel from the Arisa, trying to keep him alive. Bastion's still up, trying to fight him off. Chef Louie's gonna get slumped. I'm in a way to do it. I I can't speak higher of Chef Louie right now. He seems to keep on coming through with his partner Bongo. Everything's seeming okay. Uh, Chef Louie just on a tear at the moment with the Orisa. We'll also say that there is a couple of plays coming out from the the players on Montana side that I'm not entirely on board with, just in terms of the risks they're mm -hmm. taking, in terms of either the maybe the overconfidence or just the confidence they have, they the trust in their team in that sense. It seems like Athena opens up with a great kill, right, every single time, but then maybe gets overconfident after that. Far might eat, or I thought he was even going to go down right there. Huge eat, though, from the D.Va to try to keep his Far up. Far is still one. They need to help Athena right now. He's got the barrage. I think I think the the, the deal with the with the Farah is that you know even if you get the elimination, if you then go in too deep, then you will just get eliminated. So they keep getting eliminated at the wrong times. When they go too deep to get the eliminations. We can set Schlum all the two Omega and didn't even go in that deep blue zone with it. There's a bastard can looking at you. Not gonna come out walking one out of that alive. Back to spawn you go. Reorganization from Montana Glacier. And uh as they're looking for the next steps in their offense, they only have 30 seconds left, so there's not a lot of time to think about them. Well, here's the plan going into this next fight. They're going to hit him with the old dodgeball move. Throw the ball up high, hit him down low. Athena's going to come over the top, drop this barrage. Hopefully they don't even see Schlum come in the back line and drop the uh, the old Reaper ultimate on their head. We'll see if they can execute it in real time. The Reaper TP's behind. They're all looking at him. Where's the barrage? Oh, it drops down. This time there is Transcendence in the way. They at least bait that resource out as well as the Immortality Field. This is the perfect opening. Nothing to stop it. Athena, if you're going to go, this is the time. Doesn't use it still, though, and there's just more pe people falling on the side of Montana Glacier. What are you waiting for? I guess he did pull it off, but it looks like he, he used it while in the Terror Surge. Not going to be able to stay alive. It's going to look real tough for the University of Montana to get this fight. Not going to happen. Ferris just keeping away on point. Farah going to be able to do a, not close this one out, unfortunately. Is a uh, first round completion and WSC Gold is a very clear box of victory they need to get to about halfway through point B. So uh, they need to cap A and then push a little bit further. But it's honestly not a not the worst place to hold. This is uh, or at least to push to. Uh, Rialto has definitely uh, seen completions and seen a lot worse than uh, getting the cart to here. I was gonna say it's also seen a lot of full holds. I I have I've seen it a thousand times where it's like, oh, you only have to push it that far, and then a team just puts on an absolute stomp hold right under this bridge we're looking at right now. It can be really difficult to actually push this cart over the edge, and we're gonna have to. If WSC Gold can do that, they're looking at a really good chance at 3-0 in this game. Is it going to be a 3-0 incoming, or is uh, Montana going to be able to pull something back? Maybe go for the even more rare draw that it doesn't even have anything to do with checkpoints. So you're just going to go down in flames in this particular matchup. That is uh, all to be seen. Carter is setting up for the defense here. We have a young blitz yeah, Solmax on the Kiriko Moira at this, uh, this rate. Absolutely. And University of Montana, what they're saying in the locker room right now is a reverse sweep. It's reverse sweep time. You're down 0-2. You can't say anything else. You got nothing to lose here. 
Jimmy Carter is coming out on the Rhine. I love it. This is an old school great Rhine map. I wish they'd run a Lucio with it personally, but he hasn't had a Lucio all night. They probably prefer the Zuzu. Maybe the Ko. That's a Soul Max. Seems like Soul Max seems to go for the uh, Moira there. Does it case? Doesn't find the Ko. Yes, a couple of nice Ooh. sticky bombs connecting Geeky, Huge. hunting a target as well. And Geeky, and now the Echo, it's a very big swap up. Ooh, Geeky was doing so much damage there and kind of just flew into the hammer and turrets. I think if he just uh, avoids doing that, he will annihilate this team. He was doing some really good damage to start that fight. Solmac gonna go down sure. to Luz as well. And it's still doing, it's, of course. Well, well, you know, it's annoying to lose your DPS. It's way more annoying to lose a tank. The tank yep. has so much sustain, so much space. You can already see where that cards are rolling just because they have to control for the space. Now it's off to Jimmy Carter to find a way to get back into here. She's progressed to the first room, now goes under the bridge, tries to find the Orisa, but it's just a lot of pushing away, pushing and prodding. You know, meanwhile, the rest of the team takes care of Shlum in the back line, and it's just a very lonely existence if you're the defense of Montana. They're so split. Geeky finds Solmac in the back line. That's a huge kill. Now you only have Young Blitz to keep that healing up. They might have Zuzu online. Omega finds the headshot into Athena, and he's going to have Transcendence if he even needs it. Looks like they're just going to take this point. And now they only have a little bit left, and they can take this match. Or a target is Luzo. They don't need to go far. It's really like rounding two corners, and you're pretty much there. So not a whole lot of pressure with 4 minutes 50 on the clock. Especially when we look at the old bank, I think it's a really pick as well in the slum. This is just uh, a slaughter at this point. So little that University of Montana seems to be able to do. They are trying yeah, to find an opening, but what do you really realistically have to work with? It's going to be tough, but you are going to have a widow sight line here. And it gets completely cut off by the same they see nine! Oh no! Oh it's man! It's been zero maps. Without a C9. Unfortunately, any CC9 is not what we're going to be calling it. C One C stands for consistency, and the other C for, well, you know, the C and C9. <laughs> That's brutal. Yeah, unfortunately. Now, of course, of course, we are talking, uh, you know, th things happen. Uh, I'm oh, sure I'm sure they were expecting another player to touch, but they got booped away. You should usually be the Widowmaker that tries to go for the objective. Uh, so, you know, they just, uh, was a good denial play, if anything, WSC Gold. But they go up 3-0 in the series, take away the win for this week. They see that Neely is completely flabbergasted by that as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically what I was doing when I saw that scene. And I was like, oh, no! Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, stopped. I think I think we could safely say that Wayne State College was probably going to be able to push that over anyway. Getting off the point there is not going to be what decides tonight. It's a 3-0. They had it at the last bit. But obviously, when you got all the results coming in, you want to see that final clash for the win, and it just kind of sneaks its way in. But either way, all well earned by Wayne State College, taking that record from 2-5 and five to 3-5. and five, Really important going into these final weeks. Yeah, they're, uh, they're going to be looking at that, being fairly happy with it. Of course, going to be happy with winning, as well as getting some extra map points on the board. Uh, going to be more and more important, like we said, towards the end of the season. But what's also going to be very important is that they keep prepping for their next matches. Uh, it, it's it's one of those things where you can't take your foot off the gas. Uh, a lot of the time, you see the teams that start doing well later on the season, they sort of make that playoff run. Uh, you don't want to be a team that peaks too early. And uh, they're definitely not one of those at the moment. They uh, played fairly, very clean, very uh, concise, also very decisive. And uh, that's going to serve them well in their future matches. Yeah, absolutely. It didn't look like a scrappy win. It looked like a win that they had put together. You yeah. know, yeah. it looked like, honestly, if I could have diagnosed both of these teams, University of Montana kind of looked more like a team that they probably had a lot of energy coming out in the beginning of the season, probably a lot of just raw talent. And Wayne State College maybe didn't have that raw talent, but now they're putting all that teamwork together. And those seven weeks of scrims I was talking about yeah. really came into playoff right here. Payoff. not the, Well, playoffs maybe, but payoff. Playoffs is looking more and more likely for WSC Gold. University of Montana Glacier now in a 4-4 four four record. Definitely not out of it just yet. Uh, but they are going to obviously have to keep working as well in order to make themselves in the playoff bracket. That being said, though, that's it for these two teams. We're moving on towards the next series. It's going to be a little bit before we get that one ready for you. 
but make sure to uh, stay tuned for the next match. It's going to be uh, SIUE Black versus UCOW Black. It says uh, South Illinois University of Edwardsville versus the University of Cincinnati, and that's going to be the champions division. So don't go anywhere See you in a little bit.
Welcome back, everybody. Match three is on the docket, and it's still Meta Class and Neely bringing you the action. It's going to be the Southern U Illinois University of Edwardsville Black versus the University of Cincinnati Black. It's going to be the Champions Division, Champions Central to be precise. And boy, are these teams close matched. Yeah, just kind of like last game here. It's pretty much the same thing we're looking at three and four and four and four so for all intents and purposes that's identical one team has played more games that's all you can really draw from that and i looked at all their matchups they're basically identical if they've lost to a team they've lost to them if they've won they've won a couple forfeits tossed in there it's i mean you really can't tell who's the better team until they play there is one one tiny factor 
there's mm -hmm. one map more that uh, Cincinnati won against uh, Center College Gold. They got a 2-3 loss, and uh, Illinois got a 1-3 loss against them. So, like, that's the one difference oh, there is. Okay. It's like, a, like the right. teeniest, tiniest of margins right. on paper. Mm -hmm. But, of course, you guys got to get into the game to actually tell what it is you know, going to turn into. Um, and we do, we're still doing first of three series, so it's going to be control, hybrid, escort, and then if we need them, there's going to be more push then maybe more control maps. We'll see where we go. At least we got those first three to start off with. It's going to be Legion Tower first, but which players are going to be starting on the rosters? That's obviously the question we want to answer as soon as possible because we want to get to know these players over the current course of these three maps uh, uh, that we're at least going to see. Starting here with uh, our, <laughs> our first team, which uh, I don't think they're going to be playing with three. Let's wait for that until we've got that going. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love seeing close games on paper. It's definitely a uh, <laughs> uh, one that I, yeah, one that I'm looking forward to personally because, like, I was looking at the games for tonight. It's like the last game we did was on paper, looked mm -hmm. you know, potentially close, and then turned out that there was uh, a little bit of a um, uh, of a difference between the teams. They just, you know, they one team was just a little bit better today, and that's sometimes just the on the day form. So that doesn't really say much about their season performance necessarily. Um, but this one again, like this is even closer on paper than the last one. Right. So I would agree it's much closer. But just like we said with the last game, sometimes a certain team is just a, a different matchup for a certain team and they just can't handle whatever that team brings to the table. Everyone's kind of got their own style. I think meta starts coming more into play when you get into the champions division. But at the end of the day, when it's this close, one team could just have one comp that they can't answer. Who really knows? We'll have to see. Exactly. So with these <laughs> rosters, starting with uh, SIUE Black, uh, we're talking about Reverb, Gore, Pyro Cat, Enforcer, and Nibli. Uh, once again, a very technical lineup of students. Uh, should be potentially a, uh, a, a good, you know, good team at problem solving is what we always say. Um, but uh, yeah, we always like again seeing these these ranges between sort of like ages. Um, does does look like it's a fairly uh, young team though. Like I said last game, I'm all about the freshman computer science major. <laughs> all about it. I don't know. All just put it. him in front of that computer, watch him work, see what he does. Yeah, I mean uh, sometimes that's <laughs> it. But you know, when you really get a wild card is when you look at uh, UCOW Black. Looking at their roster, going to be seeing uh, at least one person on their team that's undeclared. They're the true wild card. Oh. They're the Joker. Oh. They can become anything they want to be, uh, and that's that's what you're allowed to see. But uh, together with Stifty, Irrational Lightning, Zach the Snack, they're going to be uh, bringing you the action tonight from their team. And uh, like we said, we're starting on control. It's going to be Lee Jung Tower first, and uh, as we get into this game. I mean, Lee Jung Tower Garden, what can we say that hasn't already been set a thousand times <laughs> over? It is uh, it is the trite, it is the true, it is the please don't let me boop you into the pit of despair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even though there are, there are a couple of cool fish floating around, but they are holographic, yeah. so don't know how much you're going to care about that. Yeah, you're not going to care too, too much, but it looks like both teams are going to try to avoid that entirely. They're both going to opt for a TP. Just going to bring them right over those holographic fish and get them both onto point. It's going to be a brawl. No one's going for a ball or a far on this, which is often picked, I feel like. But brawl, so strong when you TP onto that point. Yeah, we have seen a little bit of resurgence of Farah lately, especially in Europe. Not so much in North America, though, in Collegiate. It's no different in that sense. I think the Snake and Stifty already picking up the double kill to start it off, though. UCOW Black start off to a very strong start. And that extra map that they took against the, their similar opponents seems to be the difference maker right now. They are uh, looking hot on control. Just a quick brawl there. It's uh, these. It's crazy the difference between the last game and this game. You're gonna see these guys amp a speed boost and go for a target kill. It's not. They're not gonna mess around with not killing supports or not focusing down a singular target. It's gonna be very quick and it's gonna be decisive. And yeah, they're not gonna do the mess around. They're uh, just gonna go straight into it, looking like uh, UCOW Black taking on a strong position on the point, of course got the Symmetra just beaming out, they got the turrets set up be a very safe position for them to be in the Tracer trying to come in here from Reverb 
actually managing to get through, but unfortunately there's a beautiful shatter that comes through from Stifty. Gets the full team wipe set up. Yes, they lose one in Lightning, but it's a Lucio. They'll be back before you can say Lucio. They'll be back faster than anybody else in the game. And that is a huge shatter coming out of your Ryan because that's all they really had to use to win that fight. The rest of your alts are going to be coming back online. Nibbly with the window to open up this big high ground here. Pyrocat killing his counterpart, Lightning. Yeah, Lightning again, just uh, out of the fight. They just got back. They closed the sound barrier. We're not quite there. It's going to be potentially an advantage for SAU Black in terms of uh, sound barrier. But I think there's something happening here that's not supposed to happen. Ooh. We got uh, thrown out for some reason. Let's see if we can go back in uh, in the near future. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, get a quick game back update. No worries. They'll still be playing the game. We'll just not be looking at it for like a couple seconds. Uh, we should <laughs> be back anytime. No worries about that. We, uh, I think we're just going to uh, reset the map. Um, uh, figure out what's going on with that. Anyways. Either way. Uh, I mean, it was dominant so far from... Uh... Oh, we get oh, it. Yeah, yeah, we're just getting a resume. We're getting consumption. Okay. No worries. <laughs> cool. Okay, good. That's great. Don't have to lose any of that progress. Window coming out. Fire Strike already used. Perch steaming down. Gore having a hard time pushing in. Uh, Irrational going down is a big deal, though. Not a lot of that shield damage, as well as the turrets not being able to be re re refreshed. The beam is just annoying in general. And the relocation from the teleport. You don't have to worry about anything anymore when you're SA SAU Black. They're going to go straight up, take the point. And start controlling this bridge area that has been uh, very left alone by you, UCOW Black. They weren't really holding there. They were very much on the objective. That bridge it was very uh, was, yeah, left to its devices. Not surprising, though. You usually want to go to this white room, which is exactly what they're going to be doing now. Shatter's almost ready for safety again. This could just be setting them up for another fight win instantly. Absolutely. He's going to have lightning with the heat to keep him up all the way through it as well. Enforcer popped off quite a bit last fight has the high noon online might use that to stand this rhine down might just try to use the heaps of space so far you see black gonna pop it out gets one gets pyro cat down counter noon coming out trying to use that shield gets a ton of damage all the shields break now he's just got to shoot the people i love as well you see sa uh you see OW black just sitting there waiting for the speed boost to come back on and then they just walk at the other team the sound barrier comes out but there's no match for the speed and the uh brevity which you see a W Black just ran onto their opponents. 70% and yeah. counting, looking pretty much at like last fight territory, uh, bar any last ditch efforts from either team uh, after this fight ensues. But Shatters are ready. This is going to be a Rhine off, I feel like. This window just splits the Reinhardt. It's going to be oh, tough. No. Reaper gets taken out with the Fire Strike. Now they're just going to amp the speed in, try to give the Rhine the Shatter. Does he hit it? I don't really know what happened over there. Pyro's going to go down. Now it looks like it's all done. Kind of just try to clean this fight up on the bridge. Yeah, it's uh, looking like a very clear-cut win there for UCW Black. And anyone touch it is Rivera, but on the Tracer, does manage to get back on. Doesn't hit the Pulse Bomb in the background. But they're still lightning with the with the sound barrier. There's so oh. much uh, insurance. The Shatter was still online. Yeah, you can touch from Doomfist Gore, but it's not going to do anything. You're the sole survivor of your team, and it's not going to be that long that you're going to be surviving at all. So team kill comes through. And that's 100 to 77 for UCOW Black. 50 asserting its Reinhardt Dominus on debatably probably the, the worst Reinhardt map out of the three. It's only going to get better for him if he keeps putting on a performance like that. But as we know, it's control. It's one round of the map. It doesn't really decide anything. But his ego is probably through the roof right now. Yeah, uh, very much so. And it's... Uh... It's a funny thing, right? Like, uh, when you look at the, the way that these teams approach these maps, they're just so clear and like, this is what where you play here. This is it. This is where you play the May. This is where you play the Bastion, where you play the Junkrat, where the Symmetra. Like, those three, those are like the DPS you play here. If you play anything else, you have a very specific thing in mind, and your tank and support line is usually also going to look different. It is interesting mm -hmm. to see both these teams looking to be going with the, uh, with the Lucio and the Baptiste, though. Uh, not something that is necessarily uh, overly popularized, but you see the Baptiste especially come back into the form. I think Baptiste, you go for the Baptiste pick because if they have a May and you need to get to your Ryan, Ana's always going to get cut off more. He's going to have to go around that wall back and just hop over E more at the Ryan and they can get out of that situation. It just makes that interaction go really well for you. 
It, it does, but Kiriko has been able to do that really well. So that we see just the Kiriko come in for it. Uh, but the immortality field, as well as the extra damage that's more reliable from the Baptiste, is probably why these teams go for it, as well as the amplification matrix. Like now that Ryan can double, can like one shot at things again, that's uh, a very strong thing that comes through. Irrational currently under so much pressure on the objective, though, as to try and uh, keep this alive for their team. But unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be Pyro Cat galore just uh, throwing everyone around. This is a very slippery Symmetra, though. The Irrational not out of it yet, and there goes Sifty back in, gets the one elimination, doesn't get the second, oh. unfortunately. But almost could have turned around into a fight, eventually, still flips into the SAU Flex. Favor. A lot of alts online here for SAU Black as well. Holding this point down with three, almost five going to be coming online. Stifty, though, has the shatter. 8% away. He's been lightning so far. Can he keep it up? He gets walled up, gets pinned up. It looks like he's going to fall, but the e keeps him up. All of them are going to get frozen, and now they're just going to get walked right through Gore, starting his dominance back on him on Lee Jang. That Gore. Uh, not wanting to give up just yet, obviously. I mean, you know, you're only only down one point. It's all good. Nothing happened just yet. Not see, yet. Uh, see 33% taken up. Not a whole lot of percentage, just uh, has been accrued. There's plenty of time for uh, UCOW Black to come back into this, but they are a little bit behind the old economy. Not terribly. They're almost equal. They just, you know, if the, if the fight was instigated a little hey. quicker, it would have been gone. That's the amplification matrix. That's why you picked the Baptiste. Instant fire strike elimination on a 200 HP target. Can't get better than that. Can't get better than that. It's one of the cleanest feelings. Makes you feel like a sniper on Reinhardt. Shouldn't feel that way, but it does. And it puts so much pressure onto the opposing Reinhardt as well, because if you get hit with two of those, it's just so much damage. Another fire strike comes through, but Sim's gonna get walled up. Gonna get chopped down. Not quite saved by the healing. A yeah, really good photon barrier in the way as well. Nothing really that Ryan could do about it. He was trying to get the Symmetra, couldn't get her. And we're looking at the Immortality Field already being used. So much room, so much space, so much utility not used by UCOW Black. Look at that old economy. So disciplined to just hold on to everything but the wall. And now, yes, they're down 84%. But they're going to flip this point and then be going into this with a full bang. Because Irrational is just charging this up like, uh, like it's nothing. Like it's a pulse bomb almost. As you're talking about that alt economy, SEU Black only has the Earth Shatter coming back. Will have May Freeze, though. And if they can combo those two together, they may be able to just put this, even going into the four ultimate. Yeah, you think they may be able to? Online. Do you think they, didn't, okay. they may do it? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, looking there for that go. Shatter. Shatter, shatter comes down. out from Stifty first, does hit a couple, no follow-up yet, the Immortality Field was good. The Counter Shatter is good, but there's the cover of the Bastion ult! Beautifully done from Zek the Stack, Irrational chimes in as well. And what looked like almost a turnaround, a Counter Shatter from Gore working out, gets completely turned by UCOW Black. They do use almost all their ultimates for it, but no more Blizzard for uh, SAU Black. It's just the Amplification Matrix that they've got left. And uh, a Symmetra wall should be doing plenty to just stop there getting a lot of value. Well, see, here's the thing, though. See, if you can get that two fire strikes through the amplification matrix, might find a pick. Could be a cheeky way to sneak a fight out. You just got to use it on these short hallways. There's not a lot of places to go. Yes. out. There's a nice window in the way, and like you said, like I said, just the photon barrier in the way. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna get? Mm, you gonna get much. stopped by Zek the Snake, unfortunately. 60% and counting. They got to start getting on this objective in the near future. They have a little bit of room to work with still. It's uh, irrational having to crouch behind the stairs in order to not go down any of the, the remaining spam. And they just get pushed back. The aggression is so overwhelming. And after all the tools were used, there was nothing left for SAU Black. They no one doing force through there. It's going to turn this into the last fight territory. Huge shatter. Oh, it doesn't block it. It looked like Ryan blocked it for himself, but it finds a few behind. We know how that mechanic works. It hasn't improved too, too much. Now, speed back on, trying to get some healing going. Maybe try to speed back on in. Oh, the bad piece is going to go down, though. 90%. This is it. This is the last fight territory. you got to get into the objective in the near future. Otherwise, you won't be able to even uh, stall for overtime if you wanted to. Both Reinhardt's charge. Don't, both don't really get anything out of it. Solo Shatter onto the Symmetra of Irrational. Will get followed up on. There's another Bastion ult, and Caden is on a roll at the moment. Double elimination with the Baptiste. That's what you like to see from your flex support. Getting a little bit of value out there, but not over just yet. And there we go. Bastion transform is all you need. So much damage comes out. Just the Moira, but Nibli, he's not going to be able to do anything about that. No, absolutely not. Bastion just does so much damage, and you see Cal Black is just going to take that one over. 
see. And then we got obviously I'll play the game. I'll play the games. They can be a lot of different things. This time it's gonna be a tracer. Not quite sure which which one this is gonna be. Um maybe a pulse bomb. There we go. Yeah, triple kill. I actually oh, even oh. missed that it happened. It was a beautiful one. Don't know how I missed that. Oh no, we we. we oh, we, we were not there for it. Of course, I, that was the one where we were out. See. Yeah, well, we still got to see it. That's good. good. Um, right, I'm glad we. I'm glad we saw it. Glad we did get to see it. Speaking of reverb, they actually did a, did a little bit of a, a little bit of a thing. So you know that little accent that's on the first e of their name. Uh, mm -hmm. that's that's supposed to make it like an s sound sound. So it's technically it's reverb. Reverb. Not, okay. By the way, you should be able to pronounce it. That being said, they told us it's just reverb, so they just, you know, the fact that they spelled it incorrectly is, you know, not our, you know, it's up to them, but, uh, yeah, that's a little, little, little bit of an accent grave for you. We'll just keep switching called. back and forth. Hey, look, it's a French thing. It's called an accent grave. You don't use it in English because, you know, you just don't use accents at all, uh, but just, mm. you know, a little bit of education, educational humor for you on the NCC <laughs> stream. Why not make collegiate educational, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Lord knows I could use a little education. I mean, <laughs> oh, community college uh, two years, you know, it gets you far. It's uh, it sure should. It's uh, you know, the uh, <laughs> fur high further education. It's always progress. That's what we're talking about. That being said, Absolutely. though, we are gonna look at hybrid next. It's gonna be a ban on Blizzard World, but surprise, surprise, no ban on King's Row, which means we're instantly going there. I know the last oh. series did break the trend a little bit. We got some buddy so out. But we're going back to King's Row, the good old, the good old. They're going to be playing the Rhines constantly. Like, that's now no debate on that. I'm curious to see if we're going to see a little bit more May from uh, from Yukau, because uh, we haven't seen them play it just yet. Um, but that would be a fairly decent pick here. Uh, that being said, there are other DPS that are just as viable or differently viable. And uh, with the current climate of balance, uh, there there are just, you know, things you can do that aren't May that are good. It's just I'm biased because I A, I like playing May, and B, in Europe we have shown how good the May can be on maps like this. The, the Reinhardt oh, yeah. comp. And I, yeah. I, I I very much would recommend people try that out. It's so fun. I am, I am very much a Reinhardt player, yeah. so you don't even have to sell me for a half a second on that. I mean, if you're if you go to King's Row... I'm not saying double shield in the past hadn't been meta. I'm not saying other things haven't been playable, but just play the Reinhardt out of respect for the map and what <laughs> it is. And the thing that you hate is the thing I hate is, is that may is played because it makes you just have to play a certain way as Reinhardt. But in these team settings, it's so great to watch because they do play it so well and they do play so tight because they have to dodge the wall. They have to break the middle pillar to make these sort of plays happen, which is, Kind of goes back to that goats play that we used to have for so long back in the day as well where yes maybe bo maybe some people would think boring to watch but when you see the small things that they do it's so impressive yeah and speaking of again the may was sometimes worked into that uh into that composition instead of uh, oh yeah like uh, usually instead of like the diva was uh, usually the thing you switched out mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you know like a support but you yep. diva and it, it worked so well it was like amazing to see uh, just because yep. it was so annoying. But then, of course, when everyone still played D.Va, all the blizzards got eaten and made the start <laughs> quickly. Yeah. That being said, yeah. uh, King's Row here, no six heroes, so no two tanks, but there is no. still a lot of potential for May. She's so good currently. Got a lot of sustain, you got a lot of damage coming out. The slow is uh, more important than anything else. More important than a lot of people can give it credit for, especially when Lucio is oh, such yeah. a big deal. And uh, it can really disrupt what an enemy, what the other team wants to do. Like, imagine if you speed in with your entire team. Like, this, you just speed through that archway right there. And there's just May around the corner, oh, yeah. and she just slows one hero down. Everyone just runs away from you. You're a solo there, and the May is just gonna take you out, or they're gonna take you yeah. out together. Depends on what happens. But like the the the, the, the power of slow is uh, something that sometimes gets ignored. Because yes, yeah, she doesn't freeze anymore. She doesn't have to. You never really have right, I, I really like what SEU Black is running. Just because they're running the cast, they're running the May. I don't like the Bastion May. I hate to say it. I'm just, I'm impartial. I feel like it takes a lot less finesse. But 
The Bastion is a great pick because if you know you're going to be playing into a May, nothing busts down a May wall better than a Bastion. So really, it's just a smart pick here. We're trying to win. I think I think especially on attack when you don't really know what you're going to run into, it's just a solid pick in general. Uh, usually, I do prefer players start on the Widow just to scout it out. If you can get a right. shot off, great. And if you don't, but that's an offensive oh. wall. That's not what's supposed to happen. The defense is supposed to be ready for the wall. They just charge into Gore and they're gone. That's point A. That just has to be point A. There's no way you come back from that. Look at the aggression. They know. They know what they've done. They, m they may be able to come back for a slight recontent. I don't think so. There's really no way unless you're just going to feed. I feel like you just give this point up and then you hold and this Gore choke make as close it. as you can. Oh, they try, but again, the wall in the way. Not, not walled off this time, Ooh, they but walk. they try and get through. Both walls out, so at least there's no uh, danger of Vulcan to choke right now, which Yukao does definitely know. They're going straight into it. They want this uh, this aggression. They don't want to get walled into choke. They are making it through. Another wall comes out. Irrational has to make it back through. They do. They're in safe position. That's a lot of back and forth of those May walls. Wow. So far, Irrational's coming out on top, but the, at least the old charge is even between. So the Blizzard charge yeah. is not far off. I really thought you see how he's gonna kill them all right there. Huge fire strike through the window. You see how they oh, time that? That's gonna one take shot. the down right there. <laughs> Reinhardt called for that window because he knew right when he was gonna throw it. They just put it down for him. You gotta love that. Uh, I don't know if you have this sometimes. I see players do it, but you see the fire strike coming. You just cannot help but like step yep. into it. It's that, it's oh, that yeah. weird reflex thing where it's like, oh, it's a shiny yeah. target. I gotta grab it. Uh, don't do not do it. This Especially is in this situation. Mario. But another good wall onto Gore. This time, though, there is some room around the side to take out uh, Irrational. At least Enforcer finds that uh, headshot. So they, he's uh, been big with the shatter right here, yeah. and I think he's going to pull one out on him. Let's see if he can get the block. They both oh, have Gore. it ready. They're they not going to step through duel. the choke. Both of them don't want to step through that archway because they know the maze are there. No. Like, you don't want to go through and just get walled off and then essentially lose your team to fight instantly. Like this, like walls coming through, yep. they immediately break it, so they are able to uh, answer in kind. They use the defensive wall. The blizzard is out though; doesn't get anybody. Now they have the offensive blizzard still ready for a shields ride. down. He's putting it nice down. Shatter. That's gonna lay everybody out. Good wall, oh, but he gets walled up. Now he's gonna get tucked down. Stiffy gets cut down by Nibbly. She's gonna kill Maisie. Now there's a huge May wall. Oh, May freeze in the back line. Yeah. Irritable, irrational gets everybody. Wow. Beautiful. Like that's what you're waiting for. You're waiting for that window where no one's really looking at your May anymore. And all of a sudden, she's there, yeah. goes down the blizzard, and you're just gone. Like, you, you cannot get out of it anymore. Because they used all the utility to protect their Reinhardt. Gore got all everything they needed in order to win that fight. But then there was nothing yeah. left for everyone else. Irrational capitalized on that beautifully, just snuck like into that back line, threw out the blizzard, and well, that's, that was all she wrote. That was all she wrote. If he had a huge shatter, he did die first, but he did enough on tank. Now Gore has the shatter online and is going to try to answer, maybe stop this fight. Enforcer may even pop at high noon. Or a charge. Didn't quite get anything. Just a shadow through the payload. Doesn't quite find the target. That's uh, the oldest trick in the book, trying to shatter through the payload. They're not going to fall for that anymore. We're keeping it a little bit too sophisticated of the gameplay here. These players know after seven years of Overwatch. Yeah. I was like, this is Overwatch 2, everybody. We, still been, the same. We, it, it's, it's still no, the same. In, in that sense, yeah. like shouting through the payload, it's still the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. It happens to you twice, and then you learn. <laughs> and it's like, all right, I'll remember that until Overwatch 2. Yeah. Just keep on going. Tracer going to have this pulse bomb. Probably going to go for the Bash and try to cut him out. Irrational finds Pyrocat. Now no speed, but Stifty goes down. Tracer finding some, some, finding some value here. Irrational alone in the mega health pack room here. This could be a mortality field, so might be able to do some damage when they're getting corralled on, but nope, that's going to be elimination. Four minutes, though. It's so much time to get to the third. They have plenty of time to work, but they got some ultimates coming up. They're, they're still sitting pretty. I say you black. Long time to hold, this would be, but not impossible. At this point, three kings row. Window online here. Going to go for the fire strike play, I'm sure, once again. Just kind of setting it up. It's going to be right on this corner because this corner is so strong to hold. Huge nice mail. Blizzards, the wall as well to make sure that Gore just gets frozen up. Pyrocat tries to help them out. Immortality was huge though. They got the elimination. Oh. Uh, they didn't, couldn't get the eliminations out. And instead, it's going to be Reaver, Pyrocat, and Gore finding eliminations. Lightning got the one boop off. You need way more as Reverb just runs through your back line. Reverb carried so hard right there. 
I, it did not, well, between Reverb and Nibley, the carry was huge, because Ryan somehow didn't die because Immortality is an ultimate, apparently. Where was the high cooldown? Looking at both yeah. Immortality, uh, being up. Big difference here is there's gotta be more, ult more ultimates for you now at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And the fire strike comes out, doesn't find anything. I like that they're going through with this. Uh, pushing them back. All the room the has gone down after we that anymore. And we're back to the Ryan v. Ryan. He's gonna get the shatter off. So so far it's gonna be a lot of damage. On the Stiffy. Stiffy barely lives. It's gonna be gore falling this time. And back and forth always. Just like the Ryan that looks to die first is gonna die second. Almost a, a rule at this stage of the game. And what looked to be yeah, like well, over four minutes is starting to dwindle to two minutes 15. And uh, I mean, this is what we talk about. It's King's Row third. It's so hard to push through once you've been it's stopped. So, it's so, it's such a good defensive point. And I'm wondering if the Cass is a better pick now than the Bastion going into this late stage. I feel like he's been getting zoned out a little bit on the Bastion, finding it hard to get his footing. Uh, I do think that uh, over time, uh, SAU, Dewey Black is running out of ultimates uh, equilibrium. They are they are using more and Yukao is just getting closer and closer to getting that cool bank is running through. It's a beautiful blizzard once again finds the elimination on the Pyrocat. And while they do get the trade onto Caden, it's no supports versus the Lucio. Lightning close that sound barrier too so they have to sustain Stiffy does fall and it's Zek oh. that just cleans up here. Just the tracer in the way, Pulse Bomb's not gonna get anybody. Let's get the re. I spoke uh, a little too soon on this bash. The by the way, <laughs> it, it's it's an interesting hero, and there's definitely a lot of balance that's gone into making him viable in these situations. Mm -hmm. You can tell it's just it's so nice. To see. I like him much more than what he used to be. I like that he actually seems like a dynamic, my fair character. Yeah. yeah. Oh, big shatter block. Most counter shatter wall. block. Big May wall. They almost baited it, right? So they they baited the fact that he was going to shatter afterwards. He was also low. And then just use that oh. nice shot onto Reverb. Yeah. Beautiful headshots on the Tracer. Not the easiest thing to do, especially as Bastion when you feel a little bit sluggish in your aim in the shots. Yeah. They do have the big ability to walk in. It's a big fire strike, so that's why they're waiting. They're waiting out the application matrix, and now they're gonna go. That's a shield gone from Core. Core gotta ha gotta be playing a little bit safe. It's another wall that just walls off the Reinhard. Goes low, but gets mortality fielded. 30 seconds to go. We're Ooh. almost getting to that point where it's overtime. They can potentially still make it before it runs to that way. But it's a it's a struggle all the way. Zek the Snack super close to another ultimate. So stiffy. Those are rational and Caden. They're all getting super close. So is everybody on SIU Black. This fight goes on a little bit longer. It's going to be an ultimate Bonanza. Reaver with the huge stick. Gets it on the Zek the Snack. They could, didn't even need the Pulse Bomb. They could have probably done it without. But, you know, just secure the kill. It's what you want. And uh, now it's going to be tricky. Zek the Snack's not going to be there, but they can ult from range. They need to be as close to the fight. And they can uh, use that relatively early. Nice shatter onto the side. Does get Black just in, blocked just in time. Gore now walking through. Has the shatter ready too. Gets oh, everyone behind why? them. It was a beautiful sound barrier, but it wasn't enough. The blizzard cuts through. It might freeze a couple, but there's no one to actually finish off this elimination. Gore just holds the barrier. Zek the Snack. Gets closer and closer, but not close enough. Just in the bam, Caden. And they're gonna hold the cart right there, exactly 75, 57 meters oh, and uh, into the third point, but not quite to the end objective. We can both confidently say that those first two points, they didn't put up a lot of fight. We're like, is this gonna go all three? But then they absolutely put their foot down. Gore showed up on Ryan. Everyone really did their part. I felt like Enforcer on the Cassidy just hitting all his shots. Every time we spectated, always headshots, always getting rid of somebody and reverb on the Tracer. Every time Bastion used his ability, he would go in the back line, force him to waste most of it on him. I mean, we saw him get the great stick and the secured kill, so not much more you can ask for than that. Very happy to see the way this game is playing out. And there's a very clear win condition for, uh, for SAU Black now. They gotta go all the way through this map and almost to the end. Uh, it didn't quite get down the ramp. It was a little bit closer. Like not, was, not like the, the 0.03 meters before mm -hmm. they capped. It was definitely mm -hmm. a, uh, a very far push. Yep. Look how oh, though. So, so far though, like a big thing what happened in the first map uh, is that 
Yukao was more disciplined in their ultimate usage. Uh, mm. They kept they kept them around for longer. Uh, they they won fights without using any. I think SIU Black has gotten a little bit better about that, especially on this map. Uh, they're they're trading mm. ultimates more, and uh, more often than not, that's working in their favor. So if they can keep that up totally. on their attack, they might just build up a momentum that's unstoppable as well. We'll see what happens. If Gore can come through and assert some dominance on this first point, it's going to be hard to repeat what was just done to them. You're not going to hit that clean of a May wall and get that clean of a kill every single time. But now just trading walls, trading fan the hammers. Everyone's favorite. You can't forget the fan the hammers in the middle of the theme. That's half a brawl. Huge wall on the Gore. They're going to run him down, but Emort comes out to keep him up a little longer. Now he's going to get taken down by Lightning. Lamps out and uh, charge forward. Well, it's the cancel that's like, nah, I don't want to do it. Going that far in the spawn and go down. Oh! And hit a Zek the Snack. I mean, they showed how much damage they can do on the Bastion when they're just spamming. Now they're going to show that they also have a, a, an amalgam of accuracy, which we know they do. I think they hit the, uh, of the Tracer plenty of times on the head, but uh, always good to see that they keep it going on uh, on more like single shot heroes like Cassidy Ash. Yeah. Would make their soldier really time to time. As we all yeah, watch the unique hit scan with that close damage. Oh, Enforcer finds Stifty. Now it's opening up here. All Gore's got to do is kind of survive and maintain a long fight, and they should be able to take this point. Uh, they're going to be able to come back into this is uh, UCOW Black, and especially moves like this when you just put the wall onto the Reinhardt. You can kind of walk around it, but sure, that's the objective. They get the double, they get the triple. Ooh. They're going to be able to contest this. This is not going to get capped right now if uh, they have anything to say about it, and they do have a lot to say about it. Yukao stops that momentum instantly. And now they're going to be in even an ultimate situation, so they don't have to worry about much. Like, it's just going to be one for one, especially when the old pulse bomb goes down. There's an instant advantage from the Black. They are down their Baptiste right now. Aiden had a huge window, which swung that huge fight, but he's going to have to rush back if he does. I think he's almost back right now. They should try to rush in as quick as they can. Your, your Blizzard freezing just about freezing the Reinhardt. It's going to be a charge elimination again. These Blizzards from Irrational have been so accurate. So good. And so much value out of them whenever they uh, they don't get like counterplayed. And yeah, I see you Black. They cannot really get the same value out of Reverb at the moment. They get a Pulse Bump it's, every now and then, but it's so much less reliable in that way. It is much less reliable. And I feel like when you're not on the third point, you don't have that clear flank maneuver. This is such a hard point to really find a clear flank. You have They'll one or two flanks, yeah. and it, yeah, they're just going to look at you with a with a Cassidy, so it's just going to be really easy. A lot of ults here, though. Both sides might hit, hit a shatter here from Gore. And yeah, a lot of room. They don't can step off the point that much, because they do already have those two things oh. taken. It's a shatter that comes through. It's counter shatter, too. The high noon is out, but both the immortality fields are, too. What are you going to do here? Are you going to get anything? Nope. Will be a uh, shield that they hit. Walls in the way as well. Yeah, I mean... That's what you get with the mirror fights, and whenever SAU Black gets those fights where they get to sort of exactly mirror what Yuka was doing, they get the second of everything. They get the second they get the second high noon, they get the second immortality field, they get the second everything. And almost with every ability, the second one is better. Oh yeah. If you can wait and have your ability for another moment, it's always gonna prove to be more fruitful for you. And that is obviously huge. Only win the only the windows are gonna be online for both teams. We're gonna see now here's the difference though. If with ultimates, it's who can use them first sometimes. If whoever can use this window first is gonna be the winner of this fight. There is uh, some caveats to it, but it sure is a nice one to get. The problem is we also has the Blizzard ready, and Irrational is getting close. This might not just be a window fight. Nice uh, walk through, and now they're already past their window. They can't even really use it anymore. Ready for the Blizzard is Reverb. They're looking for an angle. They're looking for an opening. But that's a beautiful oh, yeah. window fire strike instantly yeah. with the Lucio bullets as well. Straight through the heads and the body of Reverb. It's a nice uh, magnetic grenade, but you've already lost a lot of uh, utility there and a lot of opportunity. He's going to back off, regroup, and try again a little bit. That's a deep boost advantage. It's such a big deal. They did a great job keeping Gore up right there. He's going to fall, I think, right here, but I couldn't believe they made him last that long, showing the true power of that beast right there. Oh, right finding there. Lucio, though. Nibli is uh, trading back with her own life, though. Yeah, they're going to back off. They're not going to gonna keep on pushing this at the moment. Two minutes is a decent amount of time to get through, but once you get stuck in the street space, the further that card gets as well, 
the further your respawns are, the harder it's going to be to have these fights. You need to win them fairly cleanly, otherwise you're just not going to get that objective. And now that we are in like a 5v5 ultimate situation, it's going to be an insane uh, engagement. Shadow goes out, out, finds a couple... Everyone drops, gets frozen, to to get, oh. but... One of them, oh, he should have released a little bit sooner so the Reiner could have been oh. hit. Now he's got the Shatter, and Gord just gets to swing freely. Unfortunately, that high noon from uh, Zek the Snake is just not finding what it needs to in these situations. It was so close. And once again, the second Shatter proves to be the bigger one. Right yeah. There. Immortality Field from Deeply as well. Went... I think I mean, Immortality Field from Deeply, we just got to stop. Yeah. I mean, we haven't really been ignoring it, but we got to highlight it more because. Right. He's so good at timing yep. them and at placing yeah. them exactly right. And then you see Yuka, he's like, oh, this is the immortality film in the way. Oh, this has been such a good play. It's such a denial Absolutely. tool and it works so well. It feels so bad, when, especially when you think you like, especially when you think you have a fight one, but then you just go, oh my God, we couldn't get it down. Big That's fire strike fight. through the center of the team. That's uh, going to be two minutes 14 in order to get to this uh, golden box of victory at the moment. Swifty Ooh. though charges in in the second charge. Again, the second ability oh. gets it. They are doing a very good job with that one. They do find Gores that in trade of Reinhardt, so the Irrational goes down. So it's a little bit of a trade back and forth and eventually looks to be in the favor of SAUE Black. Pyrocat somehow oh, manages to find the bottom of uh, of the Omnic housing project. There's a charge in. With they get touched. The window probably going to get popped down here. Try to clean this up once you get your Reinhardt back. Uh, but they need a Reinhardt first. There he is. Oh, also yeah. don't have their Lucio is now coming back no. to lightning. Lucio advantage. There's the immortality there the application matrix. Will they uh, find the right value? The yeah, that's gonna be swift stifty down and with uh, a very close back and forth, it does look indeed oh. like SIUE Black is gonna take away the victory on this map. Bring it to a 1-1. Well, like we said, hey, this time it is close. It's one to one. It's one to now one. Now it can really go either way. I was, it was really looking like you see OW was going to really dominate. They were putting on a nice hold. They didn't, they didn't give up any points right away, but slowly but surely, SIU Black just kind of went back on. Yeah, they, nev they never through. had a stubborn hold. So they had like yeah. a two minute hold on every objective, and then there's still two yeah. minutes left for the last one, right. unfortunately. Right. So, yeah, that's how time works. You know, if you have eight minutes, <laughs> you, you lose six, then you still have two left. That being yeah. said, though, you know, speaking of time, we're going to give you and the teams and ourselves a couple of minutes just to catch our breath, and then we'll be right back for map three and four of the series.
Welcome back. It is 1-1 between these two teams in the Champions Division. We thought it was going to be close and they are proving us right. After a little bit of a, of a, of a stronger performance from Yukao Black on Li Zhang, uh, they take the one a lead. SIUE Black is coming back into it, winning King's Row. Not in a like dominant fashion, but they were in control for most of it at least. So now that we're in a 1-1 situation, there's only one thing to do, and that's play at least another two maps to see who gets away with this uh, first of three series. We're going to see Escort, we're going to see Push, and uh, well, one map we're not going to see is Junkertown. That has been banned out. We are still waiting for the decision on which Escort map we are indeed going to go. And Neely, I mean, what can we say? This is just going to be back and forth, isn't it? Oh, it, it should be back and forth at, at least. Circuit Royale looks like is where we're going to be going, and I couldn't be more happy that we're not going to Junkertown because it's the most anti Reinhardt map, and both of these teams clearly want to throw down on some Reinhardt. I feel like both of the Rhines currently are just going to go, let's play this, but I'm not sure if it's going to be as viable on this map. What do you think? Yeah, uh, it's, it's it, you know, it's hard to say sometimes. We just like, is it viable? Is it not viable? It's a lot. It, it's also a lot about like what the teams think is viable team. in the situation yeah. and on this particular map that you're going against um, this certain team. Yeah. So we're gonna go to Circuit Royale, uh, which means that Circuit Royale is a very different map to King's Row and Legion Tower. Oh yeah. There's much more longer sight lines. Uh, there's a lot of Sigmas, Widows, uh, Sojourns. Yeah. A lot more, you know, of that more dynamic mobile play that comes into it that isn't so much to do with just brawl and rush at people um and i mean we'll see what these teams actually will play when they get on onto the map itself uh we are going to see some substitutes which is probably flowing from the fact that we get uh we get circle real as a sub so uh joy is coming in joey's coming in for stifty uh firehound 2 is coming in for uh zek the snack and they get pyro tank going uh pyro cat going to tank Gore going to DPS on the other side, and Forcer is uh, going to be on support um, this time around. So there's like a lot of swaps going around, a lot of switches. When you can do the map, you can obviously see a little bit more clearly because of what's going on. Um, but uh, it will definitely be a uh, a fun time. You can see a little bit of the changes here on the Yukal Black roster. So uh, still going to have um, Joey here now on the tank, Firehound on the. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. No, they're on the DPS, aren't they? Um, yeah, they're on the DPS. And then Lightning and Caden are still support. Your Rational still on the DPS. So uh, two players subbed out. A couple of roll, uh, you know, the roll's not swapped around, so they're still safe. And then we have uh, on the other side, indeed, just the uh, swap between Gore and Pyro Cats and the Enforcer being on the support line. Yeah, not often do you see the tank player going to DPS, but I mean more now than ever because I'm sure there's a lot of tank players that used to be off tank players, so they have a lot of the DPS chops under them. They just, you know, now they have to learn the Reinhardt, they have to learn other characters that are main, you have to play it all. Hey, look, you're not a true main tank main if you're not also a Widow God, is what we've learned from <laughs> plenty of history in Overwatch. So not you're not surprised wrong. at all. Uh, not wanting to toot our own horns here, of course, is main tank main. Uh -huh. um, no, it's uh, it's it's been a fun one. Uh, but like I said, Circa Royale, like there's so much, so much. Yeah. Again, it's just a very different map. I like that we're getting to see this map, uh, just uh, like the style of map, because it clearly tells us a little bit about where Yukao wants to play, which is more mm -hmm. of these non, like definitively brawl maps uh, until we get to maybe the, like the last point. And mm -hmm. um, they could very well edge out an advantage because of it. Or they could both teams could just go in with the mindset that what can't we do with a Lucio speed boost in my yeah. entire team? They could just opt for that and be like, stairs are pretty good. We need to stay in shape. You know, let's get it going. Mm -hmm. I mean, first point, you could feasibly, I could see that I could easily see the Reinhardt working. It's second point that I think we all are pointing the finger and pointing the questions at because of that nasty high ground that you have to overcome. It's, and it's if there's mostly, a junk rat, there's a widow. It's the third point tough. where I'd expect them to potentially switch to it once they get halted. Right. Like when you get that single, exactly. first fight loss and you got to swap out. Uh, that's that's where the Reinhardt is most likely to come in. 
Uh, that's also mm-hmm. why Sigma works, right? Like Sigma, you can constantly block the sidelines. You have a little bit more range to yep. you, uh, and it will still work until like last point as well. It's it's a pretty nice pick, pretty balanced in that situation. But it's all about again, it's all about team preference and as well as what you run into. Like if the defense is running that full rush, then yeah, you could just mirror it, but you can also yeah. find ways around it that uh, are a little bit more yeah. effective. Absolutely. I mean, just because if you do go for that poke strat with the Sigma, he's going to add to that poke. You just got to run something that's you, a widow does help with that poke and shut down a lot of sight lines. You just want to make sure whatever your other DPS also helps that Sigma force that Ryan off of you. Because as soon as he gets to you, there's not much you can do about it. And he's just, he's just going to rush down your Sigma. But with long sight lines, you have a lot of time to poke him down. So I'm really interested to see what these teams will do. It is, you just kind of got to uh, see it. Exactly. Like, it's it's the thing. And so far, I do feel like Yukao is looking for that alternative. Like, looking for something mm-hmm. outside of the brawl. There's a reason why they brought us here, after all. They could have also gone, like, Rialto. Or, uh, right. Like, Rialto specifically is very good for brawl still. Uh, Junker Town yeah. got already got banned out, which would have been, like... That's, like, a little bit of a middle ground, but this is definitely not the brawl map, if you're talking about all of them. There are some streets, though. You might have a few girls back here. I'll just have this bridge right here that we're looking at. Really hold down a Reinhardt team if someone does opt to run it on first point, if they dare. Yeah, this entire street is just, just meant to block Looks- Reinhardt's. But yeah, we yeah. see the Sigmas, we instantly see the Widowmakers. There is still yep. one spawn, obviously, but like we instantly see like you know the sniper, yeah. the anti snipers, the, the the adaptive yep. shields. It's it's all coming out. Uh, I would really like to see Enforcer on this Ana. They have to come in as a sub now. Uh, I'm I just, I just I want to see what that does because Ana has been I wouldn't say ignored, but has been uh, left out of the meta for a while. There's like mm-hmm. very few teams that want to pick it up and like and try it out because she has like so little mobility. It's hard for her to like keep yep. in the fights because everything helps so fast and they relocate. Ana's falling behind. Uh, and the same yeah. thing kind of goes for Zen. Ana Zen is such a classic combo. Like I really mm-hmm. want to. I, I, can, I just want to. I just want it to work out. I would agree with you. The Bab Zen probably a little more standard of a pick to go with, but I'm always a sucker for a huge anti nade. Widow just finding these sight lines and don't necessarily have to do too much on Widow except hold down the proper sight line to make sure the other Widow can't do too much to your team. Shots being traded out, none hitting yet. Joey falling rather low though. That is a lot it's of back and forth happening here. You see Gord is waiting. Gord is waiting for that moment that the sniper gets too close. They can either deflect a shot and dash into them or like find something of that nature. But they are playing very okay. passive. They're not trying to hold on this front corner. They're, they are waiting to open up those sight lines. I wonder if Enforcer had intel that they'd run Genji because... Oh, huge headshot from Irrational on the reverb. Ira- Irrational doing it on May and Widow. Doesn't matter the input. A lot, oh, a lot of pressure on the Joey. Almost goes down there on the Sigma, but we'll be able to get uh, get healed back up. Immortality field well placed. Now it's going to be all Ooh. up to, I was going to say, it's going to be all up to the defense to try and hold this off. That high ground's been taken over. They do find Irrational. There's just a little bit of a Widow trade. They uh, lost their own. Now they got the other. It's going to go back and forth the entire game. Still, still trying to farm that blade up. Only at 51, 87 on the Nano. That's what we're all waiting to see. Pyrocat has the lift, though. Lightning finds score. That's a devastating pick. Irrational finds Pyrocat. That looks like they might inch their way down here. Up oh, often you see both sick must be the first ones to fall. I know, right? Very durable hero, especially against snipers. There. Like that's the whole point. Again, against snipers. Irrational does not let reverb get away. Not reverb, Rational just verb t- in this in this situation. I was just gonna say uh, irrational taking the widow duel by storm for sure. Reverb kind of having a tough time finding an answer here, but all it takes is one headshot to kind of get you back in the groove. Lift might want to open with it with Pyrocat to get a stop on this payload right around here. Open some shots up for his widow in the sky. And force out transcendence. The flux time, not yet. Nice shields from both of them, like walking these accretions. Yeah. They're both very knowledgeable on how to play this, uh, this Sigma guy. 
There we go. Lifting up in the air. Gets the Zen as well as the Hanzo. Nice immortality for to stop it. No wow. ultimates needed. And they can just keep on trucking this way. Now we're looking for the value of potentially defensive Secret Clucks. It is close. Nice shot for Reverb. Saw Irrational. And this time the jump angle was exactly what they were waiting for. They were ready for it. As well as Fireham going down. No more DPS for you, Kyle Black. And that's going to be a retreat here for SAU. Even though they lose this fight right here, Yukao Black supports play that unbelievably by not using Transcendence. I know they end ended up losing the fight, but they did not need the Trans in that moment for the lift. They just used the Emor and just they just believed in their and it's not just vulnerability that they, and trust. It's not just that thing they didn't use. Other than the Infrasight, which is usually the Widows just straight out yeah. against each other. They didn't use the thing. Yep. The other side, they no, will have a Blade without a Nano, very mm -hmm. importantly. Uh, but mm -hmm. Pyro Cat almost charged up another Gravitic Flux out of that. That's insane. They just used it. Yeah, that's crazy, actually. He's gonna be able to get... Yeah, that's, that's crazy. He might be able to get the uh, Transcendence out for the Blade before he goes in. Or vice versa. Oh, they're just trying to find a headshot. You know how it goes. You just gotta shoot these logs down the... Down the lane, huge flux. Gotta get the transcendence out. Blade also goes out, gets cut down by Caden. And they had that plus the immortality field, so both the uh, Genshin and the Sigma are not getting out of it. They kind of layered them a bit too much. They should have waited for one of them to be finished before the other one came in. Doesn't really matter when Reaver was hitting headshots, though. Gets the yeah. double out of it. He's gonna keep on trucking with that Widow forward. And uh, that's still very low, Joey. Reverb showing that he's still in this one. Hits a nice headshot into Irrational. Yeah. Gonna get cut down, but it's all fine. Oh, wait, two? Those are some good exit picks. Now they're gonna get to re engage on two picks. This fight just might turn on him. I mean, I was gonna say Irrational has been overusing the jump shot a bit too much, and Reverb has mm -hmm. been learning the angle, learning the timing, yep. and now they're, they've got it pinned down. Irrational going after the Genji is a very big deal. Like, it's a good sign that they are willing to change. They also only have a minute yep. 40 left, so they're going to realistically get maybe one blade out of it. Might not even be for the blade. Doesn't need a blade. Try to go <laughs> Deflect and dash oh, instantly. Yeah. That's yeah. what you like to see. Exactly what I was about to get to is like, sometimes you could just go Genji, even if he's not always the strongest meta pick against Widows. I mean, I don't see why he's not. And an Ana, you can deflect both of those abilities and just turn it. Yeah. For sure. I mean, anything you can deflect, except for the Rock. Like exactly. Sigma Rock, you're going yeah. to be in trouble. You're going to be sad, Genji, but that's okay. You can deflect basically everything else they got. So, lots of free damage. Rational 62 to Blade as well. He just swapped. I got a lot of dash through, a lot of value out of a couple of these as well. It's been about a minute. So, you know, they're like over halfway. They're not charging at an insane rate. They'll like a Pyro Cat in this third flux already. Uh, yeah, I know. know. Pyro Cat just he keeps has on been. going. Joey, Joey's matching the, the, the pace at the moment, though. So uh, they just wait a long time to use their first one, unfortunately. Fox online here, might try to get it out before a transcendence comes down. Might just try to take the picks. Joey gets a flux, just gonna take the damage. He gets knocked down, now everyone's gonna fall behind him. Ana falls, Pyrocat just trying to stay alive, keeping the orb on Pyrocat. He gets a little bit of shield left. Lightning finds Reaver, and now you see Cow Black is marching their way to this third point. It was very interesting. Like, you, you literally, oh, they, I, I think he's gonna finish it off here. I don't think he can stop this. Too many players in the way. And, and the disbelief, like you saw like a, almost like a disbelief in Joey when they, when he, he used, he uses a Gritic Flux and he like, he, it drops down and you see him like, you know what? I don't have to shoot at this because there's going to be a transcendence. And it's yeah. like, wait, there is no transcendence. Like you see the double back happen yeah. and then you're like, okay, well then we just eliminate them because they're super low now. And they just, I wonder if team roll after that. I, yeah. I was just, I wonder if both Sigmas thought each each team had a transcendence basically online they yeah. and they were just kind of like waiting around and then yeah he uses it just to get it out and he goes wait a sec why is it not glow why is it not bright as the sun over in their team and then just right. mowed them down so well played there by joey for sure yeah and and now now becomes an interesting thing because as most people are aware Playing Sniper isn't just playing Sniper. There's a very big difference mm -hmm. in how you play a Widowmaker on attack versus on defense. 
And mm -hmm. uh, Irrational was doing a lot of jump shots on the attack because they kind of had to to get the sight lines yeah, open. Yeah. Yeah. But now they won't have to. So that mm -hmm. that sort of cadence that Reverb got going is not going to matter for anything anymore on, the, on, on their attack. So right. we'll see how this dynamic between Reverb and uh, Irrational is going to change on the on the when they now that they've swapped sides. And the same thing kind of goes for everything, like uh, all the heroes that you're playing. Of so course. Enforcer now being on 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 attack is very different than on on defense. The same thing goes for like the Zenyadas, the Batistes, the the Hanzos, Genji, Sigmas. But there's going to be a Diva and a Kiriko on the side of SIUE Black, which are big changes from the last round, and uh, uh, might be problematic. That could. I was just looking at that as you were getting to it, because Joey's still on the Sigma, which opens him up to just get a free flux every single time. Unless they unless they Zuzu it, which you can do. Caden finds Nibbly right away. That's a quick pick, and it puts him back into spawn. Not going to be able to do much after that. Irrational still jump shotting, by the way. Like, no, no <laughs> reason for it. They're just doing it. Yep. Well, he's like, I was just playing May, so I always use the wall. I'm just going to keep using the grapple. I like to use the abilities. I get it. He's having fun out here. Sometimes getting that angle, if you're feeling it, I mean, hey, it is easier to hit sometimes when you're in the sky like that. Very predictable, but... Oh! Gets found on the ground there by Reverb. Nice headshot for him. He's back in it. And as much as we talk about Irrational, Ooh, Reverb is just can go ridiculously like, low. Can get it healed up. Yeah, they definitely can just in time. Gore will not be so lucky, though. A lot of ults are for Enforcer, is at least. Really good healing from Enforcer right there. Way to keep his Sigma up. Sigma way to play the sight lines. He knew he had to play in the doorway, so he could see him. Oh, gets mowed right on down. Look at all those assists. Everyone shot Pyrocat on that one. There was no one else really to shoot because Pyrocat was so far nope. forward without anything close. Like, Ana's not going to be anywhere close. We're just going to be in the far back. If it gains you, it might be around sometimes. But, like, there, there is no reason to shoot oh. at anything else unless you're a sniper and you can just shoot at snipers. But if they get yeah. that close, yeah, you're doing all hands in with the Sigma. They're pushing back in. They don't quite have everyone back yet, but they will just momentarily. Caden's going to be looking to maybe use this window here. Also a Dragon Strike. Maybe not going to find any kills with it unless they combo it with the Sigma Flux. But it could just be used for zoning as well. No There's a jump shot from Reaper. Won't find it. We'll be spotted oh, by Irrational. And Irrational... Having played fairly safe, fairly back, not having that infrasight yet is a big deal at the moment, obviously. Not even close to it, still 20% yeah, away. She's going to cut cut down her counterpart easily with the Widow shot to help assist it. Window might be used to back him down. Emort comes out. The Genji's in on him. Sigma all coming out as well. Genji finding some dash kills. And Gore going crazy on Reinhardt. Then Genji, folks. That's four in the feed for him. Gore... We thought they were maybe going to go over to the Widowmaker. Because, you know, Tank Main Widowmaker, that works. Tank Wayne Widowmaker, yeah, exactly. But they, they do choose to go to the Genji, and it so far has not really been disappointing. Uh, we do have oh. to see what they're going to do with the blade. Again, not going to be a nano blade because, you know, they don't have a nano. Um, but it, it should be, you know, still interesting to see what they can get out of it. And if they're going to indeed try and use it to sort of bait for the bit of Flux. If there is a Griffin Flux Absolutely. online, which there isn't. There is one online. Also, gonna be getting probably get countered. But sometimes you just gotta get it out. Oh, fine score by accident. Was trying to kill the Zenyatta right there. Still gonna do it. <laughs> that was funny. Get down, Mr. President. And Gore now holding on to this blade. He might now almost as well wait for either the Nano or the Griffin Flux to be back online. Yeah, because sometimes, as we've all seen a blade do, it goes in. It just can't find anything, but Lightning has engaged with the Transcendence, so now he won't have that. But Joey could easily just flux the Genji if he dives his backline. It can be a viable strategy if you want to just get one kill and cancel an ult. Well, a dash opportunity, the climb opportunity. It's always looking for those breakpoints as Genji. Health bars. Going big D flash. Just low enough. Looking for something here. They do find Firehounds. Joey Fire also just Joey instantly down. getting deleted. Card still has a ways to go though. There's plenty of room to back off and re-engage for their to wait for their teammates to, to, to get there. That's exactly what they're gonna do. No risks. Wanna find something with this bow. This Hanzo is looking for an extra target, but it's just too slippery. 
It, it either misses every single shot or it just finds the most random headshot. We know how it works. Big flux into the back line, finds two. Might be able to finish one of them. Neither quite go down. Lightning is down. Reaper goes down. Pyrocap pushing back on through. Dragon Strike to try to split him up. But Blades finally out. No nano. They don't offer the nano weight, but they do enough damage with it to win this fight. Probably means Firehound might swap. Uh, just based on, you know, the way that they use that Dragon Strike in a fairly not so useful way anymore. Like, they were never gonna, like, build like, a quad cave with it, which mm. is what they needed. Gonna no, stick absolutely. on the Hanzo, though. It's interesting. Do you see Joey go over to the Winston? Very different approach here. Uh, the switch between Ooh. high grounds is gonna be a lot more, a lot easier this way, which I definitely understand being a factor. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, this comp is gonna make Sigma a little tough to play. Because <clears throat> even though he sets up his Hanzo, his Zen, and Ana, if, the, if everyone decides to go right through that, it's not gonna matter. And Genji and Winston can both do that. And you can just put a Zen on the bottom. And uh, Winston just brawling though on point, just kind of doing his thing. That's all you need yeah. to do sometimes. Just kind of hold that space so they can't round that corner. Nano is now online. And the blade goes oh, no. up. Does he find one? He might find the Zenyatta. Then he's going to find the Hanzo. It's the reset. It's what you're looking for. They uh, don't get a team kill. They don't need a team kill. They just need to push him back. Start this hold on third. And with only like 30 seconds to go before SAU Black uh, matches time cow. Uh, it's looking pretty good for Cow at least to uh, come out ahead in terms of time bank, but absolutely, they could just hold. You know, it's possible. They could just hold. Holding is in the cards and playable. That's how you like though. Kind of... Their goal is to finish yeah. the map with as much time as possible. But if they finish, they get at least another attack, and they need to get another attack. Otherwise, yep. they lose. No matter what, because it is just a payload. It's not like they oh, have to cap no. point, so they could get it with zero. Oh. It's all falling apart here for you, Cal. They're not getting anything done. They just fall one by one. And now this payload's getting awfully close. Only uh, a couple of seconds difference in time like at the moment that uh, might not be getting that much less a difference. Or Having a tough time cleaning up the kills, though. It's good. Transcendence, Transcendence is out. out. And it's need already used will be uh, safe whoever the, the target buys and it's fine. Now there's a bit of flux no, gonna onto the Genji once again. Can anyone touch? No, unfortunately not. 102 is where this time rank is going to end. The payload hits the mark. The 20, a 21 second difference. And in terms of escort, yep. that's you know negligible. Uh, zero. It's, they have the same exact time, basically. I mean... They don't. It, that extra 20 seconds can matter, especially for getting a couple extra ultimates on your attack. Can be huge. Or any extra attempts. But for all intents and purposes, these teams are basically at a dead heat right now. It's one to one in the on the scoreboard. It's one to one on these rounds, just a little bit of a time discrepancy. And now we're gonna have to see who is gonna actually win this map. And it's interesting because a lot of the time the, the snipers haven't really been like the the, the defining thing seen mm -hmm. a lot of value come out of the Zenyatta orbs. The Zenyatta yeah. orbs are devastating in this burn, the state of the game. There's far less to block them. The Discord orb is absolutely shredding now. Like it helps, oh, it helps yeah. you go so fast. I mean, you combine that with the Hanzo, and yeah. even just with raw Sigma yeah. damage, it's so hard that your health bar goes down. Well, we saw exactly what was happening to each Sigma. It didn't matter how great ones, because I felt like both Sigmas played awesome. But what happens is you let one rock go through, that stun time with you Discord and a Hanzo shooting, I mean, you're dead. There's not, I mean, you're not that, you don't have that much HP. Unless you catch any mortality, you're not, you're not gonna stay up against that. Oldest man in the game after all, That's how it works. <laughs> Yeah, that H, you feel it. I mean, I'm assuming you feel it in your bones at some point. It's got I gravity mean, working for point. him, but uh, true. That must that must be great. He must have a great back. He doesn't have to because he's gravity. Exactly. That's what I mean. Like it doesn't even. Anyway. <laughs> oh, for a second I thought we were spectating Genji. No, just kidding. It's Kiriko. Similar. Just poking away. A lot of space taken by SIU Black here. Yeah, I mean, Yuka knows they have to win one fight. And they're just trying to decide where they're going to win that fight. Absolutely. They obviously want to win they're it picking a good spot. Yeah. They're going to have this high ground to work with, this corner to work with. Rock just barely dodged. Almost devastating for that Genji. 
exchanging abilities, trying to stand up front. Old Sigma's abilities gone, shields are low. Hanzo is discorded, they're trying to focus him down, can't quite get it. The time started, the moment where it's all gonna go down. Suzu used, that's a very early use of the Suzu in a not vital moment. It is gonna be Joey that falls instead. Oh. There goes Firehound. It would look like a very good setup as soon as the Suzu was used. It's just falling apart at the scenes. That's the first checkpoint agreeing. gone, team yeah. kill through, and SAU Black is on the way to potentially set a very, very hard thing to be here on their attack. Once you get that first point, it, all, everything opens up, because now it's just everything you get after this is bonus, I feel like. Because once you're on defense, you're like, well, we're going to first point hold. But everything you can get here, it's just bonus time for you to come back, bank all to win. So the farther they can push this, the better for them. If they can get two points, it's all bacon gravy whatever it is whatever your favorite food is yeah that being said everything that happens after you start overtime is kind of already bonus the fact that they're in this round is already bonus yeah they exactly. really really had the opportunity huge to help blocks. there with huge blocks doesn't get the follow-up quite there nice shield Ooh. and the healing is there it's two for one exchange firehound goes down Hold there goes on. joey they do change the only real difference is support for the dps but there go another two it is just a soul sojourn that's trying to keep this alive for SAU Black, but it's not going to happen. That's going to be where the Wait. car holds. 58.51 meters. Well, it's either way, still a great push to get that first point. Get it almost halfway, all the way up the hill even, giving yourself a good time bank. Now you just got to look back down at a minute 23. Just got to bank up six alts and use them, basically, is how you could almost think of this. Obviously, it's not how you're going to quite play it. No, because you only get but... five volts, so... That's, exactly. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah. Ah, That's the difference. Man, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I got to play more Overwatch 2, clearly. I mean, I play it all the time, but you know how it is. I know. Still like those Overwatch 1 things. I see. SIUE Black looking for a hold Ready. after once minute 23 has expand, expired. You need to win one fight. And now you just got to hope you win that fight before they get the cart further than you got yours, which is 58.1 yep. meters after the second checkpoint. It's so simple. Like, Anyone can so, do so. it, right? It's it's you know, don't even have to think about it. Uh, no, it's in, in all seriousness, of course. You know, it sounds simpler than it is. <laughs> I think they have a very good strategy. Now they just gotta execute. Just gotta execute. That's it. That's every Overwatch game, no matter their level. Just gotta execute. But sticking with the Sigma, sticking with the Hanzos, not both teams sticking with the Genji. I was liking the Genji. Both teams pulling it out. That's what I've liked about both these teams. They they pick the Reinhardt, they stick to it. They get some Genjis out there, everyone's for it, everyone's playing Genji. you love to see it. Rational's been good as well tonight. They've they they, they they've realized that the Widow, unless you get like that triple kill that Irrational got at some point, or was it Reverb? I don't remember. Unless that happens, the Widow is not going to get enough value in these mid skirmish fights, especially when it's so Absolutely. close to overtime and you got to you know, get value out of those on-card fights, the Widow is just not providing enough. And the alt exchange is just kind of better as well. If you have a blade, it can threaten transcendence. So does your Sigma ultimate. Just more things to kind of get that out, and then it forces more team fight wins. Then necessarily, I have to flip the heads because I can see you through a wall. But Are either way, there's constant pickoffs at the moment. The yeah. house is not able to, as a team, move Ooh. forward. That's another one. Uh, uh, Firehound this time. Uh, this is not looking good for you, Cow. It looks like they've been broken by that hold. They might be a little bit on tilt. That's uh, that it seems the full push through on the first attack of SIU Black really felt like it shouldn't have happened. It, ha it happened anyways, and now they're just walking into the Hanzo arrows. Yeah, also, I think Gore going over to uh, Gojur and is helping a lot with the shield break, but Enforcer goes down, and that's also a lot of, a lot of their shield break right there. So now they're going to have to push back try to get their Zen back, and then maybe hold before this first point. But it really doesn't matter where they stop it. They, it's OT. They it's just overtime. have to win the next fight. So much space they have. They can they can probably fight at least three times. At least two times, probably. If you two they rush out, though. They're shooting fast and lean. They might they're try to burn him. They give Sigma the the nano to keep him alive through the Kitsune rush. Not oh, the rock in the choice. Discord. Can he survive? It's also anti nato anti. Not going to be able to get healed. Oh. A soldier trying to get away from that gore. I think they're gonna get him. Yeah, there goes gore. That was just Nibli and Forcer and Reverb. They're gonna gonna run with, with the tail between their legs. 
Good take, oh, and they're gonna, oh, they're gonna keep cleaning, keep staggering. This is good. They need that space. They need to get that card as far as possible. That stagger is huge. They're moving along. I like as well they put two people on the card, like just to make sure that. It, oh, now it's one. But like they, they they do it just to make sure they get as much mileage as quickly mm -hmm. as possible out of it. This is gonna come down to essentially one fight. If you look at the ultimate situation, it's gonna get interesting. Mm -hmm. We've got four ultimates on SAU Black's side. That's uh. Three on Yukau. Yukau already used the dragon to stop them, uh, especially the supports from both the way. got rocked. Very early on the transcendence, just a tracer that can touch. They can uh, potentially get that tracer and then move on to the rest. They need to be careful here and not overcommit. Nice rock onto oh. Gore. Firehound is following up. They get a triple. It's just a transcendence and a Kiriko. What can you really do there? The Lone Zenyatta barely touches the point 24 meters, but somehow, some way, Yukau, they recover, they push through, and they put themselves on a 2-1. They win their map choice. And in a series like this, winning your map choice means so much. Joey and Firehound absolutely carrying right at the end there. We're going to see yeah. playing the game from Pyrocat, who also did very well in the Sigma. Not even going to be a flux. It's going to be him just shooting people. Yeah, this is oh, after the this is after the double flux that happened from both uh, both him and Joey. It was uh, it was very nice the the, the play. But yeah, like e I think pretty much every player had like good moments or great moments on that map. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple of moments that also looked a little bit less great. Uh, but for most of it, it was really interesting to see, especially to switch to Kiriko. Uh, as much as they eventually didn't w end up winning the map. It provided right. a different dynamic than the Baptiste was doing, even though Nibley was like uh, shredding it on the Baptiste. Yep, it was really doing a great and job. The and then the Zenyatta as well. The the, the Kiriko brought like a, a new thing to it that made it more dynamic, like a little more responsive yep. than the the Baptiste did. Uh, they just had to be a little bit careful with how they played their Suzus when they teleported. But it's you know that's Kiriko in a nutshell, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I did notice a change in the way that healing was being distributed, and that might have eventually been a problem for them. It could have. I mean, it definitely changes how a lot of things go. I mean, if you're playing Kiriko versus Baptiste or Ana, they all heal so very differently and have different ways to keep a fight going. Even though Emort and Zuzu feel kind of similar, they obviously act very differently. Yeah. We saw what Emort was able to do yeah. on some of those maps because it really can keep a tank alive when you just don't think it's even possible. Yeah. Zuzu can also do that. And honestly, could have maybe been used on that defense when that Sigma was anti. If they had had a Zuzu for that moment, maybe they turned that fight around. But it's all said and done. It's two to one. No, it's, now we're going to see what happens no, next. It's no butts, no coconuts. Uh, map selection, <laughs> though, is going to be push. Because, of course, it's the one game that we haven't seen yet. And we're going to go to the fourth map. There so, was a ban on Colosseo, so that means New Queen Street and Ishpadans have left, and it's going to be Ishpadans that we're going to. That's going to be uh, ISUE Black picking that one up. And uh, I am not surprised, but mm -hmm. it's going to be a rough one. Like Ishpadansa goes one of two ways. Either one team just sort of pushes it in. The other thing is that one team pushes for, I just, you know, we call it a three way, but the, the, the second one is that, you know, they push it almost in. Then they get completely reverse swept, and the third one is if you keep going right. back and forth between the teams. <laughs> but reverse sweeps on each Pedansa are like the most common thing in Overwatch at this stage. It's ridiculous. Like every every funny. other each Pedansa game you get, it gets turned around. Whether it's you turning around on the enemy team or it getting turned around on you, and sometimes it doesn't even make sense. Like you don't even get why you're losing. Um, I know because yeah. you'd think it was maybe based on. Oh, they won the fight at the spawn. Now they start rolling their ultimates. But even still, to go the whole entire map, that's so many fights. It's yeah. kind of hard to believe that yeah. they would still be able to roll alts through almost five or six fights. Yeah, you notice a lot about like the pace and the tempo of like the regroups and like how you choose to engage, where you choose to engage. So there's a lot of choices there that teams make. And that's really what it's going to come down to when we move into this uh, particular map. Um, Player swaps. We're going to get a lot of swaps. They're pretty much going to go back to where they started, it looks like, um, yep. because obviously they're now back on a map that's a lot more like what we've seen in terms of control and hybrid. Yep. Uh, so we are going to see just the, the, the return to form from both teams. Uh, whether they're going to play exactly the same heroes is a bit of a question mark. There is some you know, debate as to what would, or some choices that, again, they can make and they're a bit different. Um, that mm -hmm. being said, though, we are looking to load into the map of Ishpadansa. The players are the only ones that can really tell us 
by picking the heroes what they are actually going to play. Um, but like we said, everyone's sort of back on the roles that they started on on map one and two, mm -hmm. and uh, Circle Real was a uh, an outlier in that sense. Absolutely, I'd imagine if you bring Stifty back in, you're going back onto the Rye because he was so dominant on that for a period of time in this game. So I'd imagine that's kind of the look they're going for. Gore has also moved back to tank probably to match him if they opt for the Reinhardt. But as we were looking at when we were looking at the center of the map, there's those awful high grounds you have to deal with, which can always open up kind of like a playful dive in that middle middling ground area yeah and with the momentums here there was uh there was obviously when the map came out there was a, there was still a fairly strong junker queen meta uh so we mm -hmm. saw a lot of like that rush momentum uh and you don't necessarily need a reinhardt in order to do that you can do that with a junker queen you can do it with a with the uh, ramatra with their narissa as well uh of course junker queen not really that popular in the meta currently so you'd gravitate towards either a ramatra or maybe a uh, narissa uh, mm -hmm. We're going to see a Winston versus a Reinhardt matchup here, though. I say Black definitely choose to go with the uh, the Space Monkey, the Space Scientist, if you want to call him. Stiff yeah. there on the Reinhardts. They're still probably going to brawl with this Winston, but it gives them an opportunity to have a little more movement. And when Reverb has shown how good he can be on the Tracer, playing a little more divey can maybe move to help you out a little bit. Look, because now they're going to turn this flank, maybe try to snag this Lucio. He's going to go for the Harding Gauge now onto it. Does not find him, though. Too easy to heal for Caden. Lightning, of course, yep. sells as well. Weaver in a bit of trouble gets eventually found by the Lucio headshot, and that means Tracer. A lot of that, what uh, what was preventing this front line to just walk forward, is now gone. Emor, no oh, more distraction. That, uh, Emor just had to get used on Lightning because he got he got hit by the Curry, uh, the Cassidy, and then got shot by the got some mine there. Uh, we said, I mean, Yukau making uh, good progress so far, pushing that bot forward uncontested. They uh, keep having space to work with, and keep having, you know, they're going to have resources to work with soon as well. So, with SAU Black, but it's not as much. They're still a little bit behind them. Uh, a couple of Mort used, taken down swiftly by Reverb. I was pretty good at that. I knew here gets a it's double. Two. Oh, almost gets dra counter dragon. There was a pretty good dragon strike actually to answer that. They do find Gore. It's not completely down and out here for you, Kyle Black. They can still keep going. They might be able to get the, the, the checkpoint here if they are managing to push enough, put enough pressure on. And with, with Stifty still swinging away, it's now alone. But that went quite well for a while with the Lucio next to him. Stifty though, doing what he's supposed to do, dying on point. It's what could have honestly helped SEU Black last round is if they, instead of staggering for so long, if they had died on the point, got a quicker reset, maybe they don't let him get up the hill as much. Not to go back to old times. But it's it's hard to say. Point, like Derek, That's can, that's one of those is. things where we'll grab the replay codes, explain exactly right. to you how that could have gone. Oh, of uh, course. But that's <laughs> also how these things go. Sometimes the Hansel just hits the arrow. Like You throw some logs, oh, yeah. eventually you're going to hit something, right? Uh, Ooh, and no, a lot of pressure onto Stifty. Line. Gore getting some uh, some things as well. They're not they were really solidly regrouping on Yukau. Try to spread themselves out. They at least get a little bit of push here on the cart from the bot. That's uh, a little less progress coming out of that for SAU Black. That was really well done there. I think Gore went and got two, did a lot more boop damage, and then the team just cleaned everything else up. You see Cow though, or you Cow has all the alts except for Hanzo online. Reverb might be able to split him up with the Dragon Strike in this hallway, though. Oh. Trying to charge back to 13. Didn't quite uh, make it as far as they maybe thought they were gonna. Easy, easily able to contest before this bot gets to the checkpoint. Again, it's the same thing, thing counter Dragon, but they also got the double elimination here. Zek Snack is back in form. No, uh, know them to be at times. And there goes the Forcer. I love how much support they give High Noon. It, makes the ult so much better because we always talk about how like not great that ultimate can be but if you hold a shield up in front of an amp of speed and uh emort turns out it can be pretty good if you dump every cooldown into it a couple of extra meters and they do make it to the checkpoint that's a really big deal only a couple of extra meters compared to where SAU Black is, but that checkpoint is going to change everything in terms of dynamic about how quickly they can re-engage. are going to get a little bit more meterage on it as well. This is uh, 
a good start, good first half of this push for uh, Duke Town. Dating goes down, Gore goes down, trades on both sides, but the window getting a lot of damage going. Also used Storm, but it's going to get walked down. The team with the Rhine is going to take that one. Snake to Snake. Snake to Snake is completely snack. Off, his, off, off the crack. It's, uh, it's really hard, hard to say where... <laughs> Uh, where you're gonna find the opening now if you're SAU Black, because they just used a bunch of ultimates they don't have anymore, and you Cal just held on to them. They have the High Noon, still have the Dragon, still have the Shatter. They're, uh, they're gonna be in a good spot. Uh, if they fight for too long, though, then they will be countered. Like, especially that Shatter is about to come up. Oh, almost has. And the Katsune rush to come out, the swings are so fast. Look at the Reinhardt yeah. go, everybody. He just kind of sat around and waited, and as you said, if it takes too long, they're gonna get countered. Run right down, and now the, now the Halo goes the other way. Push pot. And I like, way. I like though, because that's kind of what that fight showed. Uh -oh. Is yep. Yukao is um, is presenting themselves a little bit more passively. They're not really mm -hmm. needing to make that first move anymore, especially now that Gormu go to the Reinhardt. And they noticed, obviously in King's Row, that every time they made the first move, they got countered. So they're not going to do it anymore. But like, if you want to make a move, well. we'll answer you this time. Shatter and Dragon Strike go out. Shatter answer is gonna find everybody. He's going in the back. Can he find and clean him up? Enforcer does what he can to help him out, but trade's going both ways. Enforcer has three, four right now on the cowboy. Good climbing as well from Nibley to get away from everything. She's uh, so aware of her positioning and like her role in the fights. It's really nice to see. Uh, this will be the checkpoint captured, most likely. I think so. Yeah, they'll they'll make it there. Uh, but they yeah, gotta be on. careful about the regroups. So everyone got far spawns. Yuka is going to be very close very soon. Now they've come back to the point. Nibli was looking for a dash there. Someone had to come help. Now it looks like they've taken control back to the point, but they're going for the 5v5 right in the center here. Next mistake. Oh wow, I can't hear that. High new comes out. Both teams. It's lightning real quick. Yeah, nice uh, shots there onto Irrational, a lot of damage onto the Bastion, but the Bastion doing a lot of damage back, so that shield of Gore should be uh, almost gone. It's now on the Ramatra as well, so doesn't need to worry about the, the range shield anymore. And I like why they're on the Ramatra, because all you really need is to build up one, maybe two ultimates, and you're going to be able to zone out this bot forever. You're not going to be able to stop it, so if it gets to overtime, if they get to a place where they want to take the lead deep in enemy territory, that's where Amatra shines, just to give that space to get the ball just over the line. Absolutely, and I feel like SIU Black shooting into this Bastion is kind of what they counter. Bastion's such a big hitbox. Ponzo and McCree just keep that alive. I'm not saying Bastion doesn't provide his own spam and pressure, it's just he can be so big himself and easy to focus out. Just a big metal box after all. Before the elimination. Yeah, this Amatra's not gonna get out, is he? Yeah. Oh, good Dragon Strike just to push that on through. The sound Ooh. barrier does help a lot, though. Will it be enough as this Ramatra just gets turned around? They just couldn't get the round. They should have focused on some other things, maybe. Because now this bot is going to take the lead, and SAU Black is on course to put themselves into a map 5. Absolutely. Cruising on through, punching on through. Coming into the last fight here, Stifty has the Shatter online. Aiden has the window online. Combine the two, you could maybe clean up the rest of this team in a couple of seconds. Still two minutes to go. It's not over just yet, and we know how reverse uh, Uno card does not can be. Oh yeah, especially of when uh, when the checkpoint has been captured by both teams. Hyro Cat though gets caught by Irrational. A lot less speed boost. There goes the Ramatra ult eventually. The Gore just punches wow. through both. Uh, gets a little more. Vorsa finds another. Hey, it's been like four fights since Yuka got anything done. They need to find some purchase here. And they don't even have ultimates left. They've just swapped everything again. They used everything they had. And SUIUE Black is in a great place to actually finish off the map. Pyrocat gonna have the beat to save him. If anything does, anyone gets low. Zuzu already goes, though. That could be their saving. And Grace, now they're going to amp the speed and use the Kitsune Rush and go right in. 
And what a push him off. In. The bot is very close to being there. There's a couple more meters. They do find Enforcer, though. Ooh, irrational. A lot of damage going. Zek the Snack finds another, especially with Ramatra being out of the way. They're going to win this fight. They're going to push back. Didn't have need any ultimates. Barely had any ultimates. They're going to be able to push back into this. Get the supports a lot of charge. That Reiner went really low. <laughs> Lightning is going to have the barrier. Gonna have pretty much everything but the Ab Matrix. The Ab Matrix will be a little bit longer, but they charge that so fast that you could almost so say they fast, have five ults yeah. here. They, they basically will have five ults. Yeah. It just depends if Stifty hits a Fire Strike or two or not, which I'd imagine he would. This team's gonna be playing together. Reverb gonna have the Hanzo Strike to maybe split them up when they use their ultimates, try to counter the High Noon maybe. Do what he can, because they're gonna be down until the Enforcer builds theirs up high. Oh, that's Dragon, a dragon Dragon's gone. Splits the car. Engage on it. Right it's away. great. Such a good split. Such a just punch loot from Gore. We talk about Ramatra being a tempo tank. Well, they really turned up the tempo right there. Instantly take out the double kill. Really well played from SAE Black. And we might see more of that if they go to control. There's more of that. Like, oh, well, then we just engage you with Ram and win that way. Rational falls Absolutely. late. Four seconds to go. Can anyone touch? I think it's lightning in the way, but they just get taken out by the high noon. Might just be like one extra player being here on the cart. Just a Reinhardt. Nothing to worry about. Trying. They still have so many ults Wait, though. They the have window. the ultimates. They could very well still push this back. They just need to not leave this bot at any point in time. They could do it because he's got a lot of space. They got it to 90. So yeah, he's but Stifty, run for a long Stifty's time. got to stake on it. Like Stifty is the one that's on the cart yeah. right now. Unless someone else shows up, it's him. It's got to keep this yeah. alive. They are taking down, uh, taking down players left, right, and center though. It's looking really good. For a potential comeback. A reminder, 48 meters, especially on cool. Esperanza, it's almost 45, but isn't that much. And no, you know, it's because not. they've got the ultimates, they could push through. It's a good shatter opportunity. It's right there. Oh, he gets pooped around a little bit. Gore's popped his ult as well. So there you go. Beat gonna counter. Yeah. Gore gonna step on through, though. That ult is just so hard to deal with. Healing your health and punching you down. It's why you swap to Ram on a map like this. You swap to it so you can do that. So you can just deny them the space, take them out, do so much damage in the process, and it's going to be SIUE Black that finishes off Esperanza. And it's going to be a uh, control map to finish it off between these two teams. It's a 2 2 situation. And uh, what we thought was going to be a close match indeed turns out to be incredibly yeah. back and forth. You gotta love a nice close match. Champions division delivering like it does. Let's see some Hanzo shooting though. I love how slick this. Look at that. So much damage to that Bastion. I know he was, it was like the last bit in the fight, but still, when you see that much damage go to him, it's like, man, how can he feel like he can stand comfortably anywhere? Yeah, that's definitely what you wonder at that point. But you also wonder is who's going to come back and win that last control map? Because we already have, of course, two control maps that can't be played anymore. It's going to be another one banned. So their choice is going to be limited too. And then they also got to still win it. And this is, yeah, I mean, it is for all the marbles between these two. They really are that close together. You got to give them a little bit of time to decide, a little <laughs> bit of time to breathe. Yep. Take a very short break before the last map.
Welcome back. It's 2-2. Two, two. It's the map, but it all, it's all going to come down to a control is what we're going to get. It's going to be Nepal, and both these teams are roaring to go, but Nelili, it's so close between them. They've been going so back close. and forth the entire time. There's like barely anything between them, and map choices mattered a lot. But now it's control, and control, you know, well, they're different maps. They're still, you know, it's still control, so it's still about a place still control. a lot. Absolutely. And these teams do like brawl, so it plays into both of their play style quite a bit. And the thing that I can't say about this round, like I did about the first one, it's it's no longer the warm up round. This is the, the cool down the hands round, right? are warm. Cool We're down. ready. Yeah. Like, take it this easy. Is, yeah. Write it Relax. out. Relax. Don't don't freak out. There's no nerves anymore. We're all invested in playing. It's two to two. Yeah. And it's who's gonna come. I mean, first fight's gonna be huge, first map's gonna be huge. Everything is so much more important. And I mean, I want to see if Stifty can do it again on the Rhine. I'm going to be honest with you. It was looking really good on that particular one, but there's so Gores many... looks good other I think as well. I think but... both these teams have have evolved as well, not just in terms of like, you know, playing, but in terms of how they understand how the other team plays. So now you're mm -hmm. going to get this thing where they might normally like if Nepal was the first map, they might play it very differently than they're going to play it now. 
Uh, yeah. And that's like another really big thing that comes down to it. Not just the importance of the map, but also the importance of implementing everything that you learn throughout the series and then mm -hmm. putting it on control. Which is, uh, yeah, because now you hard. know like things they're going to do. You know, yeah. oh, they do pull out Bastion. What's been a good answer for that? This has been our answer. Maybe a Hanzo and a Cassidy, right? Yeah. But maybe that's not, you know, who knows? Maybe now you know not to run the Bastion. Maybe the, who knows? You know, I feel like anything I say, if I say Bastion's not going to work, he's going to come in and absolutely annihilate everybody. So it really doesn't matter what I think. No, it, I mean, it doesn't ever really matter what we think. Not that much. <laughs> but in this in this situation, uh, I mean, we're looking at these both these teams. They're both excellent at what they do. Um, yeah. The, 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 I think I'm, I've been especially impressed just like with, with both back lines. It's like the, the discipline in saving their yeah. abilities for things because that has been so crucial in every single yeah. fight so far <laughs> like it almost never really comes down to the tanks it mostly comes down mm -hmm. to what do the supports do after the tanks or while the tanks are doing their thing uh, yeah. and that has sway swung fights so much more than uh, yeah. than most of the tank abilities that have been landing or not landing or charging or whatever so S support diff can be it, very it, real it can be especially very real. when Especially when the emorts are huge, but I mean, like you said, I feel like it's been relatively. I mean, it's been even all night, so clearly it's been even. But right. we've seen big plays from both support lines. We really, really, we really have. And even though you know, like you, know, you never want to pick favorites. Like I, I, I don't, I'm not gonna. Uh, I very much understand <laughs> if in chat you see like a couple of like, oh, this one was way better. This one was way better. And we did see a couple of clutch immortality fields or a couple of clutch like you know plays coming out here and there from. Uh, one support or another so it, it again mm -hmm. they've both been doing an, a stellar job like either map could have gone very differently had certain abilities not landed um but that kind of goes for every hero on the field at the moment like they're hero. all all doing such a strange job yeah and in this champions division everyone's hitting their shots to a certain extent no one's <laughs> No one's just out here whiffing shots. No, ten percent no accuracy. Got here. What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah, I mean they fan the hammer too much for that. They just they're just blowing that right into them. So right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, as what a lot of brawl is, you got to you got to fan roll fan, and then you can fight. Got to get rid of that shield. It is kind of what it comes down to, isn't it? So, like we said, you know, we are on map five. It is going to be control. It's going to be Nepal um and uh nepal i mean yeah we're not gonna need a tiebreaker luckily because we haven't drawn it on hybrid which is like the only thing we can really draw anymore these days uh right. and nepal i think a lot of it will come down which stage we get when uh i think if we start on shrine it would be like the most ideal situation just because of like the neutrality of the points um yep. but as soon as we start on either sanctum or village this is going to be a very different control map than it otherwise would have been and yeah, the RNG and village. we get for that is yep. going to be on village. It's, it's yeah. Yep. Uh, if anyone was wondering why we went in so late, uh, we, we, oh. came, we came in after a pause. We see a Yukal already on the point. Symmetra May. This is like the ultimate setup for uh, Nepal Village in the current meta. And SAUE Black, I think they might have completely misread what was going to happen here. They wanted to go for that high ground explosive fight they're not getting to they having to look from the outside in this percentage is going to keep ticking while they're playing fast food like this funny enough i was i had i put it in my caster notes i was wondering if gore would have a doom fist if you got a genji and a rhine doom fist seems right up your alley he's going to come punching away another punching character we all like to see now no longer a dps kind of thick thick tank Nice, uh, so falls to one. No, yeah, nice more right there. Couldn't quite get the elimination of the Valley Fields. Good. You need your strike, an early meteor strike as well, and they just instantly explode. Like, this is the way that you see it happen on points like this, where one team is holding this defense. Yuka was doing a great job of that. They were holding it close. They got drawn out a little bit too much. It's a little bit too much. And that's when immediately yep. they pounce on you. You, got, you get attacked from three or four different angles, and you just melt away um i feel i feel like i use comp is built to punish mistakes you've got the punch yeah. you've got you've got cassidy and then the reverb if anyone doesn't pay attention to the black line he's in there all oh, the pulse bomb the doom everyone goes in and everyone falls oh my goodness it, it I is didn't see it coming. it's definitely poke galore like they're they are constantly yeah. poking they're constantly stinging you they're tickling you 
And like the individual projectile might not do a ton of damage, but because mm -hmm. it's all adding up over time and you can't heal it back up fast enough, you will eventually go down. Um, well, I say eventually, fairly quickly, because they do, they can't take too much time. Nice wall gets uh, control of the objective again, and they just take it back. This is what they're really good at. They get to that objective, yeah. they can hold on to it and and win the almost like win the game outright that way by just standing around. The elimination onto Enforcer. It's a good sound barrier, very nicely timed. Huge beats, you shatter even bigger. Suzu coming out there from a Nibley. So, such a pivotal player tonight. The Blizzard will eventually take care of the Kiriko, but there's still a fight going on. It's not done just yet. It's Reverb Gore, as well as Pyrocat coming back into it. The May in the block, Irrational. We know how strong they are on the Ice Queen, and they're still able to show that. It's just a little bit too many heroes around. But Yukao, even though they lost the fight, they still are winning the war overall with that percentage. They are winning the war. Even though it doesn't feel like it, this comp that SIU is running has no point presence. So they have to win the fight while they're transitioning to the point. They're going to try to hammer them hard right out in this open area here. Because as soon as they get to the point, they're in a tough way. They just are going to go right in onto the Baptiste. They're going to do it again. Walls up. Yep. yep. And they're in the points again. They're going to do the exact same thing. There's the high noon oh. behind. Will get taken out. And they take the flip the point back. They're still in the lead. And if they win this fight, it's probably just going to be over. Double kill the Pulse Bomb, though. But it's going to be a trade back. Nibli and Gore out of it. And those are really big tools for the point preference. It's just Reverb. Reverb been doing an amazing job on the Tracer on this particular point and all night already anyways. But this is going to be a very tough one to pull back alone. They're going to going to take a little bit of Vex staff. Oh, the headshot! Ooh. That's not what you like to see when you're Reverb. That's the power of Ooh. Bay versus Tracer. And that's huge. Because Reverb not being Fuck. there for the engage of this fight is a big difference maker. Timber Fields stops the that's meter that. strike. Beautifully done. Core immediately stunned up against the wall. Out of the fight. This is, looks like it's just caught up. Yukao, they found their opening, they found their way, and with only reverb on the point, you're not gonna 1v5. You're not that good, or rather, Yukao is not God that bad. Game. Team kill, wow. 100 to 68, and yeah, just stand on point, guys. I'm telling you, playing the objective is better than getting kills. I hate, I hate to say, but yeah, in control, the objective, objective can prove to. I mean, you'll always have to stand by that winning the fight is the most important. But if the other team is uh, collecting 30% while you're winning the fight, it's kind of tough. They yeah, and that's, fight and that's also incorrect because you yeah. you win the fight because you want to win the, the game, because you exactly. want to win the objective. Of so course. if all you're doing while winning fights is losing the objective, you're still losing well, overall. Yeah. Well, I'm just meaning the principle. I, I understand. You, know, I know. you can maybe yeah. give it. You can give a tick up, but you know, yeah, absolutely. You got, especially on control point is massive. Ooh, the Ramatra though. We've been like we've this seen this before. A... We know how this goes. The yeah. problem though is this is a different environment. There are the places could be tough. And, and there are places where this Ramatra and like the ultimate etc can work really well. But there's also a lot of ways in which you can avoid it here, and which you can also mess with the Ramatra. Like you, like mm. I said, the wall's really good. The boop potentially get him off the map if he goes a little bit too aggressive. They are going to go in through the tunnel, essentially doing a very similar thing as they did in Nepal, but this time they have to get on the open objective rather than closing themselves off inside of it. Nice block from May, Irrational though, Headshot. balls themselves out of it, gets uh, deleted by Reverb this time around. They've uh, want to take a little bit of revenge. Zek the Snack finds the Magnetic Grenade, and they do trade back and forth a little bit, but it does look that with Stiff uh, Stifty going down, that is going to be eventually the uh, capture and the fight win for SIU Black. And then look at the old charge. You know, both 80% almost for Hanzo and for Ramatra. That's insane. And they they were definitely both doing it. We saw it in the kill feed. Reaver seems like he's a man on, on a mission right now. Just trying to claw this one back. He's been trying to do it on Tracer. Hanzo's looking pretty strong as well. So far, they're going to be able to make it around, block the Hanzo off. Nice speed boost, really good coordination the way they use that. And they find the wall. There goes Reverb. They execute that perfectly every single time. Now it's going to be the Shatter ready. Nice ultimate you got there, but unfortunately you're on the ground, Gore. You thought you charged it fast? Well, Stiffy charged it just as fast. So unfortunately, this is going to be a uh, fight win and a point capture coming through for Yu Kao. You got to be a little bit careful not to get booped off, but they're not... Uh, they're not going to be in the business of uh, finding Zingata's treasure today. 
<laughs> Absolutely not. Hanzo still reverb here. Gonna have the dragon strike to maybe split him up, try to get him an entry back onto this point. Dragon strike can be pretty good here, just especially where they're holding. You could any way you could split the Reinhardt and then force a push onto him, just like they did before in Esperanza. It can be huge. The wall though, put it down on the gore. The Hanzo strike to kind of bail him out. May is gonna have to force to use that cryo freeze, and now the punches are laying into him. Gore. Good boom! Picks gets booped into the hole. Huge Lost pick from it. Lightning. Now he's going into the back line trying to find a few more. He gets, ooh, doesn't quite get stuck. That was close. Uh, Lightning was a little bit quieter on the support end, but it's plays like this that just show you, right, that they know exactly what they're doing. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's good to see. And what looked like a really good start, like getting that May out early, didn't even have the Blizzard yet. That would have been huge if Gore hadn't been booped off the, off the, off the objective, unfortunately. Man, that was a... That was a Crazy boob. Yeah. Gore, Gore with the initial pick, but now he's gonna they're gonna try to do the same thing. He seems as though Gore can survive with the ram even if he gets walled pretty well. Just based on the abilities. Katsune Rush coming out. The punches are gonna be super fast. Dodges the shatter, even just walks right by it. Gonna go down the lightning, gonna find him once again. And that shatter was like it barely missed like three or four different players. It was really really weird, weird to see. But it did, you know, it, if it misses, it misses. This is how it is. You gotta accept it. Oh, yeah. Ooh, almost gets a shot off. Ooh. Oh, no, gets Ooh. booped by Pyrocat. They were ready for it for the charge. This time it's Stifty going into the drink because the Lucio boop off at the moment. There we go. Nice grenade grenade that will get Pyrocat out of it. Good sick. The snack going awfully low. Mortality Field saving their lives. Be able to uh, sustain a little bit through that. Just a good wall from Irrational. Oh. But I think this is going to be where the point flips. It's good, though, that they're able to get that ultimate out of the Ramatra when the point flips. A little bit of the visual bug where it uh, still looks like the Nemesis yeah. form is up and they're gonna reset here. Stifty knows. They all know. They gotta get out. They gotta they gotta reset. They gotta try again. Yep. They're gonna get a, they're gonna get a one really good fight, and then maybe he'll marry if they're quick about it. But look at the yeah, ultimates. Absolutely. Look at the ultimates. Yu Cow is in a better spot here. Absolutely. You got that window coming online and beat. With how the support alts and everything that the support's been doing tonight, those are gonna be some big ultimates coming in. And now Reinhardt maybe gets a big fire strike as well with that. Uh, like maybe we're gonna see a oh, good uh, high noon. It's a good wall. Blocks a little bit, but everyone has to hide behind this corner. Oh no! Safety knows. Safety knows exactly what's up. It's a high noon in the wave. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You're gonna high noon a Reinhardt behind his shield. Exactly what you're gonna have to do. Not gonna do much. Gore meanwhile being frozen and uh, blast probably frozen to death, and that's it. Yukau takes it away in a hundred to, what was it, like 80 or something? 80 something close. They like take it a 2-0, they take a 2-0 on uh, Nepal, just like that little Lijiang. The true, an adage is still true, if that's anything you gotta learn from this series, you can be good at any two map types, as long as one of them is control. Yep, and if you're, uh, <laughs> you're a team that's gonna go deep, you better be good at control. That is that is how it works. That being said, though, such a fight being put up for SIUE Black. They did an amazing job. They really got it very close. And even on a more of a disadvantaged composition, which I would say maybe on both points on Nepal they were, mm. they still got a very close fight. They still made it very hard for Yukao to get, uh, get out of that. Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough to get themselves the, the win. Uh, but they got to be proud of themselves to be like you know this competitive and in the end we uh we said it before right like one team had one extra map that they won against uh center college gold that was yukau black and that team is also the team that gets that extra map today the slight wow. edge on paper they had <laughs> did ring true um yeah it was nothing though it could have been it could have easily gone the yeah. other way so unfortunately really for siue black they did not get away with the victory today but they're still in a pretty decent spot when it comes to the overall season record so we are uh, very likely gonna be able to see them in the playoffs still that being said neely i guess you got any closing thoughts about the series about the knights uh not many closing thoughts just just reiterate it was a close game. We knew it was going to be a close game. It actually panned out that way, and I had a great time casting it with you. Yeah, it was uh, it was a very fun one. Uh, just, you know, series going to five maps is always a blast. Always fun. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, everyone, behind the scenes. We had Caroline and Sinjia today on it. Absolutely. We always do a amazing job, as always. And uh, we hope to see you in the future, hopefully next week, when there's more NECC to come. See you then.